Listen, mate, I know it's a pain, but look, I'll tell them. You know what they're like. If you don't keep on at them, they'll forget. They probably have already. Look, every hour, on the hour, I'll be on that switch. A reminder to all you cloth-eared, cotton brain drivers out there. We are still looking for a slug-like creature whose picture you should have stuck on your dashboard. Cheers, mate. Pleasure. All I'm asking is all this because I didn't get there to see you run. All what? The mood you're in. I'm not in a mood. So why won't you talk to me? Because when I do, all you say is why am I in a mood? I couldn't get there. And Jack will back me up on this, right? Because by the time I got back here, it was too late. So you didn't make it, it's fine. Except it's not, is it? Because you've barely spoke a word to me since you got back. Will you shut up about it? I wanted to see you, no I did. Do I? Well, it wasn't my fault I couldn't get back in time. I know, believe me, I know whose fault it was and it wasn't yours. See you later. So long. Have you heard her? She says she's not mad at me and then she goes and says stuff like that. Um, she's just that way out. We all get that way sometimes, don't we? Oh, well, she does. I just want to know why. All right. I think I'll go and give Rita a hand. And do you think she'll want one? Beg your pardon? Don't you think that perhaps we all need a bit of time on our own to get over what's happened. And who do we think has the most to get over? You know, just remind me, wh whose brother was it that died? What was, it, was it Rita's? Was it yours? I don't think it's a question of whose brother it was. Oh, no, now I remember. It was mine, wasn't it? So maybe I'm the one that has the most to get over. So if I choose to go into work, I think I should be allowed to do so. Don't you? Unless, of course, you're saying Rita won't be able to stand having me near her. Well, maybe she won't. We'll find out, won't we? That <laughs> was all right yesterday. I started to stiffen up now. You know what that is, don't you? That is nature's way of saying, watch it, old man. Oh, is it? No, don't push your luck. You're not as young as you used to be. In fact, we're a year older. Yeah, I know, and I don't need you reminding me. All right, I'm going to work. Bye. <laughs> See you later. Morning. So, what happened? What happened when? At this run, you and her did, because Summit did, knew she's been in since. Well, and that's because of the run, is that what she said? Well, she hasn't said it, no, but I think it's because I wasn't there. Was she cursing me for not turning up? Not what I heard. Did you talk to her once you both finished? I talked to her, yeah. And? What did she say? Well, not a lot. We was too knackered. See, I wouldn't mind if she just said, Where were you? You've let me down. But no. She lets me know I'm in the doghouse. But she won't tell me how I got there. He didn't need to come in at all. I had Tina helping this morning and she's in again this afternoon. Well, what am I supposed to do? Oh, I know. I'm supposed to be in mourning, aren't I? And are you not? Well, if I am, I don't intend to make a public show of it. No, I didn't think you would, somehow. Which doesn't mean I'm not feeling anything or that I haven't thought about everything that's happened. But I'm sorry, I know you like to know all about everybody else's business, but this is the one time I intend to keep my thoughts and feelings to myself. Which I'm sure you're entitled to. So, how are you this morning? Well, I'm sorry. I'm keeping my thoughts and my feelings to myself, same as you. Right, she's in there getting served. So you ready for when she comes out? Yeah. And you know what you're going to say? He knows what he's going to say. You've made him say it a dozen times already. OK, OK. Right, here she is. Come on. Janice, I think Josh has got something he wants to say to you. Oh, hello. How are you now? Are you all right? Thank you for looking after him when I got the bee sting. Here's a few. Oh, that's lovely. You shouldn't have. Well, like I said, 
thanks from all of us. I don't know what we'd done if you hadn't been there. Yeah, thanks, Janice. You were brilliant. Oh, look at her, she's blushing. Anyway, we'll let you get on, but we'll not forget this. We certainly won't. So I think sometimes you need a good router to clear the air. Yeah, some do. My Eric, he used to sulk. I can't ever remember him raising his voice to me, but sulk, oh, he could go on for days. I don't think I'll be hearing you out of sulk. Out on her mind, she comes straight out with it, tell the old flaming street and all. Anyway, what I'm saying is that Molly and Tyrone can't do that on account of me being there. I mean, like this morning, Molly's in a mood, he wants to know why. And there's me, sat there like Peggy in the middle, stopping them from having it out. Can't be a nice feeling for you. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just in the way. Simple as that, in the way. Can I ask a question? If you must. Oh, I must. Oh, yes, I must. Cos we're not carrying on like this. Like what? With this silent treatment you've been giving me ever since I came in here this morning. What's your question? Well, since this silence is an accusing sort of silence, my question is just exactly what am I being accused of? Nothing. Oh, nothing you'd care to put into words because you know you'll sound ridiculous. Well, I... Anyway, I know what it is. It's, I can see it in the way you're looking at me. I've had it from Emily, too. You're both acting as though I killed Ramsay, as though him dying on that plane, I made it happen. I'm sure nobody's thinking any such thing. Well, I'm not having that. I'm not having it from you, and I'm not having it from Emily. I am not responsible for my brother's death, and I'm not staying here to be treated as though I am. You'd have to come out sometime. I can't just walk up to talk to you, can I, when you've got my husband working alongside you? He seems to think you're in there. Funny man. Of course I am. For one thing, he keeps going on and on about yesterday, the run and how it went and what happened. What am I supposed to say to that? You're not sorry, though, are you? Are you? No. I suppose I'm not either. We might do it again sometime. I think we might, yeah. As long as you don't change your mind again. Of course I won't. Ty's coming. We're just talking about the race, aren't we? Of course we are. So, um, <clears throat> did you have any aches and pains this morning? <laughs> I was nothing but aches and pains. Well, I wasn't as bad as I thought I'd be. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'd best get back anyway. I'll see you later. Yeah, see ya. Shout out about yesterday, you know, me not turning up and that. Mm -hmm. Didn't mention it. You saw how she is, though. As soon as I arrived, boom, she's back inside. She don't even want to talk to me. She might have had a customer. What, that she forgot all about until I turn up? <laughs> don't get me involved in your marriage. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know what it's now to do with you. It's just a promise, my mum. No, no, it's fine. Oh, it does make you think, though, doesn't it? If Janice hadn't done what she did, no, anything could have happened. Well, I know. I just think we should remember that, you know, cos we don't know what's going to happen in the future. So I think we should just be careful about what we do. Ashley, what are you talking about? I'm just... Well, just the future. We don't know what's coming, do we? Well, no, we don't, but uh, we'll see you later, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Bye. And, um, do you know I said I wanted that talk? How can we can do it tonight, eh? Yes, OK.
finished early, lovey. Yeah, Dev owed me some time off. Uh, now you can come and sit down and put your feet up because you can work too hard, you know. You don't have to put some hours in you and that Tyrone. Um, I've just got to get this. Hi. Can you talk? Just about, yeah. Uh, thought it was a good time. Just saw you leaving the shop to go home. Have you uh, done nothing all day but watch out for me? Not pretty much. I was wondering when we uh, might get together again. Well, I'll have to think of a good excuse. We're still training, aren't we? What for, though? Uh, you need a run to go in for, don't you think? Yeah, um, be best, yeah. Um, leave it with me. Uh, I'll go on a website and uh, sort us one out. I'll give you a ring, yeah? OK. But, um. Only ring, won't you, when, you know, Ty's not with me? Yeah, sure, hey. And when I've phoned it up, don't forget to delete my number from my phone. I won't. And um, don't you forget as well? I don't think Sally's that interested, but Tired home still worrying himself to death here about what he's done wrong. How is he going to put it right? Listen, I've got to go. Speak to you soon, yeah? OK, bye. We're blaming him for Ramsay's death. How it seems to him. Well, he does have a habit of taking everything the wrong way. Ah, oh, definitely. Though happened this time, he might not be as wrong as he usually is. Oh, don't see. Well, we haven't said it. No, of course we haven't. To be ridiculous. I mean, Ramsay died sat on an aeroplane. Now, if Norris could make that happen, he'd have supernatural powers. Which I don't think he has. No. But come on, be honest. We have been giving him a bit of a hard time. No more than he deserves. Well, I don't know. I think between us, we must have come across like the counsel for the prosecution. Uh, hello? Only me. Rita's here. Oh, well, hello. We were just thinking we might go for a drink tonight, uh -huh. weren't we, Emily? Yes. Yes, we were. And what would be really nice would be if you'd come with us. I'm surprised you want my company. Don't push it. I said it'd be nice if you come with us, not going down on me bended knees. Well, yeah, I suppose so. All right, then. You see, you try to feel sorry for him. It's not easy. I've been on at them all day, and like you said, a big prize for them that spots them. I still don't know what, though. Oh, anyway, you don't have to worry about that. There's no one seen him. They haven't loved, no. no I'm sorry. Well, it's not your fault. But those that are on tonight are going to be getting the same thing. And I'm going to go to them shelters that they have for the homeless, because you said that's where he goes sometimes, yeah? Used to. Oh, it's hopeless. We're not going to find him, are we? He's not going to let us. It's not hopeless. No, he's got to be somewhere. Anyway, even if we do find him, what, he's going to get me off being prosecuted? How's he going to do that, then? Oh, because he's going to come clean. And tell the truth. <laughs> of course he will. Always tells the truth to a slug. Couldn't tell a lie if he tried. I know you're just trying to help my lads, but it's no use. Forget it, leave it. Let him send me to jail. Who cares? So. <sighs> Take the notice. She's just scared, that's all. So am I. Come and sit down a minute. Well, someone's got to do the washing up. We don't have servants. <laughs> we'll both do it together in a minute. I've got to tell you this. Come on. I've tried a couple of times already. Go on. It's about what we were saying before. About never knowing what's in the future. I never know what you're talking about. I'm talking about... I'm talking about the vasectomy I went in for. Nothing's gone wrong, I said. You're not having problems, do No. You? There can't be any problems. Cos I've never had it done. You didn't? Never had it done, no. That's 
Because I just... I just couldn't. I just couldn't do it. Not, with, not somebody doing that to me. So... Ever since you've just been lying to me? Just bare-faced lies? But listen... And after all I've told you about what another pregnancy you'd do to me, how I just couldn't face it... Well, you think that now? And I'm always going to think it... You don't know that! Yes, I do! Because I remember what it was like after Freddy that I told you all about! But you obviously didn't listen to a word! I did! There were just other things that were said! What other things? About the future! Don't you think it's better that we've not ruled out us having another? Us having another? It wouldn't be us having another. It'd be me having another. And anyway, we're not talking about that because that's not why you did it. You just said it was because you got scared. Yeah, well, I know, but... So all this about we don't know what's in the future, that's you just not wanting to admit to being such a pathetic coward, a lying, scared... Snivelling little coward to do something for your own wife. Something which matters more than anything to her. Well, whatever he knew about his condition, never said anything to me. Nor me. Nor me either. And what if he had? What if he'd told you what was wrong with him? Would that have made a difference? I don't know. You two liked him, didn't you? Probably more than you liked me. Well, I, I, I wouldn't blame you. I, I, I suppose he had what some people might call charm. But I, I wouldn't expect you to change your opinion of him now. Is not here. In fact, well, I'd think less of you if you did. Well, why should we? No, I'm saying that just as I wouldn't expect you to change your opinion, you shouldn't expect me to change mine. Don't you even have any regrets? We all have some of them, don't we? Wish you'd treated him better? I wish she'd never come back into my life. But, uh, you know, I, I suppose I, I wish we'd parted on better terms. Knowing now what, what I know. What could have regret? Not going to make any difference to him now, are they? No, but they might make a difference to them he's left behind. running. I'm going to carry on, or is that it now? I think I am, yeah. It gets in your blood. Why? Do you want me to stop? No, I imagine it's good for you. I hope that painful has to be. What about Molly? Is she going to carry on as well? I don't know. That's uh, up to her and tied on. It's up to her. I reckon she makes all decisions in that house. Yep, yeah, I think she probably does. So it's not because it didn't turn up? How many times? I know you've said that. That's all I can do. Say it. What do you want me to do? Write it across the ceiling? No. Well, if that's what you're saying. <sighs> again and again. OK, OK. So you're all right. I mean, we're all right. We are the same as we were yesterday and the day before that. So do you want to go out somewhere later, then? No. Right, you two, there's uh, something I've got to tell you. Well, there's two things, really. We are going out, I am just doing tea. And that is the first, and I'm sorry, love, I should have told you before, it's Darts Night at the Legion, and we've got food on, and I thought, well, leave me out, and then you and Tyrone can have a, a nice, quiet meal on your own. Ah, oh, and what's the second thing? Yeah, well, this is something I've been thinking about for a while now, and I don't want you to take it the wrong way, neither of you. You, you must promise me you won't. Well, how can we do that if we don't know what it is? We'll promise. All right, then, we do. I'm moving out and I want a place of my own. Well, what for? Yeah, I knew you'd ask me that and you deserve an answer. You see, I think... This used to be my home. It isn't now, it's yours. It's yours as well? You can't have both. It was mine and now it's yours. And I think that 
You would be up here and I would be up here if I found somewhere else. Well, tell him he don't have to go. Well, I certainly don't want him to. Well, it's, just, it's not what you want, it's what I want. And one day, it'll, you'll see, it'll work out for the best. So, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll leave you on your own. Um, have a nice night. Do you know he was going to say that? Why would I? Well, I don't know. Do you think we should try and stop him? No. Well, where's he going to go? Talk to him. Yeah, but come on, it's... Babe, if people want to do things, they do them. Even if they know they're wrong and they shouldn't, it doesn't matter. Sit down, your tea's ready. Where have you been? Rise. Thought I'd treat us bacon butties. Bacon boys? I'm making bacon boys. Well, sorry for trying to do something nice. Oh, thanks. Well, I'll not bother next time, but then don't go moaning that I'm in a mood with you. I was just trying to do something special for Jack, that's all. Well, if bacon butties is going to stop him moving out, I think Roy's will do just as well as yours. Sally. How are you with secrets? Why? Well, I feel bad that I didn't come and cheer you and Kevin on at the race and didn't do out for his birthday either. When was his birthday? It was yesterday. <gasps> well, he kept that quiet. Oh, well, he was so exhausted after all that exercise. So, are you two free tonight? Yeah, of course. Because, we... well, the girls are out and I thought we could do a bit of a surprise for him. And I'll ask Ashley and Claire if Josh is all right to be babysat now and, and we'll just make a bit of a fuss of him, eh? Oh, great. Is there all we can do to help? Well, I'm going to do all the food by dinner time so he doesn't suspect. Well, I'll take him to the Rovers then. A mall can give you a lift with food, eh, Mal? Oh, well, that'll be helpful. It won't take long. Yeah, sure. Great, all right. See you later. See ya. What? Yeah. Well, that's great. You go and sit in the pub with Kevin and I'll play Come Down With Me with Sally. I'd do the food. But somebody's got to sit on Kev, haven't they? You might think that's weird if it's you. Might suspect. <laughs> I'll get you. Oh, no, for me, thanks, Sit. Well. Caffeine. You're not getting behind that wheel half asleep. You shouldn't be driving at all. You didn't get in till four. Mm. I did away, you sorry. Driving round all night, hoping that Slug just happens to be stood on a corner when you just happen to go past. It's brainless. I go where homeless people hang out, druggies. Oh, that's all right then. I'm not being stupid. That's a first. I've had a thought. Oh, a morning of firsts. Mother Teresa, drug dealer, used to supply me in Slug. Mother Teresa? Oh, nickname, cos he's like four and a half foot tall and wears a crucifix. Any road, he might not be dealing no more and he might have moved on, but he knew everyone. Where all the squats were, everything. Where would he be? Well, he used to deal at Boggs at Castle Arms, you know, back station. Right. No, 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 no! Steve, you are not going hunting down a drug dealer. Yeah, let me go, baby. Oh, yeah, now, is that going to help your case being seen hanging out with dealers? Yeah, but I know what it looks like. It's... Four and a half foot tall, wearing a crucifix, it's called Mother Teresa. How many can there be? Steve! He's a really nice guy, honest, this Mother Teresa. No, he's not. He's scum. And Slug is scum. This is your world, not Steve's. Stop dragging him down into it. Laurie's told me about Ramsey's funeral. The arrangement. Yes. Well, I wanted to check to see if you're OK. It's Norris's decision, and it's made now. 
Ramsay will be cremated in Australia. And the ashes? Scattered in some garden of remembrance, I imagine. Well, who'll be there to remember? Well, he's not thinking this through. Emily, say something to him, because if you don't, I will. Oh, I'd rather you didn't if it's all the same. What's done is, is done. I'll see you later. A little flat of two, maybe, you know. Maybe one with a little balcony, you know. What about your pigeons? Well, one or two of the lads at the Legion have got pigeons, haven't they? Invite me out to race days, you know. It's not going to be easy, leaving your home. Houses are just bricks and mortar. Give over. Houses hold memories. They're in the walls. Bricks and mortar, Connie. Oh, yeah. oh, right. <laughs> oh, I thought you liked tomatoes. Yeah, I was under the same impression. In fact, I've never entirely exorcised your description that it's like having a road accident at the side of your plane. Correct, Mundo. Well, then have something you like, you daft thing. I will, don't worry. Because I write them. I'm on a mission to work my way through every single thing on your menu. What, today? Before I go on remand. Don't say that. You're not going Stop on remand. Ails. If I don't start getting me head round it now, I'm going to spend first month curled up in the corner of my cell, whimpering like an abandoned chihuahua. Becky, you must keep believing in yourself. I do. And I didn't. First time I ever walked into this calf, I believed no good had ever come of me, and it was no more than I deserved. And now look at me. The only way the likes of Ooch can get me into jail is to fit me up. Now that, that's progress. It's criminal. See, you are what you eat. Well, I'm going into prison as Roy's Rolls. Because this was the first place I ever imagined I could be. I could eat tin tomatoes without them bouncing straight back out. Oh, for goodness sake, stupid, stupid contraption. Norris, are you sure you've asked that card stand to dance? Because it looks resistant to me. I'll tell you this for nothing. This has never been right since that friend of yours, Colin, interfered with it. Colin oiled it, that's all. So let's not go speaking ill of the dead, no. because they can't answer back. That doesn't make them innocent. Perhaps not. But respect costs nout. Summit I was talking to Emily about, funnily enough, earlier on. Oh, Emily. Mm. I'm wondering where she's going to be able to pay her respects to Ramsay. I think she'd like to. And I can't see her popping over to Australia any time now. He was heading there because he wanted to be there. He was cared about here. You know, your friend Colin strung your line. That thing hasn't been oiled in years. Better go and get some. Then where exactly are you? I'm stuck in traffic. Because I promised a customer you'd be five minutes. Look, if you're going to be 15, then say 15. All right, all right, I'm on my way. Unlike some people, I like to keep my promises. Don't go to your mother's. Let's not upset the boys. In your head, is it death or divorce? Is what? Well, you're thinking you might want kids with someone else one day. I'm not. But you know I don't want any more children. Absolutely not. Absolutely never. And that will not change. I keep saying nobody can predict the future. So if you're prepared to lie to avoid the vasectomy, the only logical conclusion is that you think you might want kids with someone else. Oh, you're just being ridiculous now. So am I dead? Or divorced? In your scenario? Or is it some torrid affair? Well, my wife, I want it to stay like that. But keep your options open, eh? Hello, streetcars. Oh, yeah, I, I'm sorry about that. It's going to be another ten minutes or so. He wasn't entirely honest with me. Steve, look, before you start, I've ordered him to get his backside back here, yeah? No more slug hunt. 
Right. Don't feel you've got to thank me for help. Thank you? <laughs> for what? Doesn't make it any less of a mess, does it? This might be a mess, but just you remember, I ain't done no. And Steve's done less. Less than no. Um, I'm not so big on math, Liz. You want to help me out with that? Well, it was a wild goose chase anyway. Yeah, and calling it off means I am defo going down. So, it's me who's going to suffer here. <laughs> you think you're the only one? Well, I reckon his bed will be comfier. I've been a prison widow. And believe me, he'll get the sentence, same as you. Except he'll be able to go for a bevy with his mates to cheer himself up, or nip to the kitchen in the middle of the night for a bicky if he fancies it. I think it's harder for the one on the outside. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, living half a life. Everyone judging you. You're neither with them, nor with someone else. The best part of him is going to be locked up with you. And like I say, he did less than no. He's always loved Pavlova, has he? Mind you, the trouble with Kevin is he's not fussy. If he's hungry and you put something in front of him, he reacts like it's the best thing he's ever seen in his life. <laughs> right. So, are you all right to take this on the cream harm? I can stick the raspberries in the back of the fridge. You won't think anything about that. You would... Do you want me to make the pavel over them when you're out with Kevin? Yeah, I suppose so. You have to be careful with the cream, though, not too stiff, cos it's not as easy as it looks. Right. Oh, I dropped a raspberry down my blouse. Let's go and change it. What are you doing here? Um, Sally is upstairs. You're supposed to be at the pub. Me wallet? What have you said to her? Nothing. Kevin? Well, I'm sorry, I just come in and here you are. Well, she's doing this surprise for you tonight with us, me and Tyrone. Yeah? Surprise what? Surprise flaming heart attack like she's giving me. Well, talk it out of it. Kevin? I'm just getting my cash card out of my coat pocket. I'll see you later. Did he ask you what you were doing here? He didn't come through. <laughs> oh, that was a bit close for comfort, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. See you later. See ya. Hello, before you say this? Before I say what? I, I, I thought you were uh, going to be annoyed at me for not answering your messages. I am, but I'm rising above it. So, slow, comfortable screw up against the wall. Me? <laughs> it's a cocktail. I was going to do his Alabama slammers, but felt too close to home. Well, I'm driving this afternoon and uh, you're working. No! We are back in the Maldives, baby. Starting now and ending with the smack of the judge's what's it. A uh, certain Mother Teresa has shown me the light. Or rather, pointed me in the right direction of a couple of squats. You found slug? No. But there was a girl in one of the squats who was acting very cagey. So I'm uh, going to stake it out tonight. I want you to stop looking for him, love. I'm not giving up. No, I mean it. I want us to make the most of the time we've got left. Becky! Because let's face it, baby. I might not deserve this challenge, but I've deserved plenty what I've got away with. You're not going to let Ooch win? He won't win. Because he can't take away this time we've got now. And when I get sent down, I want you to imagine that You've waved me off at the airport. And as lovely as this was, it's over. How much have you had to drink? 
four mugs of tea. I've been stuffing my face at Roy's with special. Which was what, Lily Liver? <laughs> I'm serious, Steve. This has been the best time of my whole life. But when I get banged up, I want you to forget about me. No chance. You had a life, and I strolled in and nicked it. I deserve a stretch inside for that, if no else. I will find Slug. Because you're my wife and you are stopping here with me and Amy. So you can stick that on Roy's special board and eat it. If you don't like that last flat, then I don't know what it is you're looking for. That were a lovely bit of garden, French doors. Yeah, but it, it was just too... Modern? No, too... Residential homey. What? Sorry, are you two... No, we're flaming not. I'm looking for a place on my own. Sorry, floppy ears, I'll... Uh... Stick me topping up with condiments. <laughs> All right. All right. You, know, you know that, that book on old Manchester, the event? I look at some of the buildings in there, you know, if, if I could get one of them, you know, because that's proper history. And they're doing them up, aren't they, making them into flats? I thought buildings didn't hold history. Bricks and mortar, you said. I thought you were helping me. Well, I can't even keep kidding yourself it's an easy thing leaving that house. You need company. Space than I know what to do with at my place. Oh, honey. You'd be doing me a favour if you took a room there. Look, I'm, I'm moving to get out of Folks Road, not into it. That's a man closing down. You're not ready for that yet, Jack. Not by a long chalk. Where are you coming? I need to get some ingredients for tomorrow's special. I've done all the shopping for this week. I I'm changing the menu. Oh. If Becky is going to eat here from now until her sentence, then. I'm going to ensure the specials are special. Her favourite. Do you know what? I was thinking exactly the same thing. Do you know what she were always on at me to make and I never did? What's that then? Made out it's because I've lost touch with your inner party animal. Your inner? Vodka jelly. We don't have a licence. I wonder if I've still got that rabbit mould. Do you not think this is spinning a bit too freely? Too freely? It'll laugh folk dizzy. Folk who get dizzy with the sight of happy birthday and it's a boy flashing through the vision should be put down. Hello, Emily. Uh, hello. Uh, Norris, there's a message for you on the answer phone. A, a Mr Guthrie? A Australian High Commission? Oh, yes. What did he say? Well, just there shouldn't be a problem. What well, shouldn't be a problem? Uh, I'd like you both to know that uh, makes no odds to me either way. What does it? I put in a request to have Ramsay's body brought back here. I'm sorry, love. I couldn't help myself. I just hope the insurance will cover it. He'll be glad in the long run. I'm glad already. Oh, God. My mother seems to think that now we're both retired, I'm great material for the one o'clock club. Oh. I keep trying to tell her I'm after another job. I thought you had redundancy coming. Steve! Oh. Leave me to clear all this up, my daughter. I don't just want another job for the money. It's to avoid my mother dragging me to things like tonight. <laughs> Do you even play bridge? Oh, I don't think I'll be playing it. I think I'll be jumping off it. I'll tell you what, we'll swap. I'll go to bridge and you can persuade my son to come back from the dark side. Cosy little chats with drug dealers and junkies. Now, where is that letter? It was on there. So I take it the police still think the drugs were hers then? Well, whether it's a fit up or not, it doesn't matter. The fact is, she knows a handy little drug dealer right there. That says it all for me. Do you think she'll go to prison? She's trouble. She always will be. Well, we've all been in trouble. I know Steve's no saint, but he was a good kid, and now he's really trying to make the best of himself. She doesn't have that background. Here we are. Oh! Hurrah! A bill. <laughs> hey, you know what worries me is, what do we tell Amy about Becky? 
I mean, she's just gonna think it's normal to go to prison. She's only just got her head around Tracy. Shouldn't we wait? I'm not one to put things off, Ashley. That's your department. I need someone to stand on it. Kev won't want all this fuss, you know. Just the food will do. Kev? He'll find it hilarious. Anyway, it's Sally's orders and it takes a braver person than me to cross her. Would you ever consider having a vasectomy, Tara? Eh? Claire. I'm only asking. Well, we'd want to have our kids first, obviously. Hey, you said out about kids. Well, we want kids. Yeah, well, we don't know if we can yet, do we? Oh, any problems in that department? Ashley, help you out. You could be their sperm donor. Yeah, that'd be a bit too weird. He's not ruling out affairs either, if that helps. Becky? Argue with me, fine. Be angry with me, whatever. Let's just not do it here, eh? Am I not being considerate enough, Ashley? This is our business. It's got nothing to do with anybody else. Seen the scissors? Oh, don't let Claire near these. I reckon she's after doing Ashley some serious damage. Right, what's that for? Cos, I'm gonna do like a finishing tape across here, aren't I? <sighs> Sally said it's like a half marathon birthday thing, so. Actually, you should go on that side and cross it with him. Slow motion like the chariots of fire. Dun 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 Ty. Dun 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 I'm really not feeling well. What's up? Ash! Ash! Get on the table! What's this? Surprise! What do you like? <laughs> hey, go on, cross the line then. You and Mo. What? Yeah, do it like this, so. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> go on. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> hey, happy birthday. Hey. Happy birthday to you. Why don't you stop her? What? Becky, she's gone. Gone where? Gone, gone! Gone! She's gone, Mum! Oh, Look, the note just said, don't try and find me. Oh, no. You didn't see her? Well, not since she came in earlier. I mean, she was in a funny mood. What kind of funny mood? Oh, not like she was going to run away. In fact, she said she was going to work her way through Roy's menu before the trial. And she's not got much past all day breakfast. If she contacts you. I'll let you know straight away. And tell Eileen if she wants to get me, I'll be on the radio. <sighs> oh, dear. You know, uh, this isn't a word I use very often, but I hate that hooch fella. He's a disgrace. I'd happily do unspeakable things. See you later. Yeah, yeah. You know, Kevin's hopeless. He'd rather be in the old house, but I say to him, Kevin, the space. I mean, I bet you've not sat six people down since you moved in, have you? I don't know, we show our faces. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean. We might have to sit six down, mind, if we have any more kids. You want more kids? No, but accidents happen. Like the one that nearly killed me a few weeks back. We're not going to have any more. Do you get broody sound now the girls are bigger than that? Ty? What? It's none of our business, is it? <sighs> Couldn't go through all that again. Running around day and night. And he'd be less than useless of that. I'll pull me weight with the girls. <laughs> Got a lot more weight to pull now. You won't want any more kids anyway, Kevin. It'd cut into your precious pub time. 
Oh, he's getting more caveman every day. Hey, it is his birthday. Yeah, give me a break. Two cavemen together then. Is Tyrone one and all? Um, I don't think any of them are. Oh, traitor. Ah, would anyone like Christini? Fresh goes favourites. I'll have uh, an orange juice, please. Leave some white for Blanche. Do you need tea, Blanche? I suppose. Been stood up by Deirdre. Sooner stop in with Ken and do her packing than play bridge with me at the one o'clock club. She's no sense of adventure, hasn't Deirdre? We've time to get there if you want to partner me. But just watch that Anna Ashby. She's a taste for young flesh. Well, thanks, Blanche, but I think I'm going to give that one a miss. I've got a date. With who? No idea yet. Hiya. Uh, can I buy you ladies a drink? Becky, it, it's Hayley and, and Roy. Listen, if you get this, um, well, Steve's looking all over and we're worried about you. I, I said to Roy, you'd, you'd not go without a word to us, not, not even goodbye, you, you wouldn't. Roy's been out to shop for one of them dishes from that recipe book you bought me from Maldives. You were going to cook it for you in his chef's hat, weren't you? I, we, you are very important to us, Becky. Very. We love you very much. Keep safe. Mm, that pavlova was gorgeous. Molly made it. No, Molly assembled it. I made it. Well, she whipped the cream in that. Mm. I would have put more raspberries on. Well, whoever made it, it was gorgeous. Well, shall we retire? Due to the conservatory? Because I thought we could have a game or something. Charades? No, I've got scruples. Shall I open uh, another bottle of wine? Mm. Oh, I could squeeze down another glass. <sighs> Don't open one specially. <laughs> Am I not allowed a drink on a Friday night? Yeah, of course you are. Thank you, Kevin. You are much nicer than Ashley. You've had plenty. Mm. Don't worry, I'm not going to make a pass at him. <laughs> I've been there, done that. <laughs> Do you remember <laughs> when I made a pass at you? <laughs> I was mortified. <laughs> but in my defence, I had been clinically mad and Ashley was cheating. Are you saying that's what it takes to fancy my husband? Because I usually find a pair of wine goggles does the trick. <laughs> that's so nasty. You've done nothing but snipe at him all night. Well, excuse me for making a joke. Yeah, but it wasn't a joke, though, was it? Wasn't it? No. Have you got X-ray vision into other people's relationships, then, have you? I thought we were going through to the conservatory. Yeah, we should go and check on Jack. I don't like leaving him yeah. alone. Right. Not when he's thinking of moving out. I'll take these through. No, leave it. Kevin will help me. If that's not some sort of abuse. So, come on, Mom. <laughs> what about that wine? <laughs> so you read minds? Yeah, weather feels under stare and brown, mate. Go on, then. What am I thinking? Okay. You have to give me a hand. Oh, aye. Shh. I'm concentrating. Right. Is he single? Has he got a car with him or is he an alcoholic? And if he asks for my phone number, shall I give it him? You're such a blagger. And the answers are yes, single, recovering alcoholic, and yes, you should give me a phone number. Okay. Your turn. What am I thinking? Okay. Liam! Are you? <laughs> You're thinking, is she impressed with my chat up line? The answer being no. You're also thinking, I'm only interested when I'm speaking. As soon as she opens her mouth, I switch off. No, sorry, no, I'm not at all. I just noticed your glass was empty, worried that you think I'd spoil things by not drinking. Well, it's good to hear you sounded so bright, love. <laughs> yeah. Same old, same old. Nothing changes round here. You are. You all right, Jack? Aye, son. Aye, aye. I'm going to get you another one. No, I think I'll be getting home. Who says? True. 
I don't think I'll be getting the rolling pin if I stagger in at nine o'clock in the morning, will I? <laughs> hey, I'm sure she'll be swinging it at you from somewhere. <laughs> hey, stick him another one in there. She's a stupid gobby cow, that's all. Well, I think you should apologise. Well, I said no, worse than Claire. Well, I think she should apologise and all. She's rude. Molly, what is up with you? Because if you're not going to explain why you're being like this, at least don't drag me into it. I've got to work with Kev and I've got to speak to Sally and all. Right. Well, I'll go and apologise. Oh, let's go for a drink first. Give Claire and Ashley a chance to go. Rose, Rose, hello. Becky, is that...? I'm sorry, Roy. I should have said goodbye, but... I... Where, where, where are you? You make sure you still cook that special, yeah? Call it Beck's Fave or something. You two, you've, you're the best in the world. Don't, don't hang up. I'm being in this phone now. So I tell Steve there's no point ringing it no more. It's right, right? It's the right thing. Look after each other, yeah? Becky! Where is she? She didn't say. What? Phone her back! She said she's binning the phone. Oh! That there was a tannoy in the background, a, a, a announcement. Train station? Airport? I don't think so, because, I mean, I'm fairly sure. Of course, it could be a lorry of Roy, some what did you hear? Air brakes. Air brakes. Which would suggest a coach. Right, let's tell Steve. Becky. Please do not cross the bus ways. The use of the Becky. Is Becky. Excuse me. Excuse me. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, mate. Excuse me. Excuse me, love. Becky, please. Please. Go away, Steve. Just talk to me. Please. Spent half my life in these places. Travelling. Sleeping rough. Well, you can't want to go back to that. You think I'm running because of me? I'm going for you and Ames. Well, then don't, because we don't want you to. Remember Maldives? One night, I crept out onto the balcony, and there were all these boats just... just... what's it in? Up and down on the water. I wanted to squeal. Should have woke me up. Nah. No, cos that were it, you see. You lying there in that big posh bed all asleep and that. Me stood on a balcony in the dark. And then boats. With all the whole sea to sail on, but happy just... What's it in? Up and down and up and down. Felt like a dream. What a dream, really. Come on. I can't, Steve. I honestly can't. Thanks. See you again.
Emily said Josh was unsettled. Claire. Let's go and read him a story. Well, at least tell me where you were going. Don't know. You know what? I've had enough of this. You might not care about you, Becky, but I flaming do. Well, that's not my fault. You know, you go on about the Maldives. It wasn't a dream. I was there. It was real life. Our real life. Yeah. You give me all that and what do you get You! Back? I get you! You, you moony cow. A beautiful, loyal, passionate, crazy. Half the time you seem that breakable I don't even let you step foot out the front door. The other half you're like a shuck up can of lager that no one's safe from. I've seen you nearly take down a wall because you couldn't do the zip up on your top. And then the next minute you're reading a bedtime story to Amy. Just twiddling with her hair. You make me sound like a pet monkey. <laughs> monkeys don't decide they're not worthy and get on flaming buses. Pet monkeys, I bet, work out where they're loved and part their hairy backsides down right there and stay put. You say my backsides there? No. I'm saying... Do what you like. But don't dare kid yourself this is for me. Don't you flaming dare because you'll break my flipping heart. There you go. Don't look at me like that. I've only had the one. <laughs> so what do you reckon, my little swamp duck? You're in the walls here. In the bricks and mortar. Ah, yeah, cos like... In my head, that's where you are. In my own black and heart. Happy birthday for You know, that bush you made me get off. My bag's still on it. Funny how people bring one bottle and then drink two. I'm not drunk. I meant Ashley and Claire. I came to say sorry. Right, well, uh, I was... I was rude. Tell her it's OK, Sal. We'd all had a drink. She was telling me she was sober. Well, I'm not sober, just not drunk. I wasn't the only one making comments. Claire was horrible about Ashley, but you didn't go and knot in your knickers over that, did you? No, I know. It was just the last straw. Look, um. I've brought this to say sorry. Staff discount. Well, it is from the Rovers. Pay double there. Sally, I'm double sorry. All right. I, look, I was just worried about Kevin. I, I didn't want his evening to go all pear shaped. Hey! I had a great time, me. Mm, thanks for organising it, you know, the food and everything. And the pavlova was all Sally. I only assembled it. Do you want to take a piece home with you? No, no, I'm fine. For Jack? Um, 
yeah, all right, go on then. Because Kevin was about to scoff the last bit, weren't you? <laughs> if I'm allowed to say that. Well, of course, look, um, if Kevin wants it, it's fine. No, take it for Jack. In the conservatory. I'll go and wrap it. Don't look at me like that. I can't help it. Don't make a for sales. I feel enough of a fool as it is. Don't be so daft. Oh, come here. Oh. Good thing you found her. Oh, thanks to Roy's air brakes. Uh, very distinctive. Uh, a remarkable invention, uh, safety wise, uh, compared to the hydraulic system which suits the smaller vehicles. <laughs> Such a. Roy. <sighs> Come here, sit yourself down. I've made something for you. I thought I was going to have to eat it myself. Oh, no, Ailes, thanks. I couldn't, though. I've not felt right since some tin tomatoes this morning, you know. Uh, but perhaps the anxiety of the day has more to do with your loss of appetite. I wasn't slagging your tomatoes right, honest. <laughs> Is that...? It's vodka jelly. Yeah, made by my own fair inner party animal. <laughs> I brought the wrong one home from the bus station. This can't be my Becky's. This one's too soft. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> They're asleep. If you want to roll, let's do it quietly, eh? I don't want to be like her. I won't be like her. Like Sally Webster. No! Uh, me! The me that I was tonight. Then don't be. You made me feel like this. You did. You made me look like the cow, and I'm not a cow. It's just that. Lied to. They're not listened to. They're not cared about. Of course, I cared about, yeah. You knew why I felt like I didn't make them at sex with me. I love it, Claire, because I love you. I trusted you. And I said that I'm sorry. And that makes me the cow. Let's just talk about this tomorrow, eh? No. We'll not talk about it anymore. Not another word. You'll hear nothing from me. Not for sex me. No hospitals, no arguments, and no sex. You know why I was so scared of getting pregnant again? I never forced you to agree to the op. I never said you did. I'm not that you make me hate myself for not wanting to take the risk. Well, don't just walk off. The subject's closed. But don't you dare lay one finger on me. Not what? Night, night. Right, let's get you home. I wonder if you can smuggle vodka jelly into Nick for me. No. Oh. I don't know, I use your imagination. Right? You could fill two rubber gloves with the stuff, and then you could put your own hands up your sleeve, and then have the rubber gloves. <laughs> Never your mind hands. smuggling. I'll get arrested for looking like a mutant telly tubby. Mm. Anyway, we're not talking about prison time. No. I don't know about you, but I'm going to have cocktails this evening with my new wife, Becky McDonald. Yeah. No prison, no ooch, and no last few nights of freedom. Exactly. Oh, Steve. How are we going to get through this? We will.
Do you want solid cream on this? Tiny smidgen. There's one here in Victoria Court. What? There's about 100. Is it to buy or rent? Rent, master bedroom and sweetie. <laughs> Balcony with city centre views. They'll come in very handy. Hey, yeah, if you get one round the front, you'll still be able to hear me and him row. We don't row, darling. Yes, we do, darling. Well, not much. What are you pulling your face at? Well, we don't row. Anyway, Jack doesn't want to live in a tower block. It's not a tower block. It's full of yuppies. Besides, where would I have put my pigeon coop? Oh, well, that could be a deal breaker wherever you go. Not here. Your birds are always welcome here. Unless I buy, that would put a different complexion on things. You could buy that flat Jason and Tina are doing up, get it done to your specification. On sweet pigeon coop. But the most important thing is that you don't rush into anything. You take your time, ain't that right, Ma? I thought we could go somewhere for the day. Yeah? Yeah. Thinking Blackpool or Windermere? I'm answering my bail tomorrow. Don't suppose you're doing this because it could be my last day of freedom. It isn't. Yeah, well, if it is, I don't want to go anywhere. I want to stay here with you. Maybe see a few mates. <laughs> Nurse Collins, <laughs> where do you think you're going? Work. Yeah? What, without saying goodbye? You were crashed out. Well, you could have revived me, couldn't you? I've got work. What time did you start? An hour. Yeah? Mm. Well, I'll tell you what. You bring your drink next door, and then I'll run you in. How about that? I have got lives to say. Yeah? Well, start with mine. How about that? <laughs> no! <laughs> Get off! <laughs> <laughs> Tig, can I play? Tig. All set. Go to work. I'm going with you. No, you're not. But I want to be there to support you. I've taken the day off work. Go fill a skip. Dad! I've said all this to Gail. I'm going to court to be sentenced. I don't want the people I care about most watching. I just want it over and done with. You know, sometimes I think you want Jack to move out. Well, no, but he's made his mind up, hasn't he? Well, they'll put the removal man today if you carry on like you are. Why? What have I done? Making out that we row all the time. Well, we do. Well, it stops today. I mean it. It's driving Jack away. OK. That made a very good start, have we? And um, if he shows you any property details, right, point out the drawbacks, not the positives. What, so even if he finds the perfect house, I'm supposed to diss it? He's already living in the perfect house. And be nice to Kev. Why? You know why? Can you uh, take this car for a drive, mate? Not sure about the clutch, so I need a good run out. Yeah, no worries. See you later. See ya. Have you uh, done any more running since the biggie? No, I've um, had a little nickel, actually. Yeah? You got a minute? What time do you call this? I've slept. Listen, I've got a wedding to do. I need someone to man the switch. Well, where's Claire and Eileen? Read the rotor. What if somebody spots Slug? Oh, now he's interested. Well, of course I'm interested. My wife might go down for five years. Who was on the switch last night? Me. How many drivers? Four. No sightings? No. Well, did you tell the drivers what to do when they started? Yes! Steve! This is a mini-cab firm, not the Greater Manchester Constabulary. But he might be out there somewhere. <sighs> Look, I know, and I know you're going through the ring. Look, the slug could be anywhere. Look, man, I've got to go. <laughs> I can't bear this. I need to see you properly. I know. Me too. <laughs> The trouble is, you set the bar very high after the run. Kevin? Kevin? Um, so, just have a look on the website, see what you think. Uh, Hi, Sally. Gonna talk me into doing another half marathon. <laughs> I brought the books back. Oh, did you have them again? You wanna try Dan Brown for a bit of bedtime reading? I prefer Thomas Hardy since I did my A-level. Ooh, whatever. Um, right, well, I best get back to work. Yeah, bye. So have you done with that? Hey, is it my imagination or have you stopped doing recovery? No, why? Because I was going through the invoices and there weren't any call-outs. Well, it was just quiet, I suppose. 
pop truck is a very expensive luxury, Kevin, to have sitting on a forecourt. You need to push it more. Oh, yeah, right, cos I'm only doing 60 hours a week as it is. Sorry for having an opinion. This is a very long hug. <laughs> yeah. You're not planning on running away again? No. I like hugging you. You're very huggable. Well, in that case, you carry on. Take as long as you like. Care to join us, Roy? Uh, no. Oh, go on. Then it'll be a group hug. I have barn cakes to butter. You know, this could be a last chance before I go away. Are you planning a trip away? What are you talking about going to... Go on, Ailes, you can say it. Listen. Well, I have sufficient faith in the legal system. <laughs> you obviously haven't met the same coppers and judges I have. Ah, Jack, what can I get for you? Two of your finest meat and potato pies, please, Roy. Uh, chips, peas, salad. Salad? I have to ask. Oh, I'll have salad, actually. And a pie? Yeah, a pie with potato in it, yeah. Have you got that? Take a seat. All right. Uh, these are on me, by the way, of an apology. Why? Well, I was a bit funny with you last time we were out. It was uh, Elvira's birthday, you see. Oh. Why didn't you say? Because I didn't think it would bother me as much as it did. Oh, birthdays, anniversary. They're bound to knock you for six. I should have told you instead of bottling it up. It might have been a bit easier. Well, I'm flattered you're saying it, but I doubt it. <sighs> the reception. Congratulations, mate. Steve, Lloyd, over. Um, the radio's bad. You'll have to speak up, mate. Steve, I've just dropped off at the Peter Spring Hotel. To Bates, do you read me? I can't hear you, mate. You'll have to shout. Steve, I found him. I found oh, him. Oh, You're not leaving that, are you? That pie could feed a whole family. I'm stuffed to the gills. Get it over here. Oh, Jack Duckworth, you're a gannet. I cannot bear the thought of wasting good food. I think it comes of having known when I was a kid. Well, I had note as a kid, but I still don't eat two dinners at once. I fancy roly poly for me afters. <laughs> How's the house hunting, by the way? Well, I've not exactly found me dream home, but even them that are nice, I just imagine myself sat there on my sod. You don't have to live on your own, I've told you. Yes, I know, and you're very kind, but I don't think I can. Just stay where you are. You'll never be lonely away, Molly and Tyrone. Yeah, but they're newlyweds. They need the house to themselves, don't they? Well, my offer is stopping on the table. If you change your mind... Go on, then. You've talked me into it. I beg your pardon? Well, you keep asking. I keep saying no. I can only keep up for so long. What? You mean you want to move in? I've thought about this long and hard. I'd be bound me not to. I trust you have a good barrister. Best. It's just... Oh, what? Come on. It's just I wish you wouldn't get yourself into these predicaments. I've been stitched up. He obviously doesn't believe me. No, of course I believe you, but it is the second time in less than a year that you've appeared in court. Yes, but last time that was On just because... On a charge I... of criminal damage. Yes, and Hooch lost. That's why he's done this to me now. 
I'm not saying you're not innocent. I know you are. Right, but I'm still guilty of something. Is that what you're saying? That's this this wonderful justice system of yours. You have made an enemy of a senior officer of the law. Are you saying that she deserves this? No. You are, aren't you? The man she looks to as a father figure. Me and Ooch, we go back years, 13 years to be precise, on the back seat of his car. Now, obviously, I don't condone any of that. I'm just... Stop digging, Roy. Us. Hey, found him. I found some luck. Peter Street's outside the Master Cooper. Right, stay with him. I'm on my way. I swear. I don't. I'm all you. Shut up and be still. Uh, that hurts your not copper. Here comes the citizen's arrest, eh? Yeah, Sally's been on at me to do more vehicle recoveries. Tell us to show it. Yeah, I did. Good. And then I got thinking that if I did give it a push... I'll work and no play. No, I can combine the two. Especially at night and weekends. I don't get it. Well, the phone goes, I answer, and I say to Sal, there's a car once picking up in, say, Bolton, further even, and I get in the truck and meet you. The truck? And then we go to a hotel mm. and we can have two or three hours together. Well, I like the sound of it. Well, we play our cards, right? Could spend some proper time together, maybe once or twice a week. What am I going to tell Tyrone? <laughs> Leave it with me. It's 360, that. All right, Jack. Kevin. Cheers. Thanks. See ya. What do you fancy for tea? Um, why are you cooking? Might be. Oh, well, hey. Can, can I ask your advice about something? Yeah, uh, listen, Dad, I'm, I'm sorry about what happened this morning. I heard you were caught in flagrante. I should have known he'd want to feed Leanne before he went to school. Ah, oh, no, it's my fault. I should have phoned before I brought him round, checked the coast was clear. You have a different woman in that flat every week. Leanne, Michelle, who was your latest squeeze? Naomi, and she's a very nice girl. Never mind a betting shop, it's more like a knocking shop over there. Yeah, a slight exaggeration. It's Simon I feel sorry for. He should be your priority. He just saw an attractive young woman in a state of semi-undress probably made his day blanch. A procession of flues is coming and going, none of them his mother. Yeah, well, it might be an idea to plan things a bit better next time you think you'll be entertaining. Look, she's not a floozy. She's a very nice girl, and I like her. And she's a nurse. Is she? She is, yes. Where does she work? St Cuthbert's, A&E. Fancy. And will you be seeing her again? Oh, yeah, I certainly hope so. And don't worry, Simon's my priority. He comes first. scumbag at your disposal. Now, if you ever get bored of being a cab driver, you make a very good copper. Hello, Neil. You. you fancy a ride in a nice big car? Right, you. On your feet. Try and run. 
and I'll break your arms. She's got this house, it's quite a big house. She doesn't live there anymore. Right. Mm, and she's asked me would I like to move in with her, just as friends, just company, you know. Oh, mm. well, wow, that sounds ideal. Mm. What are you worried about? I think you can guess. Well, people come into your life when you don't expect them to. Mm. You and Connie aren't an item, but you're friends. Everyone can see that. Yeah, but friends, just good friends. Yeah, I know, mm. and Vera would want you to be happy and content, and above all, she'd want to see that you're not lonely. Vera? I'm not worried about Vera, I know. She, she gave me her blessing. Did she? Yeah, it's all to us, yeah. It's Tyrone I'm worried about. Mm. Of course. Yeah. So I was wondering if you'd help me break the news to him gently, like... Mm. My wife could go down for five years because of you. I don't know what you're talking about. My pub was busted on our wedding day! All these drugs are everywhere. It's a nice car, this. A lot of leg room in the back. Them drugs were planted, and I think it was you. I bet she's a thirsty little beast, though. Start talking, or you're a dead man! Put a CD on or something, a bit of XFM. Lloyd, a word. He's hiding something. Yeah. Right, beat him up. Do whatever it takes, make him fess up. What me? Well, he's already scared of you. You've already roughed him up a bit. I tackled him to the ground. And tied his hands together with ribbon. And to be honest, I'm surprised I could do that. I don't go roughing people up. Please. For me. You do it. Well, he's not scared of me. At least you've got a bit of menace about you. You're a scouser. Steve, I do not lay into people. It's not in my nature. Well, just slap him a bit. You'll cry like a baby. Well, you do it then. All right. Just let me sign myself up. Right, open the door. We'll get him out. You hold him. I'll thump him. Great. Right, you. Out. What do you know about the raid at my pub? Nothing. Liar! That's right, Steve. Give him a really good shake. I don't think I expressed myself very well earlier. Oh, I got the message made loud and clear. What, what I was trying to say... You've said enough. I worry about you. And I want you to stop making the same mistakes over and over again. I know. And you're right, I was asking for it, getting up a copper's nose, yes. I was guilty last time and I walked free, so maybe this time I'll go down for something I didn't do. That, that would not be justice. It would be very wrong, and, and I sincerely hope it will not happen. Soon we'll see you, won't we? But... Whatever happens, I will always be here to offer whatever help and support that I can. Thanks. And now I'm going to do something that I, I rarely do in public. You're rougher with Amy. I do not hit my daughter. Ignore the bad, reward the good in our house. That is how you get results. So you're saying we should give him a star chart and put him on the naughty step? No, but this obviously ain't working, clearly. We need to think outside the box. If he's not scared of us, who is he scared of? What? Open the boom. Your worst nightmare is about to come true. I don't know. What are you doing? Right. 
Right, right. right I've just got some steak off the silly lad that works for Ashley. There, so, so that's going to put him in a good mood. Uh, and me? Mm -hmm. And I've got some cans to put in the fridge, so we'll give him a drink first, then we'll eat. Then I'll bring up the subject of moving. Jack! <laughs> Jack, will you look at you? You're on pins. A, a bit, yeah. Well, I don't think you've got some terrible confession to make. Oh, you know what he's like. Uh, stubborn and unreasonable. No, he still thinks a lot about Peter, you see. Tyrone's problem is he doesn't like change. He'd want everything to stay the same, but things do change. People change. Oh, you're building quite a stream. You, you don't need his permission. It's your life. If he really cares about you, he'll want you to be happy. I'm bank on it, look. That'll be him. Leave it with me, I'm going to talk to him. How do? How do? Oh, Kev's on about doing more recovery work. I just told him. Said that I won't be going out at all hours. What's the tea? Never mind that. Jack has got some good news, haven't you, Jack? Oh, aye. Connie has asked him to move into her house. Isn't that brilliant? <laughs> So how'd you get on? Community service. That's a relief. You know, not the one who'll be scraping graffiti off the wall for the next six months. Is that what you got to do? I don't know yet. I've got to do reports and whatnot. Psychoanalyze and profile me before they decide exactly how I should be repaying me debt to society. <laughs> Spill the bean slug or you are a dead man. If you're gonna kill me, at least tell me what I'm meant to have done first. Ooh. Becky, do we have to do this outside the office? It's not good for business. I won't be recommending you to any of my friends. Tyrone. I think he's in shock. Are you quite sure about that? All that talk? All those lies? Oh no, he's coming out of it. Not giving us space. It's true. So where is this little love nest, then? It is not a love nest, it's her house. And she hasn't been out of living since her husband passed away. So that's why she wants to get her hands on your cash? The last thing she needs is money. She's like me. Friendship, company, somebody to have a bit of a laugh with. Well, you can do all that in the Legion. You can play bingo, go on coach trips. You don't have to live with her. It is an arrangement that suits the both of us. <laughs> an arrangement? Right. I'm going to give her a ring. See if I can take both of you up. And then you'll see for yourself. Over my dead body. If necessary, get your go. I was minding my own business having a quiet pint when Starsky Nuts show up, start accusing me of planting drugs. Did you plant the drugs? Why would I do that to you? Because someone told you to. Who? DC Hooch. Hooch? I haven't seen him for years. I thought he'd moved down south. Oh, no, he's still around and he's still got it in for me. Oh, well, that's for you and him to sort out. Don't drag me into it. You turn up out of the blue. Looking up an old flame. Next thing I know, the pub gets raided on my wedding day. Before or after you got itched. What's that matter? Well, it matters to me. After. So your Mrs. McDonald, yeah. It's not the best start to married life, though, is it? Banged up on my wedding night. You think I'd do that to you? You know how much I care about you. <sighs> what if I'm wrong? What if you can't go out to do with all this? Well, then we're in almost as much trouble as you. No, listen, right? You let me go now, and we'll say no more about it. Bunny Blanche! Hello, sweetheart. How was school? OK. Recovered from this morning. Finding a strange woman in the house. Her name's Naomi. She left the perfume behind, so I took it in to show and tell. Hey, I think that should be kiss and tell, don't you? I explained to the class they're only friends. They're not marrying themselves. Can you imagine if he did marry her and we had a qualified nurse in the family? Oh, it'd be like having private health insurance. Hey, 
Give me a chance. I've only seen her once. Free medical supplies. You're like the geriatric equivalent of a child in a sweet shop, you. So when are you seeing her again? Oh, tonight, as it happens. I'm having her around for a bite to eat. I take it Simon will be stopping the night with us. No, not tonight. I want him to be me. Hey, how do you fancy helping me cook? Yeah. I'm really sorry about what's happened, but it's got out to do with me. You turned up like a bad penny. So I was sent by a copper to set you up. It's off its head. Oh, well, maybe we should let him go then. Get back to running a taxi fare, mate. He's a druggie. I don't trust a word he says. Oh, he'd be fair. He don't do drugs no more. He was buying them when I collared him. Were you? I saw the cash change hands. Oh, that wasn't drugs. I dabble now and again. But I'm not an addict anymore. So you lied? A white lie. Just like you lied about working at Moby Ricks. No. Yes, we went there. They'd never heard of you. Making out to me that you got your life back on track and it was just a big lie. And you're lying now. Can you leave us alone for a minute, lads? Right, easy, 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 easy. This, this house here on your left. Here. Yeah, well, I still think she's a gold... Gold digger, were you going to say? No, she must be good at it. Well, is it like splitting to flats or something? No. She owns a whole house. So why did you do it? You're jealous of me and Steve? No. Well, yeah, but that's not it. Just me then, for getting my life on track. You saw that and you wanted to destroy it. No. Well, you have destroyed it. I'm going to prison for five years for something that I didn't do. You think you'll be waiting for me when I get out? I tried to warn you. I had no choice. He was blackmailing me. Inch. So you have seen him then? Seen him every time I put a foot wrong, he's there. Why? He was using me to get to you. You're the big prize. Blimey. Have you put that much effort into getting real villains? It does me. He caught me red-handed with a bag full of stolen gear. He offered me a deal. Really, Becky Granger, and you walk free? Yeah. He told me to pay you a visit. Get up close enough to plant some gear, he'd do the rest. I told him you wouldn't want to know me, so he slipped me a few quid to smart myself up. And that's when I came in. I made up the stuff about the job. And all that about missing me and wanting me, you were just trying to put me off my guard. When I saw you, when I saw how happy you were, I couldn't go through with it. I told him to stuff it, and I walked away. You didn't get very far. He had loads of stuff on me. He really put pressure on. He said I'd go down for two years minimum. So you did what he asked? I came into the pub before the wedding. I found your bag. I'm not proud, Becky. I've got an habit to maintain. Get help. From who? They've all given up on me. I would have helped you. You sent me packing. Just because I've done all right for myself don't mean I'd turn my back on my mate. I'm sorry, Becky. I've really let you down. <laughs> Understatement of the millennium. Well, you might still get off. Do you know how much they found? Well, no, of course you do. You put it there. Getting anywhere? Yeah, he's admitted everything. Told me all the gory details. Well, well. This is fantastic news. This changes everything. What do you think? I'll call the solicitor. Yes. Oh, yeah. Well, that's great. Yeah. Yeah, listen, uh, Thanks. Well? Well, this is explosive stuff. Um? Hooch could go down for conspiracy to pervert the course of justice. Get in. Conspiracy to supply drugs. You beauty. And misconduct in a public office. He'll probably go down. Definitely lose his job. Oh, good. Yeah, but are we going to prove any of this? Well, yeah. 
We've got you, haven't we, a star witness? I'm not repeating what I told you in court. Why not? You'll make mincemeat of me. You know what my record's like. We can force you to go. Yeah, and if you do, I'll stand up and say what a top man DC Uchi is, Manchester's finest. If you don't help me, I'm going down. I'm sorry, Becky, but you're on your own. No, she's not. Because she's got me. People who care about her, and I'm not going to let this go. No, we need to be clever about this. You've just got an IQ of 140. I rolled to him a court and back once and we got talking. Well, if we let him know that we've got... Slug, and that he's willing to testify... Yeah, but I'm not. No, I'm just saying, if he thinks you are... He knows I'm not. Then we call his bluff. Might make him think again. Hang on. Call him a copper's bluff. Sounds like a risky strategy, kid. It's worth a try. Oh, count me out, mate. I'm not going anywhere near Ooch. Give me his drugs. Oh, there. Hang on a minute. What are you going to do? Oh, I'm going to put these somewhere very safe. And if you well puzz, you get them back. If not, I'm going to flush them down the bog. The last time I was in a house this size, you had to pay an admission. The first time she showed me round here, I thought I'd died and gone to heaven. Yeah, except it's not heaven, is it? Because a certain somebody isn't here. Connie is a cracking lass, but you're not, not a replacement for my Vera. Yeah, I'm not being funny, Jack. I can understand why you'd want to live here. But we're having separate rooms. Even the pigeons have got their own room. If you could give me your blessing, it it would mean ever such a lot. Well, it is nice. Now I'm going to show you the best bit. What did you say to him exactly? I said I was offered him the chance to save his career. Well, why not poke him with a sharp stick? Really annoy him? Look, if he thinks there's even a chance that Slug might blow the whistle. But I won't. He knows that. Just pretend for a minute. Look him in the eye. But he could just squeal the hold of me against me will. And we all get carted off to the cop shop. No, I don't do that. Tell him you're going to make a complaint. Do you have to use those exact words or can I make something up? It's up to you. <sighs> I don't think he'll come. I mean, why would he? Because he knows I'm telling the truth. He's bound to be curious. What, curious enough to meet the husband of his victim in the middle of nowhere? This could backfire badly, kid. Yeah, he's right. Let's go. Oops, you going to listen to him anyway. He'll come. And when he does, you're going to do exactly what he says. Do you hear me? You owe me that. You'd have never got it. Oh. Well, Jack retired uh, going for a tricky pink. I can't be cocking my leg over a snooker table at my age, can I? Oh, well, that will put Tyrone's <laughs> mind at ease. You know, I love a snooker, me. If there's one sport that I could do professionally, that's what it'd be. I could just see you in a jazzy waistcoat, cue in hand. <laughs> yeah, typhoid Tyrone. <laughs> I think you mean Typhoon. Oh, that's what I meant, Typhoon, Tyrone. <laughs> well, you're welcome to come and play any time you like. Oh, ta. <laughs> Actually, I owe you a bit of an apology. I've been really horrible to you. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Calling you a gold digger. So I reckon if anybody's a gold digger, it's me. Because I reckon you're pure gold. <laughs> You see, the trouble is, Connie, Jack and Vera are the nearest thing I've had to a proper mum and dad. That's why I've acted how I have. I've just been really selfish, that's all. But if he has to move out, then I'd be really pleased if he was staying here with you. Oh. <laughs> Tea! So it's just the three of us? Yeah, I, uh thought it'd be a good chance for you two to get acquainted. Great, yeah. What's his bedtime? Eight-ish, normally. But he's going to eat with us tonight. <laughs> you don't mind that, do you? Mm, of course not. It's a little cutie. <laughs> uh, excuse me. Don't 
McDonald's crisp? No, thanks. A cheese and onion? I've had loads already. Do you want to play Sates and Ladders? No, thank you. Do you know Monopoly? Not tonight. Purse? Is that DVD player? Yep. What's your favourite DVD? Cars. Would you like to watch it? No, I'd rather play Snakes and Ladders. Somebody mentioned Snakes and Ladders. Showtime. Good luck, baby. Evening, officer. Set anybody up today? This is Manchester. There's crooks wherever you turn. I mean, who would have thought a nice little boozer like yours would end up being a drugs den? Bet trade's taken a fair whack, has it? The only drugs in my pub are the ones you planted. Would you care to put that in writing? Oh, I can do better than that. I brought the guy along who did it. Thought we might be able to broker a little deal between us. Would you like to say hello? This your secret weapon. Neil Ackroyd, renowned druggie and burglar of this parish. No, I can't do it. If you can, you win. Always thought you two made a lovely couple. <laughs> I've told them everything and all, and I'm prepared to repeat it in court if you have to. I'll go down, but I won't let you do this to her. He's got a soft spot for you, hasn't he? Very touchy. You are hereby charged with conspiracy to pervert the course of justice. I don't think so. Conspiracy to supply drugs. Misconduct in public office. Charged by whom? The husband of the accused? The ex of the accused, also a druggie and a thief? It's the truth. Are you prepared to take the risk? Drugs reports already gone in. CPS are very happy with my work and have every confidence we'll get a conviction. You could lose your job. You could go down. You made this happen, Ooch. Now make it stop. Oh, two, yes. 99, 100. Oh. Get in. <laughs> we'll play again. Yeah? Shall we play again? Surely it must be your bedtime. Yes, yeah, way past his bedtime, isn't it? I'm just going to go to the loo. OK. Hey, come here. What do you think to her? I mean, do you like her? No. No? Well, she played snakes and ladders with you, didn't she? She didn't want to. You made her. No, I, I think you just have to get used to her, that's all. I don't want to. She makes me feel like I'm in the way. Hey, look at me. You're never in the way, OK? Never. Hey, 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 oi, oi, come here. Where are you going? Your tea's going to be ready in a minute. I'm not hungry. I'm going to bed. Alone at last? Yeah, yeah. Right, uh, I'd best get that lasagna plated up then. Ah. Is everything okay? Yeah, well, it's a bit burnt round the edges, but hey, I don't mind that. Only. You were chasing me around the room this morning and now you're giving me the cold shoulder. Look, um... Naomi, you're a... You're a lovely lass. You are. I'm just not sure this is going to work out. Oh? I'm a single dad. I'm a recovering alcoholic. You know, my, uh, My life, it, it's complicated. Well, none of that bothered you last night. There's always a third person. In every relationship I start. Who are you? Princess Di? And I'm sorry, but if, if you don't hit it off with Sai, then I, I, we don't have a future. I'm, I'm sorry. S I... So I'm being given the old heave-ho by a bloke six-year-old? Well, it's, it's not that simple. Well, that's a new low. You've got no business even talking to me. I could arrest you all now. Do it then. Let's all go down the cop shop now, all of us. IQ of 140, I heard. Only a dummy would risk his liberty over a stupid grudge. 
Oh, go on, report me. My bosses will laugh in your face. He'll get laughed out of court. You reckon? I'll take the risk. Anything to see she gets what she deserves. See you in court, Becky. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, you know what you were saying earlier on today about me doing more recovery work? Oh, ignore me. I crossed the line. No, you didn't. No, I did. It's not up to me what sort of work you concentrate on. Yeah. You're the mechanic. But you was right. Was I? Yeah, I mean, we should push it more. Otherwise, what's the point in having the truck? Do you know, I felt like a right now when I left. And I wouldn't have you any other way. Anyway, I've put a couple of adverts in the paper. That went quick. Well, a lot of people don't realise we're 24-7. That's the key, is getting yourself known. Oh, yeah, but I wasn't saying I wanted you out all hours. No, oh, well, that's what I'm saying. It's not going to be every night, but you've got to be prepared to go where the work is. Well, can't you delegate to Ty? Oh, yeah, he'd love that. We should have not said anything now. Well, it's not going to be all night every night because I put a two-line ad in a free paper. Good. And we're not the only garage in town, so... We'll be looking to get a couple of call-outs a week. Yeah, you're right. It was really lovely what you said at Connie's. Not for me to. I'm still gonna miss him, you know. Yeah, we both will. Still, be nice to have this place to ourselves, eh? Mm hmm. Hey, you don't sound too sure. No, it will. It'd be great. But. Well, I don't want to turn into one of those couples that come home and just veg out in front of the telly every night. I love vegging out in front of the telly. I thought you did too. Yeah, but I just got so much out of that race that I don't want all my training to go to waste. No, no, you do look fantastic. Well, not just by running, by going to the gym and working out. So I was thinking of trying yoga. Yoga? Yeah, there's, um, they've got classes at this new gym in town and they've got a pool, so I was going to join. Wow, new gym, eh? Mm. Sounds expensive. No, they've got an opening offer, so it's cheaper than the one I'm at now. Oh, please don't tell me you want me to go with you. <laughs> Not if you don't want to, no. It's my thing. You should have your thing. Which is vegging out in front of the telly. I'm not going to turn into a fitness freak or anything. It'd just be nice to be able to go off, do a workout, go for a swim, class, a couple of times a week. Yeah, you go for it, babe. I thought it was good. I got a buzz, actually. Your first legal line, God knows how long. Speaking of which, when do I get my stuff back? Wow. He really hates me. He really wants me to go down. Yeah. He knows he's on shaky ground. I mean, he was backing off there. Didn't look like that to me. Looked like he was limbering up, getting ready for a fight. Well, I thought Steve was dead brave saying all that stuff. Yeah, but you should have done this to the proper channels. You don't go meeting bent cops in car parks. You laughed in our faces there. It was the last throw of the dice. I had to give it a try. I know, and you meant well, but Lloyd's right. Gucci's is an animal, and we just rattled his cage. Right. How do you want your eggs, Stevie boy? Poached, fried, sunny side up. Yeah. It's funny, isn't it? You never hear forecasting for sunny side down. I never hear folks asking for sunny side up. It's in an American film. I'm an over easy girl myself. Runny York, but with nice white film on it. None of that gooey stuff. Listen. I just hate runny egg whites, mate. I don't know how people can eat them. About to. Tell you what, if anyone ever gave me eggs like that, I'd just I'd have to kill them. Oh, yeah. Everything's going to be all right. It's not, though, is it? When I go and answer my bill today, that's going to be it. Ooh, she's going to lock me away. We don't know that. Yeah, we do. Do you know all feels like? No. Nope. You'll be pleased to know you won't be seeing her again. Good. Come on, hurry up if you want to go looking for conkers before school. Do you play conkers? You what? 
I was only the school champion. Really? I had a 206 of one year. Oh, yeah. And without cheating as well. How do you cheat? Well, you soak them in vinegar or you leave them in a drawer for a year. I knew one lad used to put nail varnish on his. Nail varnish? Oh, yeah. They could bring out the worst in a man, can I conquer? I'm surprised wars haven't been started. What do you mean? Well, I'll explain later. All right, you go and clean your teeth. There's a good lad. Oh, I haven't found the app. All right, I'll do it. Go on, you get in that bathroom. Right. Come on then, Lee. Breakfast time. Oh, we forgot about you, didn't we? Come on. Bien. Great. How many egg soldiers have you marched into your tummy this morning? Three. And how many you got left? Four. So how many is that all together? Seven. Yeah. <gasps> I should have been a maths teacher, me, you know. Miss my vocation. What? Look, I was just thinking, if the worst does happen today and you don't come back. You mean when, not if. Go on. Well, she's really going to love you. And I'm going to be going out of her life just like her mum, I know. I've been thinking the same. Who's this? A-M-Y. Mm. Well, we're just worried it might mess her up. What did you expect? Oh, well, thanks, Mum. Yeah, that really helps. <sighs> Sorry. You could always talk to her. Explain what might happen. <laughs> I got flayed alive that time for telling her about T-R-A-C-Y. Yeah. But it did work, didn't it? From what Steve said, anyway. Well, it won't work if I did it, cos I'm useless at that kind of thing. Well, let Becky try. Clean up me own mess, you mean? No. No, I don't mean that. Because you do it well. <laughs> Why do I get all the bum jobs round here? Not very talkative, your parrot, is he? Well, he's asleep. I know, but some talk a lot, don't they? Well, some do, some don't. They say one had over a thousand words. <laughs> Look at that, our Jason. What? What's his life expectancy? Well, we could live to 50 or more. So how old's John? When do you get that, Jay? He's about 35. Oh, so I'll outlive him then. <laughs> I thought he was asleep. He must be having a bad dream. Hey, Leon, come in. Just pass it. Shh. <clears throat> Hiya. Hi. Hi, Leon. Uh, not disturbing your breakfast, am I? No, not at all. Can I get you anything? No, I was just passing. <laughs> at least you've got a sense of humour. What? Just wondered if you fancied the gym today after work. Great, yeah, I'm just coming out. Coming out? To work. Oh, right. Right. See you. Bye. 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 <laughs> Very funny, I'm sure. You started it. Well, what am I going to say when they both find out? Ooh, I'm sure you'll think of something. <laughs> and do you like your new teacher at school? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. And no more trouble from them nasty kids what we're calling your names. Good. Cos that wasn't fair, that, was it, when they did that to you? They were naughty. Yeah, they were very naughty. We got you into trouble when you hadn't done out wrong. And you know what, Ames? That can happen to grown-ups, too. I know, because it's happened to me. Why? Well, I don't know why, really. It's just... Well, there's this nasty bloke that's been going round telling lies about me. And what it means is that well, when you get home from school tonight, I might not be here. Where will you be? I might be in that prison place, like your mummy. Have you killed someone? No, 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 no. I've not done anything wrong at all. It's just this bloke what says I have. How long will you be away for? Well, it might be quite a long time, actually, so... I just wanted to warn you, OK? But... I am going to think about you every day because you are my favourite little girl in the whole wide world and I love you to bits. So don't you ever forget that, yeah? Can I come and see you? Yeah, I hope so. Don't be sad. <laughs> I'm going to try not to be sweetheart. 
All right, weird slaves. Not too bad, freeloader. You're not going to let her talk to me like that, are you? Well, I like being pleased to be able to stick up for themselves. Just the can't deal with shopping customers and stuff. Well, I was going to invite you to the party, but I'm not now. Wow. See if I care. It's Jeff Collins, do you remember? Dandruff Jeff. Oh, we don't call him that anymore. He's cool. He's having a leaving party tomorrow night before he goes off on his gap year, so you're invited. Great. Don't sound so enthusiastic. No, I mean, yeah, cool. Right, I'll see you later then. Don't work too hard. See ya. Sure. How's the entertainment business then, Jesse? Oh, not too good, I'm afraid. Bookings are well down. <coughs> Why is that then? Well, I'm suffering from want of a mate. Still no higher, lower. No. See, my act needs a woman riding shotgun. Kids think you're a bit sad otherwise, and old parents think you're a bit of a perv. They don't, do they? Well, no, but a one-man show's not the same. Have you advertised for a replacement? Yeah, not a dicky bird. Well, where have you tried? Newspapers, local press. Oh, you may as well send up smart signals as to that. You want to get yourself online. Well, like the internet. Now used by one quarter of the Earth's population. Right there, see? Whether uh, that's a good or a bad thing. Yeah, right. Uh, Bill's done it, haven't you, Bill? Yeah, give me a real boost. Yeah? Yeah, Pam put me up for it. I was a bit sceptical, old dog and all that. But my bookings have doubled since I've done it. Hey, I can help you word an ad if you like. Well, well I wouldn't say no. Oh, that reminds me. I've got a new trick up my sleeve for you. Oh, huh? What's that? I'll show you later. Yes, Blanche, what can I do for you? I've come to express my approval. Huh, really? Blimey, I think I'm going to have to sit down for this one. A certain young lady was seen leaving your flat at a very civilised hour last night and getting into a taxi. <laughs> you don't miss a trick, do you? So I commend you for putting Simon first. Thank you. Before your tawdry love life. Well, you'd be pleased to know I have no love life at all now, tawdry or otherwise. She's dumped you, then. Simon didn't take to her, so I told her I didn't think it was going to work out between us. Well done, you. If only all parents could be as responsible. Now, seeing as I'm in your good books, uh, you couldn't do us a favour, could you? Depends what it is. Well, just look after the shop for an hour while I nip out and get Simon a new rabbit. What's wrong with the one he's got? You ready for this? Oh, I see. How's he taking him? Well, this is it. He doesn't know, so I thought if I replace it, he might not notice. He'll know every tuft of fur on its body. You can't just stick a replacement in. Well, I can't tell him it's dead, can I? Why not? He's only had it six months. That's a lifetime to a kid his age. So, all right, well, what am I supposed to do then? You'd best get your thinking cap on and work something out. Well, this is it. This is the last goodbye. Don't talk like that. You've heard of the last supper? Well, this is the last lunch. I'm sure it won't be. So. I'll have the mixed grill, please. And that's it. I'll have done it then. I'll have worked my way through the entire menu, just like I said I would. <laughs> oh, and um, I'll have some kidneys with that and all if you've got them. I thought you didn't like kidneys. Yeah, I don't, but, you know, that's what you have with the mixed grill, isn't that right, Roy? Well, it's a matter of preference, but the definitive recipe should contain some offal. Liver is an alternative, of course, or indeed can complement the kidneys. I bet the chef where I'm going can't get his tongue around that. Let alone his bachelor. Stop it, Becky, please. Why kid myself? We all know I'm going down. Oh, back to where you belong then. Don't start, Kelly. Why shouldn't I? She's been falsely accused. Well, she knows what that's like then, doesn't she? Eh? I've got a criminal record because of her. You with her when it happened. You already had a record. Yeah, well, it's twice as long now because of you. And I have apologised for that. And it were a long time ago. Well, I don't forget easy. Now is not the time to be dragging up old arguments. It's all right, Roy. She can't help it. All she's got is the past, you see. No ever happens to her anymore. Oh, and it's all happening where you're going, isn't it? 
No, but when I get out, I'll have a good man waiting for me. And you'll still be down that ginnel letting strangers grow up because it's the nearest thing you get to being loved. I'd rather go to prison any day of the week than change places with you. Well, let's hope you get your wish then. You sounded keen on Amber's party. Not that bothered, to be honest. Uh, duh. Right, that obvious. Are you scared of her brainy mates? No. So what, you think she's just asking you so that you don't feel left out? Maybe, yeah. Or are you worried that she's just going through the motions till she gets to London when she knows it'll fizzle out? Well, if you keep bubbling with enthusiasm like this, it's probably going to happen. Yeah, I told her I wanted to move to London with her, but she barely listened. So say it again. And drive her mad. Well, if you said it like you said yes to that party, it's probably going to go in one ear and out the other. You've got to convince her that you mean it. There you are, love, thanks. You off, then? Got me two brush and a few bits and pieces. Just in case, eh? Good luck, Bex. You'll come and visit her, won't you, lad? I'll give over. A couple of hours from now, you'll come bursting through that door, a free woman. <sighs> nice try. I mean it. No, you don't, but I love you for it all the same. Hey, um, thanks for what you did yesterday, man. You take care then, eh? Yeah. Bye, Liz. Look after yourself. Sure. I mean it. I do, I really mean it. Well, you keep your pack up, eh? And you. Are you ready? Let's do it. So to what do I owe this urgent summons? I wanted to sound you out on a few career thoughts I've had. Sound away. I mean, it's all good running a kebab shop. But I was thinking maybe, you know, getting some business training, getting some qualifications. In London, for instance, so we could live together. Oh. Yeah. We've been through all this. No, but listen, I was looking online at Costa Flats in London, and if I get a job, and we are student loan, we can afford a place near King's College. What, like a penthouse in the Strand? No. You know, somewhere that's on a bus route that isn't too pricey. I don't know, like... Walworth. Where's that? South of the river. Birthplace of Charles Babbage, father of the modern computer. Sorry. Look, rents aren't that bad anyway. How do you know what it's like? Well, I do, but... And what happens in the holidays? Well, we can stay down there for a bit and then come home. You do know that terms are only ten weeks long. So I'm going to be here for about five months of the year. Your money and mine are not going to cover that. Are you saying we can't afford it or you just don't want me there? I thought we'd agreed. I'll come up and see you at weekends and you can come and see me. Yeah, but it's not going to be every weekend, is it? Well, not every weekend, maybe, but there's no other way to do it. We'll be fine. I love you, whatever happens. Till death. Nick, one to get it over and done with. Johnson Vale. Okay, what's your name? Rebecca MacDonald. Ah, oh, yes, DC Hooch. Um, I just need to check on something. 22, 23. I've got 23 conquerors. That's brilliant. Colin Plum went yesterday and he only found six. Ah. Well, you've done very well then, haven't you? Can you show me how to put a string through? 
In a minute, Si. Listen, um, there's something I've got to tell you, mate. It's about your rabbit. Where is he? It's bad news, I'm afraid. My hand's died. Right, well, it looks like you're free to go. Matt? Charges have been dropped. Why? Thanks a lot. It looks like he's asleep. Well, I suppose in a way you know he is. Can I stroke him? Yeah, of course you can. I really got to happen with my mummy. Yeah. And she'll look after him. And they'll be together forever. Well, I go to heaven. One day, mate, yeah. One day you'll you'll go, yeah. I hope you go to heaven now. Oh no. You can't go now. Hey, you've got all your life to live yet. Okay, say bye bye. I know. The suspense is killing me. He'll ring, surely. As soon as he knows anything. I think so. Oh, you're back. What did I tell you? <laughs> I'm free! <laughs> now. I've drafted this out for your website. See what you think. Lonesome Cowboy seeks faithful Indian squaw for children's entertainment. No experience necessary, but must have GSOH. Good sense of humour. Oh. Yeah? An outgoing personality. Good hourly rates, travel opportunities. Ooh. Occasional TV work. I was on Luck North for two minutes about nine years ago. Well, that's occasional then, isn't it? Yeah. And you've got to sex it up a bit. Yeah. Jason about. Well, that's what I'd like to know. Are you ready yet, Jason? Yeah, yeah, coming now. Ta-da! Oh. Oh. oh, my God. No wonder you didn't tell me. And here we have Jason wearing the latest Pam Hobsworth functional dungarees in a resilient cotton. Hey, you don't expect us to wear them. You need a uniform. Well, what, in bright orange? Oh, it's distinctive. It sets you apart. It does that, all right. All you need is your name across the back. Jason here to help. Hey, over my dead body. What do you think, Leon? Very fetching. It's like the uh, Dutch strip, come to think of it. And we all know what they invented. What? Top of football. So there was no explanation? No, none whatsoever. Becky, I've just got your text. What's happened? Well, they've let me off. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, but actually, what? There's something done out up here. In, in what way? Well, he's got me banged to rights. So why is he doing this? Because of yesterday. <laughs> Was he there today? No, but he should have been. Yeah, and that's another reason why it doesn't add up. And even the desk sergeant looked baffled. But, but, but if, if they've dropped the charges, then surely that is it. Yeah, I'd be cracking up the champagne if it were me. No. Ooch is the bentest copper I've ever come across. I'm telling you, he's got something else up his sleeve here. You mark my words. So, did you tell him? Yeah. He was in tears by the end. Poor lamb. He's still upset now. You did the right thing, though. He wanted to know if it was in heaven with Lucy. Oh, we'll get over it. I don't think this is about the rabbit. It's about his mum. How do you make that out? Because he's too upset by it. I mean, it makes sense. You know, he never really grieved for Lucy. Not like you'd expect, anyway. Too big a thing for him to grasp, maybe. But what might. But a rabbit dying. He can get his head round that. And that's released the floodgates. You could be right. He needs a mother's love, Blanche. 
He's got a father's love. More each day from the sound of it. It's not enough, though, is it? There's a big hole in that little lad's life, Blanche, and I've got to fill it. But how? Come on, then, Si. Spill. Spill? What's wrong, son? Your teacher said you've been dead quiet at school all day. I'm way too young to be experiencing all this loss. Hmm? Miss Brookstein said that. I heard her. She said it to Mrs Nandra. Yes, well, and maybe you shouldn't be here, Wiggin. Listen, mate, I know you didn't have a very good night's kit last night. Grown-ups are always saying stuff, thinking we don't listen. Yeah? OK, well, you listen to this. What I was thinking is, why don't we go down the precinct, get you a new rabbit? I just want the armband. Yeah, I know the feeling. Well, OK, is there anything you do want? Hey, anything that's going to cheer you up a bit? Huh? A funeral. Well, yeah, we all have one of them sooner or later, mate. A bunny funeral. Like when Mummy died, only she weren't a bunny. A funeral for the rabbit? Now that, my son, I think is a top idea. Get off. <laughs> How fabulous with that. Having her back in middle of the day, it is pure luxury, that. There was this thing on the radio before about a woman in Peru mm -hmm. who collected all the fluff out of her belly button and knitted herself a scarf. Oh, no. I don't like quirky people, me. I prefer folk who call a spade a spade and not... Oh, look, some really cute gardening thing. Oh, man. Tell you, they're all on daytime telly, telling you how you can, like, improve your life by jazzing up a gypsy skirt with a couple of cut flowers. Oh, I hate them. Hate them. In fact, I could deck them. Just like I could deck Hooch. But he's not quirky, he's just a... Now, we let you go. Yeah, but for how long? You know as well as I do now what he's capable of. I'm telling you, he is behind all this. No news is good news. Well, then, why doesn't it feel like that? Well, everything's going to be fine. I want you to us. Becky, can you do a shift for me tonight? Betty's just left a rather rambling message on the answer machine. Something about a neighbour's chihuahua and a vegetable curry. <laughs> um, it's our wedding reception take two tonight, so... Oh. Yeah, I don't know if that's such a good idea anymore. It's a brilliant idea. Well, this blushing bride don't mind pulling a few pints, Liz, if it keeps the punters happy. Better than serving that pig swirl of chuck at you in style, Nick. Ah, uh, listen, I'll have a word with Sean. Hey, Amy is gagging to wear a bridesmaid dress again. Bless her, you should have just seen her little face when we got it out the bag. She's so cute. Oh, well, if we're going the whole hog, I'll have to get the place decorated again. Oh, they shall never get a new carpet laid down in, what, three hours? <laughs> I meant a bit of bunting. I know. <laughs> hey, and there's your horse. Put a fiver on that bad boy. Right, my nails. Oh, right, bookies. And now, uh, where's Deirdre gone? Uh, to see her pal Bev in the peaks. Oh. oh. I thought I'd take advantage of her absence and pop down to see uh, Adam in Portsmouth. But I'll hold off till tomorrow. For the rabbit's funeral? For the rabbit's funeral. Yeah. This, this can only be a good thing, right? How is he? Drawing a picture of Leanne. The first time I've seen a rabbit in a Fergie bowl. <laughs> Have you heard this? What? Peter's planning a funeral for the rabbit. I think that's a brilliant idea, you heartless toad. Well, so do I. Simon never went to his mother's funeral, so I think it would be good for him to see the ritual, maybe get closure. Oh! Blanche, what is it? You all right, Blanche? My funeral outfit. Oh. I got eggnog down it at Clara Prince's send-off. No time to bob it in the cleaners. I'll have to wear slacks. Hiya. Hello, mate. How are you doing? Oh, all right, sir. Uh, you, uh... Uh, no, 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 just chewing the cud. Can I stick a fiver on she's out in the three o'clock, please? Uh, you certainly can. 
Right, shall we go see the man himself? I be warned, Kenneth. He might have the gift of the gab and the hair of Cleo Lane, but Tracy Emin, he is not. That's all right. Oh, yeah. It's one of them days, mate. You will never work with children or animals. There'll never be a single dad. Yeah. How did you cope? Well, you just do. When I met Michelle and now Becky. Blokes, sir. Uh, I don't think we're designed to do it on our own, what do you reckon? Well, I don't let any feminists see me, because one day I might want a bad one. But, uh No, you're right. Ta. Hi, love. You Hi. right? Hiya, love. Hiya. Hey, what, love? Suffery. Nice cakes. <laughs> Thank you, Blanche. I thought you'd be languishing in Wentworth Prison by now, having your hair done and watching educational shows about empowerment. I didn't get charged! <laughs> and that makes you innocent, does it? Yep, in the eyes of the law. No, that makes you lucky. Well, it's a shame you think like that, love, cos you probably won't want to come to a pub tonight, will you, for a free bevy? Oh, well, never mind. No, no I'll... I'll forget it, Grandma. You ain't welcome. Did you ever watch Prisoner Cell Block H? Erica Davidson were God. Yeah, cos you remind me of that old bird, Lizzie. Sticking her nose into every bit of trouble. Oh, I could just see you in Nick. Yeah, lapping up the gossip. You big bully. Oh, some of the birds that have applied for this job are cracking. Great! No, I mean they've got great, um... Chests! Oh, CBs! Look, there's loads of them. I know, I can see. I've got these things in my head called eyes. They're amazing. Ooh, who rattled your cage, Laura Livid? Leave me alone. I'm just not doing cartwheels over the thought of me through lounge being turned into an audition room. Two things, Eileen. Number one, this is not a through lounge. It's actually a lounge diner. Number two, when did you ever do a cartwheel? Right, wish us luck. Where are you going? I've got a match. With Leon? Yeah. Do you want to come watch? Well, yeah, but I've told Liz I'd do a shift in Rovers. Oh, well, it's in uh, Rotten Store anyway. It's miles away. Oh, I was going to come until you said Rotten Store. I got flashed out there once. Well, maybe I could um, meet you later on. Well, I didn't think thought it was your scene, Sean. Sure. I'll text you. All right, later. You know, when I say flashed out, he was fully clothed. It was a very windy day. Hi. I've got us a beautiful prawn ring for do. And some really fun, um, like, phyllo parcels with, like, feather and cranberry. Don't they sound fabulous? You got quirky. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you, I've had all on. Stop myself. I'm ripping the bag open and shoving them down my grid. Uh, talking of rings, prawns or otherwise, I have got to wear ring round and remind everyone about it. You see what I did there? I, I did, yeah. And don't. Anyway, look at these babies. How Moorish do they look? The only Moorish thing round here, babe, is you. Mm, I oh, sure. can't get enough of you, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep your hands to yourself, Mr. McDonald. Oh, you spoiled sport. Well, I've got to defrost some parcels. Kidding. Hiya. Hiya. Just a kiss. <laughs> you look nice. You don't look so bad yourself. Cheers. Should we get a cap? Go on, then. I said we'd meet Mitch at Streetcars. Mitch? Yeah, he's coming with us. Is he? You know he is. No, I don't. It's booked here. Hiya. Hiya. Hi. Just booked us a cab. Just gonna get some chocolate milk to line my stomach. All right. <laughs> hey, I can't wait for London. You used to choose instead of shelling out on cabs. I'm gonna get me one of those oyster cards. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> I did Facebook here. I wrote it on your wall. He's going to London with you. Not with me, as well as me. We're not going together. I don't know what you're getting so het up about. Or do you not? I think we need to talk about this, don't you? Hiya. Hi, uh, this is gonna sound a bit bizarre, but you don't have a shovel I could borrow, do you? A shovel? Yeah, you know, a, a, a spade. Has your dad got one in the garden? Only I'm gonna bury Simon's rabbit at the Red Wreck later. Oh, that's dead sweet. Come on. Mum! Have we got a shovel for the rabbit? What? Only he wants to uh, give her a funeral. I mean him. Well, the rabbit's called Leanne, but it's a bloke. W was a bloke. So? Well, 
I've just had a thought. What's that? Well, why don't we bury Simon's rabbit in our garden? And then he can come and visit the grave whenever he wants. Sophie, you know that Graham's just pruned my herbaceous border. Listen, uh, just, just a shovel will be fine, honestly. Oh, Mum! It's a little cute, Simon. He wants to give his rabbit a good send-off. It's the Christian thing to do. A rabbit's funeral? I won't have to do a spread, will I? Well, just be finger food and a chocolate fountain. No, no spread. I just want to make everything better for me little lad, so... And you just kept banging on about me great-grandma or something? No, so do me, Eddie. <laughs> cool. Mate, do you want to see where the taxi is? Yeah, OK. Yeah. Don't boss him about. So, why didn't you tell me you were going to London, were you? I don't know. Well, think. It didn't seem important. You're hiding something from me. Why didn't you tell me the truth? I didn't tell you, because I knew you'd be like this. Why is every man in my life a big fat moron? Him. Yes, he was called Liam, but I think he was a transsexual rabbit. And now uh, Simon would like to make a brief speech. <laughs> bye bye, Liam. You were a dead nice rabbit, and you were really clever when you pooed him. It's not like when Mummy died. I feel a bit less sadder. But I will miss you, Leanne, because you were so cool. And you were my best friend. And I love you more than any other rabbit in the world. And now we want to listen to a piece of music. Thanks a lot, Laura, love. We'll, uh, we'll let you know. Is this the auditions? Ah, you must be Hayley. It's Hallie, actually. As in the comic. Oh, Ooh, that's very mystical. Your mum and dad must have been into star signs or something. Yeah, my sister's called Orion's belt. <laughs> <laughs> She's not really. <laughs> Sorry, I'm mad me. <laughs> oh, this is my better half, Eileen, and Sean the Lodger. Uh, sorry, but I've been getting into character all the way here. Can I do higher lower straight away? <laughs> I'm bursting with her, kids, bursting with her. Well, um... <laughs> um can you move that table, I mean? Uh, I, I, I'll do it. John, will you come? <laughs> Calm down. He doesn't like her. <laughs> I prepared a song. Ah! In fact, he loads. <laughs> well, the part doesn't really require singing. But I've worked really, really hard on it. Oh, let her. There's no business like show business. There's no business I know. You need more toilet paper, Eileen. He loves her. <laughs> Everybody loves Julie. I'm sorry, Hayley, love it. It's not really working out. It is Hallie. Oh, like the star? Mm. No star quality is. <laughs> <laughs> no, Susan Boyle, she ain't. Would you like to see me Hakuna Matata? <laughs> oh, no, uh, I think we've seen enough. Shall I show you the door, love? I I'm sorry. It took me three buses to get here, and I've got a cousin in an iron lung. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry, it's just that you really are rubbish. <laughs> Who are you? Amanda Holden on steroids? <laughs> you see, you should be looking for someone more like me. Jessie, my lovely. What, bossy? Matronly. Good with kids. Kids love me. I'm like a kid magnet. <laughs> so is the child catcher. <laughs> I would be more than happy to be your higher lower until something better comes along. I'll do it in drag. <laughs> let's not forget that that man from Abba, he said I'd have been a natural in Mamma Mia. Hey? What? Babyface Bjorn. <coughs> I met him in Chunky's wine bar round the back of the library. Julie, that were a wind-up. He said that I would have knocked spots off Meryl Streep. He was from Huddersfield. Since when were Babyface Beyond from Huddersfield? And besides, 
Mother says I was a oh, dancer right, that's before it. I'm going to the pub. Who's coming? Uh, I think I will, actually. Mm, she said I began to sing long before I could talk. I look at him sometimes and he just looks so sad. It's like he's got the weight of the world on his shoulders. But his smile can light up the room. He gets that from me. And then I think, well, you know, was I like that at his age? Because I don't remember smiling much either when you sent me and Susan away. You, you know what I'm saying. So what you're saying is, it's all Ken's fault. He's just exploring his feelings, Blanche. Ah, but it is your fault, this maverick melancholy. No, it's not that fault. Oh, I'm sure everything can be linked to my lousy parenting. Here, here. Well, Simon's my responsibility. And I'm the only one who's going to make him happy. Isn't that right, mate? Don't. And that is why me and you are going to have a little trip. Yeah. Yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for letting me know. Yeah, no problem. I'll kill him. Who, hey, Sean? Can't do his shift, dicky tummy. It was looking a bit peaky earlier. Well, I'd say more than peaky. I'd go as far as one. It's probably for me eating all that stuff. Oi! I think that looks lovely, does that? Smells dead prawny and all. Nice. <laughs> Becky, I'm sorry, but I am going to have to take you up on the offer of pulling a few pints. All right. All righty then. What's up? Uh, no, it's just... Staff have let me down tonight, so Becky's going to have to work at uh, do. Well, I can help out behind the bar. Oh. Right. Oh, cheers, mate. Nice one. Yeah, I could just... Ooh, eat ya. Not now. Hope he's watching. Maybe later. <laughs> I will pay you, of course. Oh, Liz, anything to help out? Look, look. I got you this. Oh, yeah? Hey! Oh, <laughs> that is brilliant. Oh, come on, Liz, are you having that? Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> hey, we should hang that up outside the boozer. Yeah, go on, I dare you. I'll get me a ladder. He's Come getting on. his ladder! <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, right then, Lloyd, can you start with the bottling up, because you're either working or not? Yeah, of course. Oh, I hope no-one sees me when the taxi comes. I'm supposed to be ill. Might I practice a few ideas on you, Sean? Mm. Some thoughts for higher-lower? Is it offensive to black up? I can't believe you just asked me that. Oh, I'm excited, Sean. My mind's going round ten a penny. See, that didn't even make sense, did it? You very rarely do. OK, then. Is this offensive? No, it's just slightly bizarre. Oh, I just... I don't want to let Jessie down. Where are you going? Oh, Jason's headed into town with Leon. Your ex, Leon? Well, he would have been my ex, had I actually gone out with him. Semantics. They've had a match, they've won, and now they're off out to celebrate. Only I don't think Dimwit Jason realises that they're all... <gasps> Homo sapiens. What have I got him into? Oh, he can handle it. I mean, he lives with a gay. And his brother's a gay, too. Julie, it's gay, not a gay. I once shared a bed with Jason. I know. Yes? We were both slightly tipsy. Yes, it was a nightmare because I was wearing my knickers with a picture of Orville the Duck on the front. However, the embarrassment didn't end there. Oh, I don't think I want to hear this. I've often wondered, Sean. Maybe nothing happened between us because... Because he's got perfect sight. Deep down, maybe he's a gay as well. Hmm. Mm. Laters. <laughs> I thought you were going off to some party, you. I was. Amber. Taxi. A word? What are you stomp off here for? Because I didn't want Mitch hearing you being so paranoid. Oh, and it's all slipping perfectly into place now, isn't it? You have got to get over this, Daryl. And what is? You didn't want me moving to London so you could jump in bed with him. I act stupid. Jump into bed? Yeah. Jump into bed? Is that really my style? If you think that, God only knows why we're together. Well, God might, but I don't. What are you two doing? Having a domestic? You'd like that, wouldn't you? Cabs here. 
I know. Come in. You go when he says, won't you? Daryl, are you coming to the party? You know what? I'd rather eat a pack of razor blades. And besides... Oh, grow up, Daryl. I won't want to cramp your style. Oi, oi. Are you ever going to buy anything? Spam. Hmm? Dev, spam. Listen. I've got a real craving for a beautiful tin of spam. What's your best price on this? Uh, I see a little silhouette of a man. Scaramouche, scaramouche, will you do the fandango? Thunderbolt and lightning, very, very frightening gate. Uh, that was Queen with Bohemia Rhapsody. And on line one, we have Steve McDonald. Hello, Steve. Well, hello, Wayne. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Hey, 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 hey! What? I've just bought in a spam. What? Do you want to see it? Are you on drugs? It's lighter than it looks, feel. You've just shot me ladder in broad daylight, scared me half to death to show me a tin of spam. Well, what do you expect me to show you, my knickers? You dirty monkey. I know your type. Get in. Go for a little drive. Just get in. You don't have to eat. All you've got to do, mate, is look cute, OK? Table for two. Well, one and a very little, yeah. Follow me. Go on. Just this way. I'll send somebody over to take your drinks order. Thanks. Where are we? Leeds. Why? That my son. I am. Hiya, love. Oh, no. Lee? Lee? Leanne? Sorry, Janine, can you um, serve table three? Something to drink, sir? Uh, orange, please. Sorry? Two oranges, Top lad, a bit of a fruit like me, it's all right, man. Really. Hey. Hey. Can I have a word? Sorry, a word over here. Okay. We won. I know. Jason's man of the match. I'm sure he was. I think I'm in love. I'm sorry. You and him haven't got back together, have you? No. Me and him, we never were in the first place. I lied. Well, he's free. Always has been. He's straight. Always has been. I'm sorry. <laughs> of course, he's butch. I don't think he's got any clue that any of you are gay. Oh, is he thick? No, he's. Jason sees the world through simplistic eyes. If he was an artist, he'd be Lowry. I'm sorry. I think it's best that you just leave him alone, eh? Oh, I get it. I get it. What? He twisted you, Sean, you know that. Get over him. He wasn't right for you, but he is right for me. No, no, you, you're gonna make a fool of yourself. Uh, take a look in the mirror lately. Sean! Sean, by your you. You're a lucky man. When you and I made a show me and cause, I couldn't let that slide. I decided I was gonna make your one pay, one way or another. But my plan came apart using that user, Slug. Well, I'm sorry about that. 
Look, if you got something to say, can you just say it? Becky's off the hook. But a fresh start. New ground rules. Is that your son out there? Oh, shut up. Well, there's something dodgy about you. Knew it the minute I clapped eyes on you. Go and do your own dirty work. Two orange juices. Do you want vodka in yours? Oh, touche. Are you cross with us? Oh, no, of course I'm not. Hey, don't you ever think that? It's really nice to see you. We buried his rabbit today, didn't we? No emotional blackmail, then? Of all the restaurants in all the world, well, Leeds, we had to walk into this one. That's weird, isn't it? <laughs> Bizarre. I lost the drugs. Accidentally on purpose. And they'll stay lost as long as you two keep out of my way and Slug keeps quiet. I like you, Steve. Hey? We've got a lot in common. Okay. I liked your missus once upon a time. Yeah, you liked her a bit too much. But she's a piece of work. And scum like that'll take you down with them one way or another. She's a rough diamond. No, mate. She's just rough. Get out of my car. Is this a wind up? Hmm. Oh, and you might be wanting this. trying to say this is a gay club? I'm sorry, Jason, but yes. Yes, I wore that out when I first walked in. There was a sign saying, Mr. Gay Wenfield. It's a little bit of a giveaway. And that footy team? Surely 11th Street blows can go to a gay club. It's thingy, yeah, um, we're, we're metros... Metrosexual. But Jason, they're all screaming Great Marys. You've been playing for a gay football team. <laughs> Men. <laughs> Sick about this, Jason. Mint! They all think that you're bent as an iron bob note. That you're a friend of Dorothy's. A big fan of quiche. Oh, flipping good football team. Why do you think they're called the pink triangles? Oh no, something to do with sponsorship. Sponsorship? By the Nazi party, perhaps? The pink triangle was the symbol that they put on all the gay prisoners in the concentration camps in the Second World War. Oh, shh, listen. I'm having a night out with the lads, OK? Now, less of the drama, please. I'm going for a last. I'll come with you. I don't need protection, Sean. Here? You here for the competition, love? I find it all rather vacuous, actually. Pandering to body fascism in the gay scene, I just can't condone it, sorry. Actually, darling, I was talking to him. Ah, uh, yeah, in your dreams, love. I wish. I'll send you. Hmm? I'm trying to get back with him. Can't pull the wool over my eyes, Sean. Well, I could if I had a balaclava. A balaclava called Delusion. Come on. Excuse me, And darlings! Steve. I'm worried. I see beyond Shadow and I think it's him. Come here, come here. I've got something to tell you. I know. The horse died. No, no. No, I've just seen Hooch. What? Look, don't worry. I've sorted him out. What do you mean you've sorted him out? He's going to stay away. He's going to leave us alone. As long as we keep our distance. Well? What? Are you sure? Are you just making this up? So... No. 
Don't you believe me? <sighs> okay, Lee, so, um, I'm not being completely honest. Well, there's a first. I completely screwed up the best relationship I ever had. I've tried to move on. Let me guess. You slept with half Manchester to get me out of your system, did that, got bored, so you came to Leeds and thought you'd have a crack at the bird's ear. I can't get you out of my head. Don't start quoting Kevin and look at me. I should be so lucky. You're so lame. Hey. We were happy, weren't we? Yeah, we were. Until I got very unhappy. So unhappy I had to move 40 miles away. We were a family. A real family. And I miss that. You miss having a babysitter on tap. That's what you miss. Come on, Wethersley. I can't. Why not? What would be my friend say? OK, boys and girls, our next contestant is John Paul from Balaclava Terrace. <laughs> oh, thank you. John Paul is cabin crew for a well-known budget airline. And by the looks of things, you'd be quite happy to hold your nuts during takeoffs. <laughs> Take it away, John Paul. Straight, is he? As a die. Whatever a die is. Well, you've got too much up on your hair. I'm some kid. I think it's about time we outed our little scally builder. No, I'm not Simon. Sorry. No. Leanne's got a new life now, and you should let her get on with it, okay? The offer still stands, you know. I know. Sorry. It's not what you wanted to hear. Right, come on then, trouble. I'll see you then. See you, Simon. Bye. Stop me. What do you think, Roy? Surprisingly tasty. Hey, just like my head. <laughs> What's the matter, Kevin? No, it's rubbish. The consistency's all wrong. Oh, you're only Marco Pierre White. Nope. I thought you said you liked it. I do, I'm just saying. <sighs> oh. Kevin White. I like to insult him. I should have talked to something more sponge based, right? Don't eat it. I know. No, I'll have words. Uh, excuse me, everybody. Could we have a bit of hush now and all be upstanding for the bride and groom? Yay! 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 Oh, it's 
she looks lovely. Ooh. Hey, Mia, Becky. Oh, don't Steve want to dash it in his suit? That covers a multitude of sins of soup. I don't know why you look so good in one, Kevin. Uh, now, can we all have a bit of hush, please? Yeah, sure up, everyone. Ooh, mouth on her. Sign her up, Ryan. <laughs> That's bad. Uh, well, first of all, I just want to thank everybody for uh, coming to our wedding reception. Take two. <laughs> That's a filming term. They use that in films and that. Yeah, and um, before we all get royally trashed, I just want to say a few words, really. How much are divorces these days? Hey, hey, hey. Lloyd Milani there, otherwise known as Helen Carr without the teeth. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Now, though, seriously, uh, listen, the last few weeks have been tough on us, me and my wife, and... Well, you know, some days it's felt like just me and Becky against the world, but... Uh, I honestly think that it's brought us closer than ever. Hey, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. That's right, Liz. This woman means the world to me. And I just want to say I'm determined. And all you lot in here tonight are witnesses to this. That I am going to make our future a damn sight better than our past. Okay. Shut up. I think it's sweet. Jason, everybody! Jason, I know all the people who are always, men and women, are going to be asking, have you got a boyfriend? No. Would you like one? Why are you asking? Hey. <laughs> Does my head in? I know. What? Why for? Hey? Look, will you stop hanging on about Daryl? He treats you like dirt. Does he? Yeah. It's not a patch on me. Is he not? No. Bay doesn't kiss like this. Where are you? Because you're obviously not at the party. Can you just turn your phone on, please? try and win her back. But as you can see, I came back empty-handed. I thought you'd gone off her and on to that Michelle one. No. Leanne's the one. But it's too late. She's gone and met a fella. Now, I've not told anyone this, but I'm a little bit psychotic. And my spirit guide is telling me that it's not going to last. singer of Show Waddy Waddy is my boyfriend and we'd sit around all day eating spam and chips. Life's always a disappointment. OK, boys and girls, our first runner-up for Mr Gay Weatherfield is... It's John Paul, our trolley dolly from Balaclava Okay, and now the moment you've all been waiting for. Mr. Gay Weatherfield, 
taking the crown. A year's modelling contract with Hot Boys Publications and a chance to compete for the £5,000 prize of Mr Gay UK is... Yes, it's our builder boy himself. It's Jason from Weatherfield Central. in the morning. He's come out. This is the best night of his life. How many times, Leon? He's flaming straight. <laughs> and my name's Benazir Boot. Jason, are you telling? Huh? Are you straight? It's all right, mate. You're out. It's a whole new chapter. Have you heard yourself? He likes women. Every inch of them. He's not some misguided queen who's so flaming far back in the closet that he's in Narnia, all right? Jace, do you want me to take you home? Hey. Oh, yeah, Tina would love that. What, Tina? He's beard. No, Tina is girlfriend. She's lovely, Leon. She's lovely. Isn't she lovely? Sure. This is all my fault. I told him that we were a couple because, well, I wanted to make him jealous. That I could pull fit lads and then me and you would split up and he'd feel sorry for me and, I don't know, I... Never in a million years thought that he'd go for you. More fool me. You what? You heard. Well, what'd you do that for? Because I'm a freak. Because I fancied you. Because I'm an idiot. You take your pick. You really do that for the other side? No, that's you. The other side to me. I'm confused. <laughs> You're not the only one. You are straight. Shh. Don't tell anyone. We'll take your sash off. You both are very freaks. Man. I think it's time I got you on. Where's your top? Ah, Kelly's got it. Well, you're not going anywhere near that stage again, am I? Come on. Come on, Mr Gay Weatherford. Hey, Gay's rock. Patronising git. Jason, come in. Give me your arm. They should do you under the Trade Descriptions Act. Tourists. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, Mr Gay Weatherfield is leaving the building. Hey Jan, it's me. Hey listen, I've got some time off work. Got room for a little one? <laughs> Don't look at me like that. Like what? Look, she's got a new life in Leeds now. You saw. She's got a good job and a new bloke. So? Does she love him? I don't know. Yeah, I suppose. More than you. You'd have to ask her, wouldn't you? Could we go and see tonight? I think it's a bit far to keep nipping across for a pizza, don't you? Besides, she might think I'm stalking her. What's stalking? Uh, it's not allowed. It's not allowed. Hey, come on, cheer up. It's not the end of the world, is it? Do you know what happens when you knock a bar load down? What? We bounce back up again. We've got bounce back ability. Bounce back up? Yeah. So, do you want to see me bounce? Yeah. OK, watch this. See? See? That's it. 
we can bounce higher than Tigger. You've stopped. Yes, well, we have bounce back ability, but we don't have stamina. What's stamina? Well, that's what keeps you bouncing. You don't have any. No, I don't. <laughs> Show off. I'll get some milk in a paper. Do you want breakfast? first? What, with no milk? You put the kettle on, I'll be a couple of minutes. Oh, can you check John's food for me? Oh, do I have to? Well, it's all right, I'll do it when I get back. No, it's OK, I'll do it just to show you how much I care. Oh, well, you're a star. Sean! Sean! Nothing. Where's Jason? I think he said he was taking Tina to see Todd today. What, can you check his room? Why, what's happened? Well, we've been robbed. While we've been sleeping, somebody has come in and robbed us. Oh, my God. Jason! Oh. Are there any other thunderbolts you want to chuck at me? <sighs> oh, I feel like death. Yeah, you look like death. Thanks. Why, oh why, do you keep sharing your house, Jan? Well, I just get it in for Christmas. I never drink it. Well, until the night comes when cans have run out and shop shut. Last night? Then I swear I'll never ever buy another bottle again. Till next Christmas? Well, it's festive, isn't it? Nothing says Christmas like a bottle of sweet sherry. Nothing gives you anger over like a bottle of sweet sherry. Mmm. They should put that on the bottle. Oh, I think I've got some aspirin in my bag. How long are you staying? Don't know yet. There you are. Something gone wrong in Leeds. No. He's still the um what's his face? Marco? Yeah. No. What happened? No it happened. Just didn't work out, that's all. Did I, um, tell you that Peter and Simon came to the restaurant last night? Peter Boyle? All right. So that's why you're here. Uh, no. I came to see you. End of. And I've bought my last bottle of sweet sherry. See you later. Don't know, can you? You know what I mean. Well, we might be able to get off to the gym for a couple of hours. What's that? Seven. Oh, about the same time I expect a course that'll blow a gasket on the M62. We are the worst people in the world. Yeah, I know. You all right? Can you see a van? No. Can you? Just one I left it there. Once lost a car in Legoland. Have you seen the size of that car park? No. Maybe I left it around the corner. Television, DVD, the radio. They've even emptied my tin. There was more than 50 quid in there. Is Jason's iPod in here? I don't know. Even taking my camera. I mean, why me? It's not like I've got anything in the first place. How did they get in? The back doors locked? The windows? Did you lock up when you came in last night? It was definitely all locked up when we went to bed. Just doesn't make sense. 
And he didn't hear anything? It's just a regular night out for me. Uh, hey, at least no one got hurt. <laughs> I've lost everything that was worth anything to me. I'm hurt. Ryan Giggs? He does yoga. Well, there you go. It was good for your flexibility. Stops your hamstrings from popping. So you don't mind then? It's only a couple of hours. Oh, I thought we was going to rent that The Wrestler. Well, yeah, but we can do that any time, can't we? The beginner's class is only on a Monday. What time will you get back? I won't be late. All right, see you later. I have to learn to suck these. That way they last longer. The trouble is, I'm a bone crunchy, me. Humbugs. I'd get them across the road, but Norris keeps giving me funny looks. So I have to get me fix at different shops, so as not to arouse suspicion. There you go. So, hey, the twenty p cheaper over there. Me dad sets the prices. Okay, one day I'll kick the habit. Hey, uh, you're up early. Yeah, well, I got your text, so uh, spill your guts, girlfriend. Um, what's this? Big news last night. Ooh, what big news? I kissed Mitch. Oh. And I had a big falling out with Daryl. Is that why you kissed Mitch? I don't know. Maybe. All right, well, that's easy. Dump Daryl and head south with Mitch. Sounds like the job's half done already. Well, is that what you want to do? Don't know what I want. Morning. What's that? <laughs> What's what? They're overalls. What, do you like them? What is it? Health and safety. High visibility. It's Pam's idea. I keep trying to get him mucky. You know, tone him down a bit. But nothing sticks to him. He's slightly <laughs> self-cleaning. <laughs> well, what have you been up to anyway? Oh, working part-time at a mate's hardware store. It's a, it's a temporary arrangement. Oh, well. We've all got our cross today. Yeah. You fancy humble? No, sir. I'll see you. I'll see you first. Oh, oh thank you. You're welcome, my lord. I have the gift. Really? And what gift is that, then? Second sight. I can see into the future. Oh, well, you're barred, then. I can't have psychics coming in here putting bets on Blanche to clear me out. Last night, mm. I were about to get into bed, and I felt this irresistible urge to go over to the window. Really? And how long have you been having these urges? Do you want to know what I saw or not? Go on, then. Yes. I pulled back the curtain, and there she was. There who was? Leanna Battersby, climbing out of a taxi. You kidding? Cross me heart on Deirdre's eyes. Leanne? You go to see her in Leeds, less than 24 hours later. There she is, outside my bedroom window. Are you absolutely sure? What do you mean, am I sure? There's no Alzheimer's in my family. OK, all right. And this was last night, yes? Yes. So where is she now? Hang on a minute. No, it's gone. It comes and goes. OK. Listen, Blanche, can you, uh, can you keep an eye on the shop for me? Ten pound an hour. Well, not going to be very long. Or part thereof. OK, done. So it's true. I heard a rumour. Here you are. Here I am. Don't tell me. Everything's gone pear-shaped in Leeds. You've jacked in your job and your bloke and you've come to see if I still want you. I've come to see Janice. Of course you have. A trip entirely unrelated to my visit. <laughs> it was planned months ago. Call it a coincidence. OK. How long are you staying? I don't know yet. I'll buy you coffee? I'm off into town. How about lunch? All right, then. Yeah? OK. Well, leave it with me. I'll book somewhere really special. Where do you want to go? Anywhere. Yeah, anywhere. Roy's Rolls would be nice. OK. Roy's Rolls it is. One o'clock. It's a date. Is it? It's an expression. I'll see you at one. OK. Hey, it's really good to see you again. Bye. Bye. 
have you been? My van's been nicked. Hey? It's not where I left it. It's been taken without my consent. Where's the telly? That was took without my consent. Just hang on, hang on. I left my keys here. Has somebody moved them? Do you know, you don't have to be Inspector Morse to realise that whoever took the television, DVD, radio, money... Microwave. Microwave, took them off in your van. We have been robbed. Right. Well, uh, nobody touched anything. They've, they've, they've probably left fingerprints. We, we, we need to call the police. Hang on. Where's John? They've nicked me parrot. Hello? I'd like to report a robbery. Yeah, there's been a, a robbery. Our house has been robbed. We came while we were asleep. Who'd steal a parrot? Was he valuable? Was it irreplaceable? You can get a new van, but John... It's 11 Coronation Street. Yeah, they've um, taken uh, television, DVD, radio, money. I don't know what else we're still checking. Why would they get in? We don't know. Well, they must have got in somehow. All right, thanks a lot. Bye. The police, they'll be round in an hour or so. Well, if they didn't break in, they must have had a key. How else did they get in without anyone noticing? I've still got my key. Me too. No, no, let's be methodical about this. Um, who else has got a key? Well, there's us and Jason and Todd. And the neighbours both, cos that's for emergencies. And, and I keep one in the cab office, uh, up Sarah Platt. I think the Websters might still have one. Oh, and Tina. Jason, not about. He's taking your daughter to see his brother. Oh, yeah, she said. How's work? Ah, sluggish. Listen, if there's anything going, I'd be grateful if you'd consider me. Well, I've hardly enough to keep me and the boy Wonder going. Yeah, but, you know, if anything changes, I'd do anything. And I mean anything. I look good in orange. Well, I'll make a few calls, see if there's out there. As I say, anything at all. <laughs> you might regret that. OK, I don't do topless. Apart from that, anything. I was just thinking you and me. Rosie could keep an eye on Sophie. A proper break. How much? It's not cheap. A dream holiday? Yeah. Well, that's the only way we can afford it, in our dreams. Oh, yeah. Also, but... we wouldn't enjoy it. If we knew we had to work twice as hard when we come home to pay for it. Look, if we start saving now, maybe next year. Always next year. Hiya. Hi. Sorry about last night. What's she doing here? Moral support. I said some stupid things. Yeah, look, same some history. It's over. You know, you've moved on, I've moved on. It's not pick and scabber. Whoa! We had a row. People have rows all the time. Doesn't mean it's over. You kiss me. I saw you. I'm not a peck on cheek either. He kissed me. Bang to rights. Sorry, girlfriend. Look, I could smell it coming. It's no big deal. If honestly it'd have been nice, but there you go. Daryl, it was just one kiss. And I wouldn't have kissed him all if I wasn't so angry with you. Yeah, thought it might have been my fault. Tell you what, do us a favour, moral support. Cover me shift. I'm after time to get myself a new girlfriend. Daryl! That did not go well. Anything you want? Do you do lobster? Uh, not on Mondays, the boat's not been out. I'll have an ham salad and a tea time. I've got some caviar in the back, but it's a bit close to its sell by. Oh, all of the same as earlier. Well, me up. Allow me to introduce myself. My name's Peter Barlow, I'm an alcoholic, and I haven't had a drink for 168 days. Well done. Thank you. It's a rocky road, but something had to be done, so I'm doing something. And I'd like to thank you for helping me come to that conclusion, Leah. I didn't do anything. 
Oh, yes, you did. I lost you because of the drink. Well, all right, not just because of the drink. I'm not going to use that as an excuse for everything. But I do feel a lot better. I mean, I'm not exactly a new man, but I have got a new perspective on life. I, I know what's important to me now. Well, I'm pleased to hear it. This is great. I mean, this is great just to see you again. And you, I mean, everything's OK for you, and all. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. The restaurant's going really well. Good. And this new fella of yours? Yeah, that's going well, too. I'm pleased for you. And I'm jealous and all, because you should be with me, Lee, and not him, but... Hey, that's your choice. Yes, it is. And it's also a woman's prerogative to change your mind. Booties and salads coming up. Hey, our kid, cheers. I'll bring the hot pots over in a second. All right, cheers, Bessie. Hiya. Um, can I get a white wine, please? Yes. Yeah, I'll get that. And, uh, do you want anything to eat? No, Ty, I've got some sarnies at the shop. Right. Just a white wine. We're on for later. I've got two hours of yoga starting from seven. Can you do the necessary? Consider it done. Bring that over, would you? <clears throat> two pound twenty. Cheeky madam, isn't she? Hey? Bring it over. What did the last slave die of? Yoga. <laughs> Are the hot pots on the way? As fast as Bessie's legs can carry him. Do you know, you should get Dev to give you a proper dinner hour instead of just 20 minutes and then you eat butties on the job. What can you do? Form a union. Fight for your rights. Oh, what, me, Amber and Umed? Two-thirds of the workforce are related to the oppressive tyrant that we work for. I never got a decent dinner hour until I became a partner in the business. Yeah, give over. I never. Or maybe it just tastes sweeter because I'm a partner. <laughs> Tell me how much you love me. Hey. We are going to Lanzarote on Friday. So, I said we can't Rosie's afford. paying. Rosie? Yeah, I were having lunch with her and I was telling her how well she was doing and she agreed. And I said some of that was down to her education. And I reminded her of all the sacrifices we went through to send her to Oak Hill. And she said she was very grateful. Next thing I knew, she was offering to send us on holiday. How brilliant is that? That is fantastic. <laughs> Do you know of any other birds that might have been stolen? Not personally, no. You see, I thought it might be a kidnap, but maybe we'd get a ransom note. Well, I wouldn't really know about that. Yeah, but who'd steal a parrot? You say you checked all the doors and windows as soon as you discovered the burglary? Even the back gate. And there was no sign of forced entry? No. Nope. We think maybe they might have a key. Well, have you lost a key or had a bag stolen? No. And you're sure all the doors and windows were locked? Well, yeah, I think. It seems the most likely explanation is that you left a window or door open. I'm not stupid. I lock up at night. It sometimes helps to have a set routine. Well, it's sometimes not easy to have a set routine when there are other people living in the house. It was me. What? You stole John? No. I let the burglar in. His name was Dave. Or at least he said he was Dave. You know his name? What did you do? Make him a brew and give him Jesse's van keys? No, I met him in a club. He was really nice and very helpful. We got talking and I liked him, he liked me, so I brought him home and then when I woke up in the morning, he'd gone. And so had my phone and my wallet and our telly. Do you want to put in? No, Ty. Watching you wait. Not that you need to. I mean, you look great. Thanks. Especially for someone who works in a restaurant. That must be really tempting. Oh, I'll have a little bit of that, I'll have a little bit of that. I'd be massive. I'd be the size of a house. Well, you managed to work in the bookies without gambling. True. But then I see the losers, I see that look in their eyes and, well, no, nah, that's enough to put me off. But then you must get overweight customers who come in and stuff the faces. Yeah, a few. Small talk's not really going anywhere, is it? So, are you seeing anyone? Am I seeing anyone? No. No, way. I mean, do you think that I'd ask you out if I was seeing someone? Come on, Lee, what sort of man do you think I am? Uh, I know exactly what sort of man you are. Just want a few names. Hey, I'm offended. I've been like a, a monk these last few months. I have. Anyway, let's, uh, let's talk about something really important. Like where we're going to go for dinner tonight. If we're going to go for dinner tonight. I like the if. I like it. Gives me hope. Yeah, well, if we are, then I'm going to need a bit of honesty from you. That's all I'm giving you. Honesty. 
I'm opening my heart to you. Please, you, you step in and you, you take whatever you want. Tell me about this monastic existence you've been living then. Well, I'm up at five for prayers. Then me and Simon will share a bowl of gruel and I'll whip myself with sticks. I'm serious, Peter. So am I. I've really missed you, Lee. I want you so much, yes. Me and you and Simon. We were so good together. And I'm not saying come back for the boy, I'm not. I'm saying come back for me. I promise. I promise I'll never let you down again. I promise. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have come. I don't know if it's you or if it's me, but... I look into your eyes and I just don't believe you, Peter. And if I don't trust you, then... I'm sorry. Leanne! Lee! Leanne, please, just talk to me. Don't no, run I'm away. Sorry. I need to believe you, and I can't do that. All right, okay, well, that's, that's fair enough. No, it's not. Look, if we're gonna. If me. It has to be based on trust and honesty. Okay. Yeah, I agree. The reason that you didn't believe me back there is because it wasn't the truth. I was being economical. What? The fact is, honestly, there was a couple of other women, but it was nothing serious, just daft mistakes. But that's me, isn't it, eh? Now look at me. Do I look like I'm being honest now? Hmm? A bit. A bit. Well, that's a start. But I will tell you everything that you want to know. Warts and all, there'll be no holds barred over dinner tonight. I don't know. Okay, all right. I'll tell you what, let me cook you dinner. My place. Yeah? <sighs> okay, what time? Seven. He was quite average looking, really. He had um, light strawberry blonde hair, quite a decent cut. Oh, and he had nice eyes. Colour? White, Caucasian. His eyes? Oh, sorry. Um, browny, bluey, greeny. They were quite twinkly, if that helps. Was he short, tall, stocky, skinny? I don't know. Sean! We met in a club. I didn't know I was going to have to put him in a dramatic reconstruction on Crime Watch. Did he give you his number? No. <gasps> no, but I gave him mine. Oh, excellent. So he can phone us up when my telly's on the blink. Why did he take the bird? I don't know. I had no idea he was into that kind of thing, otherwise I wouldn't have brought him home. Is there any chance of us getting our stuff back? I wouldn't hold your breath. The people who do this know what they're doing. He won't live round here. He'll have come into town specifically. He did say that he wasn't from round here. Well, did he say where he was from? He made me guess. And? I kept getting it wrong. I'm so sorry, Eileen and Jesse. I feel terrible. I've been so stupid. I deserve to be horsewhipped. Oh, this looks fantastic. It's got seven pools. Can you imagine seven pools? <laughs> One for every day a week. Right, I'm just nipping to the little boy's room. You don't need to announce it. Could be a bit more pleased. I'm pleased. It's just... A surprise. Hey, you see, Rosie's school fees weren't wasted. Or you could say we got a refund. Right, I'd better get back or I'm going to be late. I'll see you later. Oh, pick up a nice bottle of wine on your way home. Yeah, no problems. Bye. Bye. You didn't tell me you were planning a holiday? I wasn't planning one. She mentioned it this morning and I said we couldn't afford it. Oh. You can afford it now, can't you? Look, I didn't know Rosie was going to stick her all in. Well, you could have said something. Why not? It's coming back. We having another or not? <laughs> um, no, I've got to go. Dev's expecting me. See you later. Bye. Lanzarote, eh? It's fantastic. We'll say something. What's to say? I'm so sorry. Honestly, I've never been sorrier in all my life. I didn't know what he was going to do. 
I thought he liked me. I mean, I wasn't expecting a long-term relationship, but... Sometimes I look around and I see couples everywhere and I think... Why not me? And then a nice man smiles at me in the club and... And I take him home and he robs the people that I love most in the world. Don't cry, Sean. I can't help it. You're just as much a victim as the rest of us. And that's what we pay insurance for. Everything can be replaced. Except my dignity. And my parrot. I've room for anything you want to take with you. I remember Alvira bringing this home. From bingo. She reckoned it was a top prize. Oh, happy days. <laughs> Never liked it. It kind of re reflects in the telly, doesn't it? You can't see the horses. Oh. Um, have you told Molly and Tyrone what you're taking? No, not yet. No, no. You see, I don't want to leave them short enough. I don't want them sat on the floor, do I? Because they're going to need table and chairs. And... Look, you don't have to do it all in one go. You can move stuff a bit at a time. No, they'll never know whether I'm coming or flaming, going or... I just need to think. Mm. Well, there's no rush. Mm. Right, I've decided. All right. <laughs> they choose. It's only stuff, isn't it? Mm. And I'd rather know that me and Alvira's stuff was helping a new young family than helping me feel all maudlin on a rainy Tuesday afternoon. Well, it sounds like a plan. Mm. There is one thing I will take, though. What, what's that? Can of ale out of the fridge, the fancy one. <gasps> Jack! It's only just after four. Oh, oh yeah. I have just made a big decision here. I always have a brew after making a big decision. <laughs> nice bottle of wine for the wife, is it? Celebrating tonight, are we? I didn't know about the holiday. And what about tonight? I've got an imaginary yoga class booked. I can't make it, I'm sorry. Sometimes I think you don't care about me at all. <laughs> you know that's not true. Oh. Really? The last time you went away, it was pretty much over as soon as you got back. You'd seen the light and I was just a bit of disposable fun. It's not like that anymore. But it feels like that. Listen, if I could choose, I'd much rather be with you. Yeah? So, choose. Why, are you going to tell Cyro? Are you ready to do that? So we've got something really special and I'm not going to let one inconvenient holiday ruin that. We don't go till Friday. That'll give us time to get together before. Mind if I sit down? I'm waiting for someone. Who? Anyone. I'm not interested in Mitch. And I know I shouldn't have done it, but I was angry. Yeah, I were angry too. Somehow managed to avoid snogging the face off the first girl I bumped into, like. I always said you were too good for me. Yep. Way too good for you. It's not going to stop me trying, though. Why don't you just save your energy for London, eh? If I'd have known how much it'd hurt you, I never would have. We were so good together. I don't want it to end like this. Do you think this is what I want? I don't know what you want. Tell me what you want. I want a new life. So have a new life. Come down to London with me. I can't. Why not? Because my shift just started. Daryl! Hiya. Only me. I'm in here. You on your own, Blanche? You know I am. You OK? My feet are killing me. I shouldn't be standing up all morning. Is that the washing up ball? My feet are clean. Does Deirdre know you do that? What is this, the Spanish Inquisition? Look, um, I need another favour, actually. You know my rates. I just wondered if you could have Simon tonight. You see, I've invited Leanne round later, and it's do or die, honest. I know she wants to give me another chance. I just don't want to cock it up. Do you think it'd take a pumice to me scaly pads? I can't reach them anymore. Yeah, I'm sure he would. For £10 an hour. Well, go and fetch him. We'll negotiate. 
Blanche, you're a star. Mm. So, what time does this DIY shop close at? Half five. Don't know. Yeah, well, if you were mine, I'd know. After what he was up to, lying and cheating, stealing to get drugs. Hmm? <sighs> be a very long time for me to trust after that. Well, he's making an effort, so I want him to know that I do trust him. Do you? Most of the time, yeah. Could be shooting up in the ginnel right now. Could be. But he's not. Mm. How can you be so sure? Because he's just walked in. Oh, uh, sorry I'm late. Oh, I tried to phone, but I ran out of watch it's on me mobile. And... Uh, I've just got this in. Can I get you one? Uh, no, thanks. Bill just called. Uh, if we get there by six, we've got a, a kitchen to fix. Better get a move on, then. I'll save you some tea. Bye. Bye, Audrey. Yeah, bye. Of course, him and Bill could be up the ginnel smoking crack. Yeah, you've made your point. No, I didn't let the robber in. But I know that's what I said. Well, what's the point of you sending me a claim form when you just told me you're not going to pay out? Chips are going cold. Did you get that? Sorry? Things are just getting worse. <sighs> Oh, hi, Connie. Well, you're just nipping to Rovers if you want to come. Right, before you do, sit down. There's something I want to say. Oh, is he serious? <laughs> Not got her pregnant, have you? <laughs> Give over you. Right. You know the plan. Well, I've decided I'm moving into Connie's on Friday. Say something. Well, there's no rush, is there? Yes, I know. But, you see, I want you two to have first dibs on everything in here. Everything. You know, table, chairs, pots, pans, furniture. Mm -hmm. Everything. Your choice. And it would be my honour to know that you two were starting our life together with me and Alvira stuff. Jack. Well, we're both going to miss you so much. Yeah, and, and, and if there's anything you don't want, Chuck it out. I promise, I promise I will not be offended. You see, because I... I think you're the future, you see. I, th I think you're made for each other, like me and I'll be. <laughs> and I know you're going to be very happy for a long, long time in this house. Oh, me, you thought I was the soppy one. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. But we will miss you. Right, the bad news is I've... sucked all the air out of your fridge. <laughs> Doesn't matter. And the good news is we bought double to replace them. Connie, <laughs> um, do the honours. Would you love it? I think we're going to need a bit of. Um, bit. Cheering up. <laughs> this is nice. Thanks. I, uh, I decided against candles in case you thought it a bit presumptuous, a bit devious. Uh, so, just clear light, there's no dark corners, everything above board and honest. Uh, have, a, have a seat, Lee. Hi, Simon. Oh, Blanche is teaching him how to give a pedicure. Hey, better than sending him up chimneys. I've, um, brought him some sweets. I didn't want you to be distracted. Simon's not a distraction. Well, put it this way. He loves you. You know he loves you. And I think you love him. Yeah, I do. Well, then he's not the problem, is he? I am. Can't argue there. Got that one right. Hey, you better get used to it. Happens more often than you think, that. I'm sure it does. Uh, can I... Can I get you a glass of wine, then? No, I'm fine, Ta. Ah, now, Lee, I, I know you're only saying that because of me. Honestly, it, it's fine. I'm, I'm OK. I, I bought a bottle for you, though. No, I'm not saying it for you. I'm saying it for me. I don't feel like a drink. What? Do you think that I'm planning to get you drunk? No. What's wrong with you? I'm a bit nervous here, Lee. I'm sorry. Right, well, let's both just calm down then, shall we? Yeah. Deep breaths. If you like. <laughs> Look, I'm here, you're here, and I can smell food, so why don't we just eat and talk? And who knows, eh? We might even enjoy the experience. Right. Yeah. 
You're stalking me. I'm hungry. Well, you're bad. Can't buy me. It's my dad's shop. Yeah. You win again. Will you grow up? Can't. I don't have enough education. How much do you want to hurt me? Because that's what you're doing. All right, I kissed a bloke. And I shouldn't have, and I'm sorry. But I never intended to hurt you. You're hurting me. Yeah, I'll stop. Game over. I just want us to get back to how it was. Please. Isn't that what you want? It's time to call it a day. We both know it. You know, different lives, different worlds. It's nobody's fault, it's just... Wait, cookie crumbles, I guess. But I thought... Well, don't. Save your thinking for uni. I like it there. This is the right time to move on. I mean, you can... Give me a phone call or... Give me a text if you like. But that's it. Yeah, well, I was terrified when I first saw it. It was dead as a dodo. I mean, there's no mistake in a dead rabbit for a living one, that's for sure. Oh, oh he must have been heartbroken. <sighs> I wish there was something I could have done to save him from going through it. I was all set to go down the pet shop with a dead bunny, saying, have you got one to match this, please, mate? And how is he now, then? The truth? Because, after all, that is uh, what I did promise. He's getting better, slowly. I mean, most of the time, you know, he seems fine. But when it comes to bedtime, and believe me, we have some pretty deep conversations. So you're going to get him another rabbit, then? Well, the thing is, it's not really about the rabbit, Lee. It's about his mum. You know, he lost his mum and he was, well, I suppose he still is too young to really understand what happened. He's grieving. And it's tough. You know, I'd do anything to cheer him up. To make him smile, make him forget. But it's a process, isn't it? And that takes time. Why what? You know I was a dab hand in the kitchen. Yeah. I just didn't think you'd turn out to be such a great dad. Oh, I'm starving. We're not stopped all evening. But job done. And the good news is there may be more. Mm, that is good news. So what were you doing exactly? Oh, some bloke tried to fit his own kitchen. I mean, the right dog's breakfast of it. So the wife paid me and Bill to take it all apart and put it together again properly. Is your back okay? That's a bit stiff, but in a good way. And I've done a good day's work, way. More like two days' work. Ah, but there are rewards. Stick that in the kitty. <laughs> Thank you. Do you want chocolate on top? Oh, I've brought some chocolates. Ah, no. Right. Can't eat Simon's chocolates, can we? No, I brought them for us. Oh, right. Excellent. Hey. Any with fruity centres? We've all got fruity centres. I know what you like. Uh, oh, yes, you do. <laughs> so, when did you redecorate the flat, then? Ah. Ah, what? No one tell you what happened? No. Right. It's time for a bit more truth and reconciliation, then. I burnt the flat down. I set fire to it. I got drunk and I dropped to sleep with a fag on. Whole thing. Went up in flames. Simon that saved their lives. I mean, he got up and he came through and he, he called for help. I was... I couldn't. I was too out of it to do anything. You idiot. Yeah. I know. I know that. I've, there's no excuses. I had to sit next to him in hospital and he was all... He was all tubed up and that. And I didn't know whether he was going to live or die. But that was rock bottom. I'm never going back there again. Never. So is that when you stopped drinking, then? Yeah. Sorry, I just assumed that somebody would have told you about the fire. No. I bet you're regretting that total honesty plan now.
Yeah. 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 Mm. Right, keep some of me bags, will you, babe? Nice to see you too. <laughs> OK, mate. Keep the change, thanks. Oh. Are you sure you want to live above a kebab shop? Oh, no choice. Pay Dev the deposit. If I don't get a job pretty quickly, I'm not going to be able to pay the rent. I doubt that'll be a problem. Oh, yeah, why is that then? Peter Barlow fancies you. He also thinks that I am a very hard worker with an impeccable attendance record. What well, you call now? There's a light on. Nah, I'll wait till morning. Because you're too weak to lift a couple of tiny bags all on your own. <laughs> So you're not seeing anyone now? Do you want to wire me up to a polygraph? Just answer the question. No. But there have been other women. Yep. How many? Anyone I know? No, no. Nothing serious? Fun only. Well, it's not that much fun, to be honest. Honestly? Well, it was fun at the time, but not the next morning. The, er... Uh, the last one, she's called Naomi. She's a nice girl. His lordship vetoed her. What? Didn't he like her? No. Nope. What can I say? He's got higher standards than me. Right. So, is there anything else you feel you should tell me? Yeah. This is the big one, OK? So you promise me when I tell you, you won't walk out on me? Er, uh, no promises. You wanted honesty. Now I'm going to give you honesty. OK. I love the bones of you. I know that I messed up. But we had something. You and me. Something special. All right, if that's you enough. Gave me... No, let me just no, say... No, listen, it's enough talking. I'm tired. You're tired, and... Well, I think it's No, time. wait. Uh, uh, please don't go. Who said anything about going? If you knew... Hey, how... I said enough talking. Sleep well? Eventually. Ah, I didn't keep you awake, did I? <laughs> I've got to go and pick Simon up. So, how do you like your eggs? Three minutes? Four? You take a lot for granted, don't you? Why is that then? Well, what makes you so sure that I'm stopping for breakfast? Ah, uh, you can't go now. Not after last night. I feel like I've been used. <laughs> Never give up, do you? No. Not when I want something. I have still got a boyfriend in Leeds, remember? I know. And a good job. I'm serious. Yeah, so am I. Look, I don't want to assume anything, but like I said last night, losing you was the biggest mistake I ever made. And I'm not going to let that happen again. on these. You can tell how long ago it was we had a proper holiday. So we've got them out for now. We don't go till tomorrow tea time. We have to leave at two latest. What? We've got to check in by three. We're both working today. I thought I'd make a start now. We've got masses of time. What, at this short notice? Kevin, I've got washing and ironing to do. I've got things to go and buy. I'm taking tomorrow morning off. I think you should too. Me? We need to get currency. Well, we can do that at the airport. We can if we don't get stuck in traffic. All right, I can do it at Lanzarote. We've got banks there, you know. It's always me who has to organise everything, though, isn't it? Yeah, well, I've got a stack of work and over there I can't afford to turn down. Anyway, you can start this tonight, can't you? No, we're having a meal with Rosie and Sophie tonight. Since when? Since I decided we're not going to see him for two weeks. I don't your daughters mean that much to you. Where are you going now? Want to get some milk for our breakfast. Another thing I have to organise.
Is that the Blenheim Motel? Yeah, I'd like to book a double room for someone, please. What's the earliest time I can check in? What is it? It's still in one piece? Oh, great. Well, when can I pick it up? Right. Oh, that, well, that's brilliant news. That's great, thanks. Yeah, bye. They found me van. Oh, well, that's good news. Yeah, it's not damaged and I can pick it up this morning. Hey, and you never know, they might find some of your stuff in there, mightn't they? They do that, burglars, don't they? they? They grab what they can at first and then they sift through everything and they dump what they can't sell on. I'm not holding my breath. To live with us. Whoa! Hold your horses, cowboy. Yeah. <laughs> it's only breakfast today, mate. Just one thing at a time, eh? We've still got a job in Leeds, remember? We'll get one round here. <laughs> it's not that easy, mate. I'd give you a job if I was a boss. Well, if you were the boss, Simon, I would take it. Is that why I went to stay with Nana Blanche so you could have Leanne over? You just eat your egg, mister, before it goes cold, will you? Dad showed me how to thread a conch last week. Did he? Mm -hmm. Don't to see it. No, you show it to later, otherwise you're going to be late for school. She might be gone later. Oh, I'm sure that she won't go before she saw your conquer. I can show you on the way to school if you take me. Go on then. Yes. <laughs> you little scamp. <laughs> you're a lot nicer than Naomi was. I'm Michelle. He means when they worked in the bookies, don't you, mate? What? Look, what have I told you? Just hurry up, eat that egg. I was looking through the books last night. The turnover was holding up quite nicely, considering. What exactly is turnover? It's the amount of money a business takes. What do you mean, like profit? Well, profits are what's left after all your overheads have come off. Overheads? What are overheads? Well, the things you've got to pay out for. Wages, plant. <laughs> plant? Machinery. Equipment. What, the same word as like a plant in your garden? Same word. It's so weird. Plant can mean a factory as well. You know, I don't know whether to wear this top and my red one with these leggings. What do you think? I think you look fantastic. Morning. When did you get back? Last night. Good tour? Yeah, yeah, it was brilliant, yeah. All right, Rosie. Fine. How's business? Turnover's holding up quite well, actually. Mate. Come on, we'd better go and open up that plant, hadn't we? We better add. Might see you around, Michelle. So, so, so there's, there's nothing I need to organise? Oh, all right, well, yes. Thank you for uh, letting me know. Yes, thank you. Bye. The, the funeral director? Yes, uh, Ramsey's body arrived back on Sunday. He, he's making all the necessary arrangements for the funeral tomorrow. He seems very efficient. All we have to do is turn up at the church. Right. Well, I'll start ringing round those people I think might want to go. Oh, that'll take all of five minutes. I think you'd be surprised. He made a lot of friends while he was here. They're so unfair when it happens like that. No time to say goodbyes. Well, we, we've got the funeral to look forward to now. Let's uh, give him the best send-off we can, shall we? I'm all alone, don't worry. What are you doing tomorrow dinner? Having my dinner. Not anymore. Who says? Oh, I thought you were rushed off your feet. We are. So what are you doing in here then? Getting a packet of biscuits, if that's okay with you. Got to keep them on the toes, take it from me. I've come to get some sun cream. Look at you going on holiday. Oh yeah, I can't wait. Sun, sand, sea and something else beginning with S. Kevin's very, very lucky. Sangria. Yeah, that might be all it is unless you brighten your ideas up. What time do you fly? Five, provided Muggins here has done all the packing. No, well, you can pay for that. See you later. 
the same motel as last time for 12 o'clock. I'll pick you up at quarter to corner of the Crimea Street. What, so I get an hour and she gets two weeks? Oh, come on. This is how we can do it at the minute. But you know I'd rather be going away with you. I'm gonna die not seeing you for the next two weeks. Please don't say you can't come tomorrow. I'll be there. Michelle! Hiya! Ah, Leanne! When did you get back? Last Friday. Oh, well, both been away then. Oh, yeah? Where have you been? On tour in Europe, you know, singing. Oh, nice. <laughs> Need a job now, though. Why don't you uh, ask Peter? Well, funny you should say that. Well, I know he's looking for someone. Have you seen him since you got back? Oh, yeah. Oh, you're not back together, are you? Well, it's on the cards. All oh, right. Don't worry. Tell me what happened. Yeah? Yeah. Said it was just a bit of fun more than anything. <laughs> well, that's right. Plus, I had this tour to go on, so that was the end of it. Why? What, what did he tell you? He didn't tell me anything. But you just said... Oh, dear. Hey, I was just about to ring you. You know that chat we had last night? Yeah. That really, really long chat where I said about a million times there'd have to be no more lies. Yeah. And you said you'd confess to everything. Yeah, of course I do. And you promised that there'd be no more women turning up off yachts. Leanne, what's happened? I've just fell for your stinking lies again. That's what's happened. What do you mean? Look at you! Doing it again? Why don't you just own up to it? To what? Oh, are there so many you don't know who I'm talking about? Who? Michelle. Oh. Oh, yeah, you might well say, oh. Who told you? She did. I thought she was away. Yeah, she's back. Go and get him if you want. Oh, no, I, I don't want her. Yeah? Well, I don't want you. Not after this. No, listen. I must have been mad to think you could change. There's an explanation. Oh, yeah. There's an explanation, all right. You are a compulsive liar, a compulsive cheat, and a compulsive scumbag. And we... No, wait. I've finished. Rid of you. I got me steering. You found. He's come back. Where have you found him? Well, I was chopping yeah. vegetables and he uh, yeah. heard a scratch and he just hopped through the back oh. door just now. Where have you been, me beauty? I thought he was lost forever. <coughs> oh, you said he'd come back. Is this a miracle or what? Oh, good news at last. Yes. You didn't waste much time, did you? Look, if this is about Liam. Why? Who else have you been telling tales to? She told me she knew about us. She knew nothing. Well, I didn't know that, did I? She just laid a trap and I walked straight into it. I don't know how you've got the nerve to walk in here. She must have guessed, or else she wouldn't have set me up in the first place. Look, if you didn't tell her, Peter, that is your problem. I know. I'm sorry. Why didn't you just tell her? Didn't get a chance. You bottled it, in other words. Well, I just came to see if my old job was still going, but I suppose it's too much to ask under the circumstances. Look, I can't take you back on yet. Not while there's still a ghost of a chance with Leanne. Sure, you know, I wouldn't mind if I'd done something wrong. If she goes back to Leeds, then... maybe. Oh, do you know, you're just all heart, Peter. I am gonna cook you such a lovely meal tonight! You're not going already. Why didn't you tell me about the fire at the Buckies? Why would you want to know about Peter Barlow when you dumped him? Well, you knew I might bump into him round here. Oh, 
and there I was, thinking you'd come to see me. I didn't tell you, because I didn't want you running back, feeling sorry for him. You know, you deserve better than that. And what's this fire got to do with out? He said he'd stop drinking because of me. Turns out he stopped drinking because he nearly killed Simon. And that's why you're packing your bags, is it? And he lied about sleeping with Michelle. Oh, do you know what? When will you ever learn? Everything that comes out of that bloke's gob is a lie. I can't believe I let him get around me again. His brain has forgotten how to tell the truth. It'd seize up if he tried to do it. Look, don't go just yet. I've hardly seen you. I mean, stay till tomorrow at least. Yeah. Oh, no. I know you're in there. I just want to talk to you, please. What? I, I just want a chance to explain. Go away or I'll call the police. What for? Harassing me. I just want to talk to you. What's the point when all you do is lie? Hey, hey you've heard her. Now get lost. Look, I told you there'd been somebody else. Yeah, you just forgot to say who it was, I know. But I, I just didn't want to lose you. Well, you've lost me now, so bog off. What? But for such a, a small mistake, please, Lee, just give me five minutes. Is she coming down? Did you not hear what oh, I oh. just said? Do you have a bit money for I that? I know that you're angry. I don't Leanne. know what else I can say. Hey, think of Simon. If you use him as blackmail one more time... Look, uh, look, I know I deserve everything that I get. Now leave me alone! Well, uh, I've done some ringing round and um, most people are going to try and make it tomorrow. Oh, well, they have to say that, don't they? I spoke to Liz about the way she's putting on a few sandwiches. Oh, good. I assume it'll be paid out of his estate. Oh, I'll get it all settled up, don't you worry. And I've agreed an order of service with the vicar. So all that remains is the eulogy. Yeah, well, he can do that, can't he? He did offer, yes. Mm, I'll give him some background details later. My only thought was whether you might like to do it. Me? Well, you are his nearest relative. I hardly knew the man. All the same. Just a packet of chewy, please. Oh, you knew Ramsey, didn't you, Tyrone? Oh, yeah. He delivered our paper for a bit. Terrible how he died in that. It's his funeral tomorrow uh, at 12, if you'd like to come. Sorry, I've got to work. Then we'll be having drinks in the Rovers afterwards. Well, I'll be in there anyway, toasting Jack, cos you know he's moving to Connie's. Uh, uh, yes, I did hear. Yeah. But I'll raise a glass for him at the same time. He was a top man. Oh, excellent. People around here still think very highly of him. Mm, I can see that. Lots of them will be coming tomorrow, whatever you say. And they'll be expecting something more than the usual rent attribute. Well, I suppose I could knock something together when you put it like that. I can't promise it'd be any good, man. I'm sure it'd be wonderful. Oh. I've got a surprise for your tea. What is it? Strawberry blancmange. Strawberry what? Have you never had blancmange before? I've never even heard of it. They don't eat blancmange anymore, Blanche. It's all smoothies now and yoghurt. Oh, yoghurt. They couldn't invent a more revolting name for a pudding if they tried. Anyway, uh, I'll leave him with you then, if that's all right. Will the be there when I get home? I'm not sure, love. Oh. I think she's got one or two things to do, you know. Why don't you go and switch on the telly for children's hour? Children's hour? Well, whatever they call it these days. Go on, run along. I take it something's amiss with Leanne. What is it this time? A single confession I omitted to make and she went and found out about it. The devil's often in the detail for a woman. I know, but one lousy mistake, though, Blanche. How bad is it? Lover's tiff? Nuclear winter? I think I've blown it. 
just as they were happy again. When will you learn? Hiya. You all right? Uh, can't wait until next week. Well, what's happening? Kev's away, innit? I'll be in charge. I'll do what I want to do. Go in when I want. Within reason, I'm not going to sky bro. out. Pick what jobs I want to do. Well, that'd be brilliant. I was just um, looking at this. What is it? It's the leaf that they give you, you know, when you start yoga. Hey, I've been uh, preparing myself for tomorrow. You've got a class tomorrow? Yep, 12 o'clock. Deb's given me a couple of hours off. No, no, you can't go then. Why not? Because Jack is having a few drinks in the Rovers half 12 to say goodbye and that. Well, I didn't know that. We decided today. Well, yeah, but I've got this class book now. <laughs> You'll have to cancel it. You don't want to miss Jack's farewell drinks, do you? Well, you can't. It's a one-off. You can do yoga another day. Yeah, I suppose so. No problems, then, eh? Glad to hear turnovers up. Holding up. Sorry. Important distinction. What are you drinking? Well, I think I best get this, don't you? We don't want your other half finding out, getting all jealous now, do we? Oh, hello, stranger. Aww. Aww. You all right? Well, it's a long story that you don't want to hear. Ah, well, uh, a small white wine then, in that case. Right, you are, cock. You and Rosie still together then? Looks like it. Oh. Well, there's a statement of commitment, if ever there was one. Bank balance is still healthy then. Shell, how could you? There you go. Thank you. <clears throat> and um, espresso for me. Oh, actually, I'm getting this. Oh, sorry. That's all right. And a spritzer for Rosie, please. Always a good way of tying up cheap wine. Actually, why don't we go back to the flat and have something there? Sure. If that's what you'd like. Yeah. No offence, Michelle, but when you've been running a business all day, your head needs rest. Mm. Some heads more than others. You what? Ah, oh, sorry. <laughs> what I mean is, you know, I don't know how you do it. I have no head at all for business. Take me off to you. Shall we? Have a good evening. Might see you around. So, you're still here then? I don't want to talk about it, thanks, Blanche. I wouldn't blame you for leaving. In fact, I were amazed you gave him a second chance. Well, there's nothing to discuss then, is there? What you have to decide is whether he's a... Uh, an out-and-out baton? Or does he just let himself down? Because he's a touch feckless at times. A touch? He uh, tries his best, as a rule. If you're here to plead his case, forget it. All I'll plead is this. If you are leaving him, make sure it's forever, won't you? How do you mean? Well, it's not just you and him in this equation, is it? It's Simon as well. He thinks the world of you. Yeah, well, I can't let that stop me. No, but if you keep stepping in and out of his life so that he doesn't know where he is with you, no real mother to call his own, he could be seriously damaged. Right this minute, you could kill Peter, and I'd be tempted to help you. But I think you've still got feelings for him somewhere. Whatever you decide, just make sure it's final, for everyone's sake. Are you sure you'll be all right while we're away? Of course. Can't wait. Texting all my mates. You what? I'm not joking. Travel pillars. How am I supposed to know where they are? We use them once a year. Yeah, exactly. And it's your job to find them. Anyway, I've told Rosie to make sure she's around. Why? To keep an eye on things. You are joking. The only thing she keeps her eye on is her reflection. And anyway, she's one who's likely to wreck the house and have wild parties. <laughs> well, you can keep an eye on each other. Sisters and all that. You've got the wrong house. Kev, shall I put a crease in these shorts? I don't want mine and we'll be on a beach.
Right, I've got to go. See you later. Oh, no, you don't. Not until you've done that list. Oh, dear. Is that the last one? Yep. Loft's empty now. Mm. Word of advice, keep it that way. First time you think of putting anything up there, don't. Chuck it out, because you'll never use it again. Well, at least Connie's house is big enough to set this lot. No, no, I'm not going to dump 20 years of my junk on her, no, no. No, I'll, I'll have a sort through. Most of it can go to tip. Well, if you want a hand, you know, I, I can go into work late. No, no, you're all right. I'll have it done in a jiffy. OK. See you later. All right, all right. Hey. Hey. Oh. Right, I am off to the wholesalers. Excuse me. Right, okay. So, um, are you all packed? Yes. <laughs> so you'll never have to stand behind this counter ever again. Well, I'll be back in the holidays. Be glad of the money. Ah, I see. So what? I have to pay your tuition fees as well as your wages. That's what fathers are for. <laughs> Listen, you don't have to hang around here. You know, I'm sure there's other things you'd rather be doing. No, I'm fine. I may as well help out before ah. I go. Okay. Besides, <laughs> Daryl might come in. Um. He dumped me, remember? Oh, well, what's that got to do with anything? Morning. Morning. Anything I can help you with? I'm uh, looking for something for dinner. Oh, um, we've got some special offers on ready meals over here, I'll show you. What's up? I can't make it this dinner time. Ty wants us to go for a drink with Jack before he leaves. So we've um, got this two for the price of one. I'm not going to see you for two weeks. Can we not meet earlier? We won't have much time, would we? And there's this. It's better than nothing. Please, Molly, come on. I suppose I could tell him I'm still going to yoga, but won't stay for long. Yeah, exactly. That's fine, thanks. For sure. Yeah. Well, I'll try and get off early. Mm. Phone me at the garage when you do. I'll Thank pretend you. it's a breakdown. Bye. Well, uh, I'll leave it. Thanks anyway. You're a rubbish saleswoman. Perhaps you just fancied something a bit different. Oh, they're lovely, Emily. Yes. Well, he always did like roses. He said they symbolised England for him. They symbolise a lot of things, Emily. What time are the cars arriving? Quarter past eleven. Oh. And how are you, Norris? Fine. <clears throat> Emily says you're going to do a eulogy after all. I'd hardly call it a eulogy. Just a few polite words which I shall say as quickly as possible. Do you have to be so ungracious about it? I'm just being honest, it's not as if I wanted the job. Uh -huh. I know I weren't invited, but I thought I'd show me support. So, will there be any food afterwards? I'll get it. Hello, Webster's Garage. Hi. Um, I need a strong man to come and help me. Urgent, is it? Oh, it's really, really urgent. In fact, I can't wait. Well, I better come and give it a once over then, shall I? Yeah, I think that's best. Just check everything's in working order. Right, I'll be there straight away. All right, break down the other side of Manchester. Well, I'll go if you want. Uh, no, it's all right, I'll do it. We got to be at the airport in a couple of hours. So, still plenty of time for this. Hey! Is it a woman? Yeah, why? Well, I've probably just run out of petrol then, haven't you? You'll be back before you know it. Can we go and see Liam now? No. Why? Because you might give me a cold, that's I why. won't kiss her. Still no. 
Why? Because she's busy. Why? Because she's got things to do. Why? Because she's flipping packing. That's why. Look, the thing is, she's going back to Leeds. I don't want to do. I know I don't want to do either, mate, but what can I do? We can buy some sweeties. I'll tell you what. Why don't we buy you some sweets and we'll get Leanne something else? You okay? Yes. yes. W would you? Uh... Certainly, madam. Very nice. Sorry? Solid oak or oak finish? Oak finish. Oh, very sensible. I mean, what's the point in paying extra when it's going to be buried under a pile of earth? Flange, this is hard. My the time. friend, Ethel Armitage were buried in a biodegradable coffin made of banana leaves. A daughter of one of these hippies. And I said to her, I said, it might be friendly towards the environment, but it's not very friendly towards Ethel. She didn't even like bananas. They gave a terrible wind. Uh, where's Norris? Norris, come on, we're going. Norris? You, you... You go without me. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not going. I've, I've no right. I barely knew the man. Don't be silly. He's your brother. Half brother, and you don't choose your relatives. No, but he chose you, or he would have if you'd let him. Surely you're not going to turn your back on him in death as well. It's not a question of turning me back on him. I just don't want to be a hypocrite. I don't think I've ever heard anything so selfish. Look, why don't you give us a minute? You and Blanche go and wait in the car. I'm fine where I am. Blanche. She's right, you know. He would have wanted you there. Too many people use funerals as a way of solving the conscience. Is that what this is about? You feeling guilty? Oh, only because you and Emily have made me feel guilty. And then he had to go and die on me, the ultimate revenge. Norris! Well, it's true. I've been punished by both of you ever since. Are you sure about that? Or have you been punishing yourself? I was just being honest. I couldn't make myself feel something for him when I didn't, and I won't pretend I do now by going to his funeral. Well, if you can't do it for him, maybe you can do it for Emily. Oh, that's blackmail. It is, yes. Because she did feel something for him, and right now she's hurting, and she needs her friends round her. I can't kiss you because I've got a cold. Oh, right. You can't keep using him like this, Peter. It's not fair. I know, but I, I knew you wouldn't open the door for me. So what's your next plan, then? Reduce me to tears while he sings Somewhere Over the Rainbow? No. Didn't sound too good with a block nose. I felt a bit, uh, a bit guilty about using all your groceries like that, so uh, I thought, well, the least I can do is replace them for you. So... Can we come up? Well done, dude. So, um, shame you don't have a uniform like the AA. Oh, don't you start. Your auntie's already got me dad dressed like Bob the Builder. Yeah, well, whatever turns you on. Mm. Mm. 
For your information, you do not reignite spark plugs. Oh, well, you reignite me. I'm sorry. Am I boring you? I'm sorry, I've just got to keep an eye on the term. I've got to be back for one o'clock, otherwise Sally will kill me. Yeah, well, we've all got to be back. You don't see me looking at my watch. Can we just, um, forget about them for a while? I'm all yours. I'll be gentle. Actually, it was Janice's stuff. Oh, I see. Does she normally chuck your food out the window, then? Only at blocks who deserve it. Very nice it was, too. Went down a treat. Well, thank you very much. You can go now. Can I have a word before I do? Please. Leanne. Jan, why don't you take Cy for a milkshake, eh? Yeah. Now who's using him? Right, come on then. What's your favourite? Chocolate. Oh, mine too. After you, sir. Thanks. Five minutes, then I'm on my way. So many people. Well, he got to know a lot of folk. People just sort of took to him. Emily, who was that? Oh, it's Mrs. Wolf, Ramsay's landlady for the bed and breakfast. And they are, uh, they're all from the cricket club. I didn't know he was into cricket. Oh, yes. He went to all their matches. It's a good turnout compared to some of the funerals I go to. I hope they're not all coming back. You'll run out of food. And we all know that's why you're here. For your information, I'm here because I like the man. He had lovely manners, unlike some. Is that it? And it's not like you to disappoint. Are you sure you can't find something to criticise about him? Not really. Apart from the fact you were his brother. I suppose... What I'm trying to say is I've never really been very good at long-term relationships. I've always been... I don't know. I've just been scared, I suppose, at the thought of committing. Till I met you. Right. So that's why you went off with a bird in a boat and jumped into bed with the barmaid? Yeah, but that doesn't mean I'm not still scared by the prospect. So, you know, maybe I've... I've tried to talk myself out of it along the way with the odd fling. But anyway, scared or not, it's you I want to be with. Permanent. And this has got now to do with the fact that now you've got a kid, you need somebody to look after him. Well, excuse me, you know... That's a very sexist remark, is that? Just because I'm a bloke, that doesn't mean I'm not capable of looking after him, you know? Well, not now I'm sober, anyway. He was a wake-up call, yeah. He was the most fantastic wake-up call I've ever had. Because he made me realise what a waste my life had been up until then. So, yeah. Maybe it was him that made me decide that I wanted to settle down. And it's you that I want to do it with. And am I just supposed to forget everything that happened? No. You'd be a fool if you did. Look, Leah, I'm not going to try and persuade you, because it has to be your decision. I just wanted to say me bit, that's all. I'm going to go now. And if... Well, if I don't see you again, you have a great life. Because I tell you what, you deserve it. Off. 
He's out on a breakdown. I'm having a breakdown. He should have been home by now. We've got a plane to catch. Why couldn't you have gone? Well, I did offer, but he said no. <sighs> Typical. I've had to do everything. All the washing, all the ironing, all the packing, and now I've got to chase him up and all. <sighs> Is Leanne going to stay? I think we would have heard by now if she was. Looks like it's just you and me, mate. Still, that's not so bad, is it? So, who are you betting on, then? Grimb. Oh, it's as good a name as any. Right, I think five smarties should do it. You know, I could have driven you to the station at least, honey. Well, you've got the shop to mind. Anyway, this will be more relaxing than listening to you swear at other drivers. Well, ring me when you get to London, yeah? I will. And listen, this is like a great opportunity for you, so don't blow it, all right? I won't. No, no wild parties, no staying up late, and no, no boys, and definitely, definitely no drugs. So I can get drunk then. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I promise I'll. I'll keep my head down. Good. Hey. I'm very proud of you, you know? I know. Will you be all right? Me, yeah. yeah now I can... Uh, have the wild parties and stay up at night. And... Right. I'm gonna go. Yeah, you go, go. go. Okay, bye now. I thought I'd let you know that I'm going to go off and have a great life. Yes. Fair enough. With you. What? Y you mean? The office still open. <laughs> You're not kidding, it's still open. <laughs> I... I don't know what to say, that's... It's fantastic. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Too. I, uh, I assume you have told your boyfriend. Oh, yeah. Well, actually, there isn't one. Well, we finished a while ago. Oh, so <laughs> I'm not the only one that tells Porky's then. Yeah, but mine was all in good cause. I was holding you at bay. Yeah, felt like good it did you. <laughs> hey, come look who's gonna stay. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Hey! <laughs> Hiya. Molly not back yet? No. She promised she wouldn't oh, be late. Oh, she'll get here. Right, I'm just to get Fergie. Right, that, that's uh, that's the rubbish, and that's for charity. Yep. Right. Okay. Right, I think that's everything. You know, I remember when me and Alvira first moved in here. She had a row with Hilda Ogden before we'd set foot in place. <laughs> <laughs> Twenty-one years lived in this house. Most of us married life. Happy days. 
Well, not all of them, but, but most. Huh. For me and all. Aye. Aye. You don't have to leave, you know. I do, lad. It's time. Besides, I know I've left it in good hands. Right, I'll go and put the kettle on. Connie will be here in a minute. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to bring Molly. She must have lost track of time. It's time on. Oh, what time is it? Oh, flaming hell, it's nearly two o'clock. Why didn't you tell me? I didn't know. I'll miss my flight if I don't get a move on. Well, quick, hurry up. What is she playing at? I said to her, make sure you're back in time to go for a drink with Jack and Connie. There's no rush. I've been here for years. I can always stop a few more minutes. Yeah, but what's she doing? She promised she'd be... Unless that's her now and she's forgot a key. Hello. <laughs> oh, um, oh, yeah, come in. Oh, how are you? Yeah, I'm all right, yeah. Um, so, what time do you have to check in? Oh, I'm not sure. You're as bad as me? Yeah, well, that's your fault, isn't it? Taking me watch off me. Well, you gave it me. Yeah, where'd you put it anyway? Um, where did I put it? Come on, come on, I can't go on without me watch. Yes, all right. It's here. All right. Uh, don't do this to me. Away. We are running like that way. Oh. <sighs> Mum, you've got loads of time yet. We've got to get to the airport and then we've got to check in. You know how long that takes. And we haven't got loads of time. Well, shall I go and see if he's at the garage? Oh, he better not be. Though I know he does sometimes seem to prefer being there than in his own home. Yeah. Go and have a look. If he's not there, just see if the pickup's back. OK. It's just typical of your father, this is. We're supposed to be going on holiday, and where is he? Lying under some car somewhere. And when he finally does get back, it's going to take him half an hour to wash all the muck off. Mum, will be here. Yeah. And by the time he is, I'll be a nervous wreck. I'll tell you what. Let's not go. Let's just get back into bed. Yeah? OK. He wouldn't. You mean... You wouldn't. You don't think so? No. Because you've got a wife waiting to take you on holiday. Come on. First time I've claimed anything off the insurance and they won't give me a penny. That's because it wasn't a break-in, it was a break-out. Yeah. You shouldn't have told him. You're supposed to be all honest and truthful, you? Well, I only told him because I told the police. I know, I'm going to get going. And if there's anything good on the telly tonight, can you remember it and tell me about it tomorrow? Because we won't be watching. Oh. Poor Eileen. I mean, no telly. How are they going to live? They've got a really old one they could have, but the screen's really small. I'm not even sure it works anymore. How old? Oh, ancient, older than me. <laughs> this was a grungy, horrible old telly that you wouldn't even want given. Well, unless you had nothing, and then you might. What are you going on about it for? Because I've got a brilliant plan. A stonking brilliant plan. I've only got to ask me what it is. And so how long are you going to be? Yeah, well, I'll be as quick as I can. Well, why didn't you set off back sooner? You know I promised Jack. We just, um, we had a coffee after the yoga class. I didn't know what time we got to. And what's that noise? What noise? I don't know. Look, um, you just go for a drink with Jack and I'll get back as soon as I can. I've got to go. All right, bye. What, Mo What's the matter with it? Well, it does this sometimes. What happens if we can't get it started? Yeah, we'll have to send for someone to tow us on. Come on, it's not funny. Maybe we should just get a taxi. Well, I'll get a taxi and you just do whatever you've got to do to get it going. Oh, so you'll just take off and leave me here? I'll have my own, thanks very much. You could have been on a call there when we broke down. I'm just trying to get us out of the mess you've got us into. I have. It's your truck. Yeah, I know. And I'm trying to fix it if you just shut it and give us a chance. I beg your pardon? Who do you think you're telling to shut up? You know. Yeah, I do know. What's that supposed to mean? Nothing, just let me get on. I'm a mechanic, I'll get it fixed. Yeah, when though? As soon as I can. I'm the one going on my holidays in case you've forgotten. Um, 40 minutes, Tim. Thank you. 
Making speeches at funerals is a clergyman's job. Well, I thought Norris spoke very well. Oh, thank you. Then happen he should have been a clergyman. Right. That's for you, Rita. Ah, oh, thank you. Oh, and this will be mine, oh, will it? Yes. Well, I think it's always more moving when it's someone close to the deceased who talks about them. Sherry for you, Emily. Yes, thank you. It's yours, Norris, and that's mine. Mm, okay. So why didn't you get up on your hind legs and say something about Ramsay, then? No, I, I suppose I didn't trust myself. Oh, it takes some doing, does that? Which is why I have to say I was very impressed when Norris pulled it off. Well, I wasn't going to do it, you know. I was of a mind with Blanche. Leave it to the clergyman. I mean, he's the one getting paid. You weren't even going to go. Never mind the clergyman, you weren't going to go. You only did because we shamed you into it. What a brilliant idea. You never had a brilliant idea in your life. Yeah, I know, she's been robbed. Well, what are we supposed to do about it? You know what's in there? Your Vera's ashes. <sighs> Can't decide what to do with them. Jake Duckworth. What? You know what you want to do? You want to take them with you, don't you? But you're wondering what I might say. So what would you say? Well, I'd say, of course you've got to take them. I never imagined you'd do otherwise. Well, I've spoken to Molly. She's on her way. She said she didn't realise what time it had got to. Well, why should she? Anyway, she'll meet us in the Rovers, so... We can go and be ready. All okay. right. Nicole. Come on then. I thought you staying this time. Yes, she is. Well, I hope so. Well, if you have me, then yes, I am. Close, we'll have you. We will. Please, 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 you will, won't you? Hey, calm down, calm down. Leanne said. Yeah, but she said before. Yeah, I know, but I messed up, and that's not going to happen again. I've learnt my lesson. So, do you still have black currant and a biscuit as your afternoon snack? If you remember to buy any. Well, let's have a look, shall we? Come on. I, I think we might have run a bit low. I've just been pressed for time. Mm. So, that's 5.35, please. Oh, it's Jack's last day, is this? Would you stop saying that? Make it sound as if I'm at flaming death's door. Well, last day at our house. He's moving to Connie's. This but I'll still be coming in here. Unless you're only serving locals. Oh, Jack, you will be an honorary local for the rest of your life, no matter where you are. <laughs> Makes you think about your own funeral, doesn't it? Who'll be there and what they'll say about you. I shouldn't worry, you'll be past caring. He was a man who faced life's misfortunes without complaint and with a ready smile. Who's that, then? Me. Without complaint and a ready smile? You're always complaining. And very seldom smiling. Oh, well, all right. He was a miserable old devil. Is that better? It's near it true. Spot on, I'd say. Excuse me. Mr Webster hasn't been in here, has he? Mr... You mean Kev? No, and he won't be. He's off on his holidays. Well, except he isn't. Well, not yet, but thank you. You see, and that means then that I won't be getting in the way of these two all the time, which I'm sure they'll be glad about. Yeah. No, I mean, we don't want him to go. <laughs> no, but you'll like it a lot better when I've gone. Of course they will. You're bound to. You're still newlyweds, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, I suppose we are. <laughs> <laughs> right, which one? Would I choose? Mm-hmm. suppose if I really, really had to... You do? That one. Right, just getting that one. Oh. All righty then, I've got it. Yeah? Did you have enough money? Uh, it was in a sale. Oh, don't worry though, it's really, really good. In fact, it's a damn sight better than the one I've got. Oh. Right, <laughs> let's get this stuff loaded up and see how grateful I am, really. And the pickup's still not back? No, he went down to the Rovers to see if he was in there. Well, he better not be. I mean, it's bad enough if he's working, but if he's stood there drinking. No, he's not. He's not. No one's even seen him. He wouldn't do that anyway. I'm sorry. It's not your fault. Anyway, wherever he is, he's not here, so might as well start unpacking. Mum, no! You know me, Dad, he'll be here. You know he will. Do I? Why? 
Because I've been married to him for so long, I should always know what he's thinking and what he's doing. One day you'll find out it doesn't work like that. Sometimes the longer you're with somebody, the less you know what's going on in their head. <laughs> When I get back. Yep. <clears throat> Have a good time. Are well, you back then? Looks like it. Good. Hello. Is I in? Yeah, yeah. Come in. Eileen! Oh, hiya. Yeah. Now, Eileen, we're all here because we heard about your little misfortune. Oh, you got robbed. Yes, and uh, we've all got together and we've got you this stuff that we don't want anymore. But uh, you might find a need for. Yeah, like this, um, uh, this telly. And we would like you to accept them with our best wishes. Thanks. Is it digital, that TV? Shouldn't think so. Don't even think it's electrical. It won't work, then, will it? Well, I think it's the thought that counts. Do you know what? I'm beginning to wonder what that particular thought is. Sorry, I mean. What is it? We know a place where we can dump a load of worthless tap because we don't want it anymore. I'd say you put your finger right on it. Because, I mean, look at it. Well, no, no, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm not having it. I wouldn't. Well... I'm only trying to help friends and neighbours. Just uh, gathering around in a crisis. Yeah, community spirit. We thought you'd be grateful. Well, you know what, you can go and gather around somebody else and take your worthless junk with you. <gasps> right. Come on. You can't say we haven't tried. But we won't be trying again. Can you believe that? Some folk unbelievable. What? Well, I just think they were genuinely trying to help. Well, they're going to have to try harder than that, cos I'd rather sit in an empty room than be in the middle of a rubbish tip. Somebody shut that door. I'll do it, I'll do it. Can you believe that? I'd say those people have got a very low opinion of you, offering you junk like that. I'd say they think you've got no taste, that you've got no standards. I'd safely say they had you down as low life. Well, thank you. Um, aye, they're, um, they're all coming back. Right, well, uh, seeing as you didn't want our treasured antiques... Otherwise known as a, a load of old rubbish. We've had a whip round. And we've bought you this. You haven't. All for you. And don't worry, we'll take the other junk with us. You let me say all them horrible things about you. Just like we knew you would. <laughs> Don't know what to say. How about thank you very, 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 very much? Well, yeah, that. It's got no uh, DVD player with it. Where have you been? You know where I've been. I'm trying to earn a living, same as I do every day. And anyway, he's here now, so shouldn't you two just be getting going? Yeah, it's all right. Quick change and then we're off. All right, Ben. Fine, thanks. Well, I hope you're going to clean yourself up, because you can't go looking like that. Yeah, of course I'm going to clean myself up. So, phone us a taxi, will you? As quick as they can. OK. And then we're going to have a really great holiday. Yeah, a really great start. I know that. Yeah, so that's what we're saying. <laughs> Well, it's got to be that way, hasn't it? Jack, Connie, I'm so sorry. Now to be sorry about, come and sit down, Bobby. You've been doing your yoga, have you? Yeah, and I've just completely lost track of time. What do you want to drink? Um, orange juice and lemonade, ha. So, you're all set to go. That's as I'll ever be, huh? I've told him he must bring all his memories with him because you don't want him cluttering up the place. <laughs> <laughs> orange and lemonade when you're ready, please. Hey, Ty, have I got this drink? Jack's off the pastures, isn't you? Yeah, going to live in Middleton. Oh, what is her in Middleton? Another woman. Ain't that right? She's sat there, right next to him. Yeah, but it's not how you're making it sound. They're just friends. Yeah, of course they are. Yeah. Best kind of friends I have. 
widow with a bit of money behind her. So it's Jack, as in jackpots. <laughs> <laughs> Give up, will you? I've told you it's not like that. Come on, don't be so soft. It's, it's always like that. that. You get shut of one wife and you're always on the lookout for another. Keep you warm on winter nights. Yeah, well, this time it's not, so just watch what you're saying, right? HP, please, and ignore these two. Get a clue what they're on about. So, we won't be seeing you anymore. Of course you will. They keep trying to tell folk. As long as he's selling ale in here, I'll keep coming in supping it. He's got his bus pass, so it won't cost him a penny. <laughs> oh, well, I'm very glad to hear that. Uh, no, you two must come and visit us. We must make arrangements. Well, that'd be nice. Yeah. And we would. Wouldn't we, Emily? We certainly would. <laughs> Only not today. We're going to Emily's for a cup of tea. Right. We'll be seeing you. Ta ra. Ta ra. There. Thanks. Me and Harvey used to run this place, you know. Yeah, you said. And it's all the more reason to keep coming back then. Hard to imagine. Like different people. Thinking about all last whatever. Ah, now, you and Becky are going away next week. I know we are. But what I don't know is, have you got cover for the pair of you? Otherwise, it's me that's going to be struggling. Well, I will do. I will. But when? So, all I need now is a job. Oh, how many times have I said that? Oh, come work for me. No, no, I don't want to work for you. Why don't you? Because it means we'd be together all day, every day. I thought that's what you wanted. Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe it's not such a clever idea. She could be teacher or a lollipop lady. Yeah? Which one would you recommend? Lollipop lady, because then everybody likes you. Steve! Yeah, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm OK, thanks. Steve. Um, well, seeing as you're back... Mac, I was just wondering whether you fancy doing a couple of weeks behind the bar, just while me and Becky are away. Um, do you mind if I get back to you? Only if the answer's going to be yes. All right, see ya. Do I want to work behind the bar at the Rovers for two weeks? And do you? Not really. Lollipop well, lady's better. Probably is, mate. Do you know what today has made me think? No, what? That I'm being silly, working behind that counter when I don't have to. Oh. What else would you do? Retire, like everybody my age has done years ago. Oh, you'll think differently tomorrow. No, I won't. Why would I? Because you're still upset after the funeral and you don't know what you're saying. I know exactly what I'm saying. I'm saying that I am fed up working and I'm going to retire. Uh, if you'll excuse me, I think I'll, I'll just have a, a lie down. Are you all right, love? I, I, I will be, yes. Oh, do you know, I think today's been really hard for her, don't you? She thought a lot of your brother. Oh, I mean, maybe she did, but she, she can't carry on like this. I mean, life goes on. Well, of course it does. She just needs a bit more time, that's all. Mm, well, she can have the rest of today, and that should be enough for anybody. Right. I'm not going to regret this, am I? You stop it. No, you and me and... Of course you're not. Don't even think that. Peter, I can't help think it. I mean, we have been here before, haven't we? Yeah, but I'm a lot older and a lot, lot wiser. <laughs> Look, Leanne, I swear that I'm going to make this work. It's not just for your sake, but for Simon's as well. And? I'm mine. Yes, I'm mine, without question. Whatever it takes. Oh. Do you think somebody's trying to tell us something? <laughs> You promised we could go down to the Red Rat to play football. Yeah, and your dad always keeps his promises. Yes, I do. And you're going to find out. Well, I hope so. So, are you going to let me play football with you then? Yeah, of course you can, can't you? Hey, I think we're going to have to uh, teach you a thing or two, though, don't you? <laughs> you're going to have to change your shoes, though. Oh, right. Would trainers be all right? Be yeah, OK. All right, two minutes. Hey, thanks for this. I know you don't play a lot of football. Ah, oh, just you wait till you see me Fred de Flintoff body swerve. Freddy Flintoff's a cricketer. Is he? 
Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh. <laughs> oh, and he's slick. Oh, slick. <laughs> Where's the, um, Vera? Oh, she's in the bag. She's coming with us. All oh, right, yeah. Right, I've had a good look round. Apart from a toothbrush, I think we've shifted the lot. The house is yours. Well, we won't be celebrating that. All right, come on, let's go. Well, if you've forgotten anything, you're going to be coming back here often enough anyway. Well, I, I... Will you stop looking at me like that? Like what? You know what? You're right with that, Obi. All right. Yeah. Right, be good to you two. Hey, no wild parties. <laughs> we don't do wild parties. Never mind us. Have a nice time. Oh, we will. Oh, we will. And I'll give you a ring when we get there. I'm getting in. Kev's off on his holiday then. Okay, Kev. Well, listen, you two, I'd just like to thank you for putting up with me. Come on. No, 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 no. Come on. When Alvira passed away, I was in a bit of a mess, and I don't think I'd have got through it only for you two, you know. But now, you've got to look after each other. You hear me? Of course we will. You and all. Yeah. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Bye, Jack. Aye, bye, bye. For now. Bye for now. Aye. For now, yeah. Bye. Minding me being late, apart from you. Like you mind everything I do. What are you saying that for? Because it's true. You're watching me and finding fault all the time. You said you was gonna be here and you weren't. So? So where was I? What are you saying? Come on. Jack's not here now, so come right out with it. What exactly am I being accused of? Just making everything miserable all the time. Oh, right. Is that what I'm doing? So you won't mind if I go and clean out Jack's room, then? And I'm sick of being blamed for everything and all. So either you start making an effort, or Jack won't be the only one leaving. There it is. I swear I'll find I've left my head down here one morning. Anyway, by Norris. I, I, I've put some toast under. Uh, I'm, I want to catch the quarter past. The quarter past eight? You don't start till ten. Oh, there'll be things to do. No point in hanging around here. Well, except I've put some toast under. Oh, well, you'll have to eat it. I, I, I've got work. We need to get things back to normal. Well, what's normal about me eating four slices of toast for my breakfast? Emily! Hi, Emily. Oh, morning. Um, how was the funeral? Um, what Ramsay would have chosen, thank you. And the service? I'm, I'm in a bit of a, a hurry, Sophie. I'm sorry. Molly. Offered them now? No, I didn't say that. Come and have some breakfast. You've not said two words to me. I did. I shouted goodbye. I did. Well, that's one word. Thing. <laughs> goodbye, Tyrone. I'm going to work. Five minutes. O or dinner. Let me cook you some Well, the last time you did that, you cremated the lasagna. It was moussaka. I couldn't tell. I hate us falling out. And I know I overreacted when Jack left, but I was upset. It's fine. I was late. You was angry. Let's just forget it, eh? Yeah, but we've got the house to ourselves now, haven't we? Let's enjoy it. Let's do stuff that we couldn't do when Jack was here. Like what? Like, let me cut you dinner. Please, Mo. Come on. Don't you want us talking again? Fine, yeah. Fine. See you later. Hiya! Oh, can't see any bruises. Eh? Hey? Well, how did you take it, Chesney? About you getting married next week. Oh, you have told him. I, he was only in the house like ten minutes all weekend, apart from when he was asleep. Honestly, I want to tell him I do. I'm Kirk. 
be a relief. This wedding's stressy enough. I'm going to tell him at tea time. <clears throat> Cake. Put the kettle on there. Billy, 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 your name. Which race? Race against time. I need to know the odds for the standing barmaid running in the two-week holiday cover at the Rover's Return. You're quite irritating when you're in a good mood, aren't you? I've told you, I will think about it. It's only for a couple of weeks. Yeah, then what if I miss out on something better in that couple of weeks? Well, I didn't know it was a cue. Oi, you'd be glad she's thinking about it. She's got way too much experience to be barmaid in. Well, I need to know by the end of today. All right. Biddy, 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 biddy. I'm going to have to ring around some restaurants, see if we can get a better offer. Come on, work for me. A better offer? I'll make all the tea. Yeah, but you'd still be my boss. We'd last two minutes. I wouldn't be bossy. You would? I wouldn't. Well, argumentative, then. No way. You would? I flipping would. <laughs> right, I'll go and get some milk for your tea, my lady. I wouldn't. You don't have your key, do you? Mine must be indoors. But, but, but why, why have you come back? Oh, oh, thank you. Are you, are you ill? No, don't fuss, please. No, shall, shall I call a doctor? I, I'm not ill and fine. It's back to normal, you said. Everything needs to get back to normal. I, I'm, I may go back. This afternoon. Yes, do, because I think you're better working. Uh, look, I, I'll tell you what, I'll organise a taxi to pick you up after lunch. No, don't. No, no I, I, I don't mind. Morris, don't to... please, let me be. Multitasking. Um, well, someone's dropped a jar of piccalilli. Oh, shall I go back and get me wellies? Just don't slip on the wet floor. The Anne will never forgive me if you crack your head open. Kevin, you're supposed to be enjoying yourself, not phoning me. Um, well, I've got a customer. Yeah, yeah, if you can get away. A hot stone massage, is she? Um, yeah, I miss you too. Okay, bye. Um, not working today, Rita. Gone for a lie down. She looked shattered. Bet she can't wait to retire. Oh, she's not retiring, surely. No, you can't have this place without Rita. Oh, hey, Norris, Norris, is this right? Rita's thinking of retiring. Well, she's having a practice today, isn't she? There is such a thing as reasonable notice, you know, past, past, past. She's not gone yet. She was flagging, that's all. She'll be fine after a kip. <laughs> and what's the cause of this flagging and talk of retirement as if he didn't know? Past. Hey, look, you do appreciate. We can be sued for selling stock beyond its use-by date. Who mixed the new ones with the old? Now, don't look at me. They, they want to start a club, Rita and Emily. Oh, in date. Hallelujah. Mm. You'll pay for that, lady. Yeah, so what club's this, then, that Rita and Emily want to start? Club Mope. I mean, the both of them determined to stretch this Ramsey saga out for as long as possible. Oh, Norris, honestly. So what if they want to do a bit of moping? There's no crime in it. You know, you should just leave them be. Oh, leave me be. Club Mope's motto, Livicus et Boehm. Oh. He's starting to do my head in. Two bikinis, a pair of shorts, my battery fan. Once they're on playing one tassels, my tracky bottoms in case it gets cold of an evening, which you better flame me not do or I'm going to sue them. Um, and two bikinis, a pair of shorts, battery You fan. won it, didn't you, this honeymoon? Yeah. Where is it again? Spetses. Spexies. Yeah. Spetses. Sounds made up. Well, it's not. Roy found it in his atlas. So it was a proper competition, like? Yes! I'm just checking, it's not one of these scams. Well, there were photos and everything. And no asterisks. Happened to a mate of mine, won this competition, lovely glossy brochure, fantastic photographs of this island, some obscure name, not Spetses, but let's say Spetses. 
Asterix at the top right hand corner, you turn the page, small print, photographs bear no relation to the competition, ends up with a fortnight in Milton Keynes, Spectus Hotel. What do you say on the tickets? A reps meeting us at the airport. You've not seen the tickets. Oh! Pam! We're not wasting precious shopping time on the weather field wayfair, right? Huh? Well, it's only a recce, right? I don't want to rush buying this dress. Sexy, but understated. Oh. You don't want to drive John Wilde and have him dragged off to a padded cell. <laughs> Sorry, insensitive. Fizz, I'm getting chips. Do you want some? No, ta. Can you lend us a couple of quid then? Oh. Oh, Kirk! I'll pay you back. <gasps> Right. What's the rush? I'm shopping. For my wedding dress. Yeah? So what's the rush? You're going to find out anyway. I'm marrying him next week. In prison. But I want to tell Chesney myself, OK? Now, I thought you might like a spot of lunch with me. Uh, oh, thank you. Actually... Norris said you weren't quite yourself. I bet that wasn't quite what he said. I imagine he was being very rude, but I can hardly blame him. Oh, God! Blaming Norris is one of the few pleasures we get in life, <laughs> I suppose. But I had promised him, uh, well, I told him at least, that things needed to return to normal. Yeah, well, they will. Oh, dearie me, Emily, you've only just buried Ramsay on Friday. He was very important to you. You shouldn't expect too much of yourself. Well, I, I'm, I, I didn't sleep, not a wink. I'd, I'd been up and dressed since five. It's, um, it's why I went off to work so early. I'll, um, I'll make us some... Your tea. Can you see asterisk? I don't asterisk for. I don't! Well, I reckon this might be a scam. But what was he said? His mate ended up at Milton Keynes. Right, staff rota. Who's covering? I need a name. Uh, uh Liam. She's agreed, has she? Well, she will. Uh, put it in. What exactly has she said? Well, she's only just got back, so she'll not find anything else this quick. But is she looking for something else? Trust me. Not until I've seen the whites of her eyes. <gasps> Asterisk! Well, yeah. That's a dead midge. No. Look, come on, we'll ring the company. If Spetses has got anything to do with Milton Keynes, I'll eat that brochure. Come on. A sleepless night can feel a very long time. What were you thinking about? Oh, silly, selfish things. That what? Oh, <laughs> no. I'm ashamed of myself. Oh, well, look, I've had plenty of shameful thoughts in the night, Emily. Uh, mostly involving a young Engelbert Humperdinker. <laughs> no, I wanted to think about the good things that have come out of all this. There were some very nice things said at the funeral. Oh, were the good. I'm glad. And and Ramsay must have felt that he'd done everything he could to make his peace. And as Rita said to me, he'd found friendship, comfort. Yeah, well, that's what you wanted to think about, isn't it? I mean, what did you really think about that's made you come down so hard on yourself? Well, you know that I believe in an afterlife. It, it's something I've always felt very strongly. Of course you do, love her. Ernest, mother and father, my dear brother, and, and some good friends. Mm, yeah, never gets easier, does it? And now, Ramsay, he's there too. It's not as if I don't have a good life. I, I, I do. But you've been feeling you'd like to be with them. They just got the easier job, didn't they? 
ones who've gone before. It's us who have to keep picking ourselves up. And you will. Oh, I felt like a petulant child, a spoilt, petulant child, because all I had going around in my head was... It's not fair. Something that smells, um, Chinese. Yeah, but it's all in service. What are you doing? Well, stuff that we couldn't do when Jack was here. Jack, come back, please. All is forgiven. <laughs> is that a tattoo? Oh, no, I sat on one of Jack's racing times when I was waiting for you. <laughs> what are you like? Glass of something sparkling, madame. Well, it depends where it comes from. Hey! <laughs> oh. Nice to see you laughing again, Mal. Here we go. To our house. Just us. Just us. Oh! Blame it. You said you'd get him out in your brakes, they'd be dry for dinner time. They're soaking. I'm saying I forgot my kit. I'm not wearing my old ones. I'm not. I'll take the tension. I don't care, Fizz. You should have thought of that before. You never think of anybody else. You okay? She does, mate. I'll make you a butty, mate. I can't believe she told you on the phone. But for what it's worth, I'm annoyed and all. They should wait till he gets out of prison. Wait. Will you choose to get married in Nick? Is that in a couple of months? When's she getting married? Hey? When? While he's still in prison? Kirk? Isn't that what you and Fizz were arguing about? Oh, the stupid cow. Fizz! Where is she? Chess. Where's Fizz? Dinner break. Oh, excuse me. Where's Fizz? Not here. Sorry. How about I tell her you're asking? Uh, how about you apologise for shoving me? Shut up, you stupid cow. I want you back to the bus stop. Uh, Luke, are you going to let him talk to me like that? Apologise now, you little shrimp. Oh, what? You're going to beat me to death with your makeup brush? Come on, mate. You can see she's not here. Mate? <laughs> Get lost. Make him apologise now. He's upset about something. Oh, so that makes it all right? I'm sorry about that. No, I'm done. I want someone I can rely on for two weeks. Me in the Rovers. Don't worry, Steve and Becky will be off on honeymoon. He's convinced he can talk Leanne into doing it, but I'm not going to hang around while she decides if we're good enough for her. Not that it's about Leanne. I mean, you liked working at the Rovers, didn't you? Oh, yeah, I loved it. Right, well, will you drop in, have a look at the rotor? OK, I will. <laughs> nice big smile. That for me, is it? Actually, it's for Liz McDonald. Your taste in women isn't as good as your taste in men. I don't know. When the right light catches her. Or when she's offering me work. Are the rovers? Yep. I'm going to be serving my ex's punters in my ex's pub while my ex is as far away as possible on his jellies. Ha! He'll be furious. See you there. You will. Yeah, all right. I hope you've got something on under those overalls. <laughs> of course I have. Listen, there is nothing sexy about getting under a Volvo commando. Right, what can I get you? No. So what have you come in for? It's a good laugh, wasn't it? Dinner. Yeah, have you come in to tell me that? No, just to say that I love you. That's all. Did you not hear me shouting? Only dogs and dolphins can hear you, Rosie. Oh, well, I was saying getting a bottle of wine for tonight. What's tonight? Do we need a reason to have wine with that tea? I can't do tea tonight. Oh, why not? Um, darts night. Uh, Lloyd, uh, the Webby Arms. Darts? Don't dish the arrows, Rosie. Lloydie, she's trying to dish the arrows. Don't dish the arrows, Rosie. Look, it's good for us to 
Do things separate sometimes. It keeps the relationship healthy. Yeah, sure. Well, I'll just go and see my mates then. Great. You can still get me a bottle of wine, though. Pinot Noir, please. That was sneaky. You and um, Tyrone never like to sometimes do things separately. So? So that doesn't mean you don't care about him, does it? You all right? Yeah, fine. They're a pound. Keep him at mine. I shouldn't have bought them, though, should I? It's going to be hard enough trying to find a dress without having to match it with shoes. We will find the right dress. And if they don't go, we'll change them. Calm down. Oh, oh aren't you excited? Yeah. I'm, I'm just... I'm going to feel better once I've squared it. Oh, Hiya! Sorry about your games, kit, Chess. What'd you get? Oh, they're mine! Oh, yeah, don't be rude! What size feet have you got? When's the wedding? Chess. Chess You're marrying him in prison, aren't you? Uh, I, um... When? Please. Chesney, I was going to tell you. Honestly, come on. Where's, uh, where's Norris? I've chloroformed him. He's uh, tied up in the back with an empty crisp box on his head. <laughs> oh, oh, um, Norris. I've come to say I'm sorry for snapping at you. No, oh, did you? I didn't notice. Aren't you going to apologise and all? For what? It wasn't Emily who had her head bitten off, was it? Oh, it's been like this all day. All right, fine. I'm sorry if I was a little... Harsh. Selfish. Optimistic in thinking Ramsay wouldn't hover over us indefinitely. Is that what you call an apology? I think a good night's sleep will make all the difference. To me, anyway. Mm. I'll get it. I'll get it. I think that's the best you're going to get, Emily. Tell him I've clocked off, eh? Yeah. Yes? Yes? This is Mr. Cole. Who? Well, what's that got to do with me? Staff drink. Oh, perks of the job already. Not a light one, huh? Do you want to wear? Oh, I'll get it. What's that? Told you we were short staffed. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the bar. Oh, gosh. And what do these things do? Uh, Mum. What? I'm just showing the new girl round. Yeah, but I said I'd sort of cover. Think you're a bit late, love. Hmm. Well, not according to the rota, love. <laughs> Sorry, whose pub is it again? Uh, staffing is the manager's decision, especially as the owner's swanning off on holiday. Uh, swan... Pot kettle? Steve. Hey, perhaps could both work here. I'm not working with her. Right then. Decision made. <laughs> uh, would you like to see the cell? Yeah. Why don't you lock her in it? Well, if you won't tell me who was on the phone, I can't help, can I? I mean, what would I want with it? With what? At least tell me who it was. Oh, Ramsey. Ramsey. And his solicitor, everything he had is coming to me. Oh. I, I don't want his money and I don't want this package. What package? I don't know. A package. It's on its way over right now. What exactly did the solicitor say? I've already told you. Ramsay's left me £127,000. I mean... I, I, I didn't even know he'd made a will, let alone left me all he had. I mean, why, why didn't he have anybody else to leave his money to? I mean, t t 
to get to his age and not have anybody. Oh, he had friends, <gasps> good friends, people he'd spend Christmas with. He told me about them. He had a godson. He had people. Well, then why didn't he leave his money to his godson? I'd have thought it was obvious. Even after all these years estranged, you were his family, <sighs> Norris. Now, you've had a shock. Why don't you close up here and come home? No, no, you, you, you go. I'll, I'll, I'll finish off here. I, I need time to think. All right. Uh, did you say something about a, a package? Huh? Oh, yes, yes, yes. The solicitor's having it sent round in Ramsay's effects. I know you're struggling to take all this in, Norris, but Ramsay cared very deeply for you. That's why he's left you his money, because you were his brother. How about this one? Ben, she's in her 70s. She's not going to want to be doing all them steps, is she? Well, I don't know. I've never shot for OAP holidays before. <laughs> What you doing? I'm just finding some stuff out from your bishop. He had this idea, right? Do you remember that bloke's fancy that died? What, Norris? No, not Norris. Norris is brother. What, Norris has got a brother? Honestly. If it's not in a celebrity magazine, it's just not interesting. Yes, Rosette, Norris had a brother, right, that died. But he used to live in Australia, so I thought it'd be nice if Emily wanted to take a trip out there. Why? Well, I don't know why. But it's just a nice thing to do, isn't it? Being a good neighbour. What, because Jesus would? No, because I like Emily, right? She's the only one around here who understands me. Oh, yeah, you and Emily Bishop, best mates. You, saddo. Just excuse my sister. Just because her boyfriend don't want to see her tonight. Yeah, for your information, he just want to see me. He's just arranged to go out with his mate, Lloyd. So, this Emily hasn't said she wanted to go to Australia? No. Well, I've seen your people tours, didn't I? You know, I think you should put yourself in one. You could go with her. You could spend a few weeks with a rug around your lap, talking about God and fishing scarves. <laughs> Just so you know, <laughs> I'm praying for you. We both are. Aren't we, Ben? Yeah. You two just aren't normal. What have you got in here? Oh, so you want me to go on honeymoon with notes to wear, do you? I didn't say that. Good. Because packing clothes into a suitcase is something I can do. Something I can be in charge of. Look, I know my mum's out of order for taking Michelle on. She's done it out of spite. She is the licensee. She's the one with the business head. She's the one with the other made up head and that tatty weave. They both are her and Michelle. They're like a couple of pussycat trolls. Anyway, she's done it now. She's ruined me on the moon, just like she set out. No matter how many margaritas I neck, no matter how white my white bits get, that's it. All I'm going to have in my hand is this picture of them two laughing at me behind my back. Hurry up, love, and get rest of the suitcases. I want to do one before Madam makes an appearance. Yes, dear. I don't want anything that's too traditional. No train or a veil. I'd look stupid. You'd look lovely. Julie's got a really good eye for fashion, so um, she's going to help me. <laughs> I can't believe it's actually happening. Six months ago, my life was rock bottom. Now I'm catching stardust. <laughs> that's what my Annie Joyce used to say. If you got a right spring in your step, you'd be catching stardust next. <laughs> Listen to the rubbish I'm spouting. That's been locked up for you. It's sweet. I never really thought I'd ever get married. Let alone in a prison. You're glad you are, though, aren't you? Of course. And Chesney, he's glad too. Yeah, of course he is. Can't wait to see him on Monday. <laughs> well, the thing is, he's not going to be able to come to the wedding because he's got a school, see? Yeah, well, they'll understand. His sister's getting married. I know, but he's missed that much already. I don't want him to miss any more. It'll be all right. Just ring up and talk to the head. They'll give him the time off. It's an important year for him. <laughs> it's just one day. 
Anyway, he'd be one of the lucky ones. They let him out after the service. Sorry. I shouldn't joke about being in here. But seriously, don't worry about the school. They'll understand. This is the company, and um, basically they, they fly you out, and there's coaches that take you all around Australia, you know, so you get to see everything. Wow. That's very thoughtful of you. And, um, well, I thought Rita might want to come, you know, if you fancied it. I certainly looked through it. Uh, and I must say, I, I'm very pleased to meet you, Ben. Sophie's told me a great deal about you. Well, you've got a very nice house. It reminds me of a grand. She's got a piano, too. Do you play? Me? No, no. No, Ben swims. He's really good. Go on, ask her. Shut up. She wants to ask you something, but she's too embarrassed. You know, I wish I'd not told you now. <laughs> ask away. I don't bite. Do you want me to get that? Oh, please. Well, you know, like I was um, thinking of getting baptised. Yes. Well, um, if I do, they want us to have someone to stand up and talk about us, um, a Christian that's known us a while, and um, well, you've known me since I was born. You'd like me to talk at your baptism? Yeah. Oh, Sophie, I'd be honoured. And I'm sorry, it's just, um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm very flattered and thank you for asking me. You've had a delivery. The man just left it in the other room. Oh, what is it? I'm not sure. Oh. What's that? You admire my action? Nothing to my ear. Been complimented on it. <laughs> Not by anyone on the same darts team as you, that's for sure. I'm a very good darts player, I'll have you know. <clears throat> right, pick a number from 3 to 180. 64. Right. <clears throat> How would you learn to play like that? Two brothers and a life spent on tour with bands. You don't actually need a lot of work, though. You'll have to give me some tips. Oh, will I? Yeah. When's your break? A couple of hours, but um, if I'm going to give you the benefit of my experience, I shall expect something in return. Oh, yeah? Like what? Mm, well, white wine and a packet of ready salt, it should do for starters. I thought you were going to let the arms avoid. He got caught up, so uh, we put it off till next week. Oh, right. Well, you can buy me a drink then. I'll buy a current cranberry, please, Michelle. Coming right up. Guess where Steve and Becky are? I have no idea. Airport. Four hours before the flight leaves. <laughs> what, are they playing it safe or what? No. She's sulking because I've taken you one. She's taking offence, so. I don't get to say goodbye to my own son. Fine way to start a marriage, this is. <laughs> Norris, what are you doing? I'm missing a box of white envelopes with windows. I mean, it's been ticked off in the book, but I can't find them anywhere. Oh, well, won't it keep till tomorrow? No, no, I've got to find these envelopes. I, I'll never sleep. And, and, and then, then there's all this. I mean, it's been way, way too long since we did a really thorough stock take. Oh, and Norris, I, I think you should come home. Your package has arrived from Ramsey's solicitors. It's a trunk. What sort of trunk? A large one. Norris, please leave all that and come home. No, no, no. I, I, you, you go. I'll, 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 I'll finish off up here. Yeah, but the trunk... Don't care about the trunk. What I care about is this business. I'm stock-taking, and I will find those envelopes, because that is what I do. See, that, 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 that's my job, because I, I still have a job. I'm, I, I, I'm not the one that died. Uh, I don't think I could. It's just a few words. 
I'm not that good with words. I'm not you. Well, no one's going to be judging them, are they? That's the thing with vows. You can say whatever you want, as long as it comes from the heart. Oh, now I'm worried. Yours are going to be amazing. Just try. If that's what you want. OK. <laughs> now, listen. What you said about Chesney... What about him? About him not coming to the wedding. Because you don't want him to come. Why wouldn't I want him to come? I've told you, he's really happy for us. Yeah, I know. But it's this place, isn't it? You don't want him to come to the prison, do you? Well, yeah. Actually, yeah. I don't want him here. You do understand, don't you? Yeah, of course I do. It just shows how caring you are. I'm glad you understand. But it'll be OK. I've already talked it all through with the chaplain. Chesney won't see anything of the prison. They take him straight through to the chapel and the governor will make certain that everybody will put him at his ease. Oh. Because, like I said to the governor, I couldn't go through with the wedding unless Chesney was here. It wouldn't be right. We're going to be a family. The three of us. <laughs> They just assume I would. Well, that's parents for you. She doesn't even need babysitting. So I'll be able to come to yours tonight. Best not to. Oh, she'll be fine. She won't even know I'm not there. Th the thing is that I've got this um, Sinclair paperwork thing to do and I've got to be in Leeds first thing in the morning. Well, I can help you with your paperwork. I can get you a fairly. I'll tell you what. Why don't I walk you home? Is that it? <laughs> Anyone would think you won't want to be with me. You know I do, it's just... not tonight, eh? They're very romantic, aren't they? Trunks. Make you think of a ocean liners and women with hat boxes. My father used to have one with stickers on it from his travels with the Indian Army. We kept bed linen in it. I wonder what Ramsay kept in his. You'll have to wonder, cos I'm not opening it. Well, there's no rush. What does that say on the front? Front of the lid there, look. See, what does that say? Hmm. RLC, his initials. Exactly. And what does the L stand for? Cos I'll tell you now, I don't know. And why? Because I hardly knew him. So why has he left me everything he had? I don't want it, I don't need it. Leonard. His middle name was Leonard. His birthday was March the 16th. He was a big fan of the Beatles. And he left it all to you because he loved you. So stop nudging him away. Just go and... Rinse those plates. Should have left it all to you. Safe start with the God Squad. Well, at least you'll have her out of your hair for a bit then, won't you? Don't I get a kiss goodnight? I'll see you in the morning. No, I'm not letting you get. Not yet. <laughs> Aren't you coming? <laughs> Hiya. Hi. Good visit. Oh, great, yeah. An hour with a table between us and six sets of eyes watching our every move. Oh. Fizz, I I've got something to tell you. Let me guess. It was you who told Chesney about me marrying John on Monday. I thought he knew. He was in a right shop with you and I thought he found out. I knew I shouldn't have told you. He needed to know. Yeah, and I was going to tell him, Kirk, in my own time. 
Why couldn't you keep your nose out of it? Why'd you have to get involved in my life? Get one of your own. That's not fair. And you know something, Kirk? Life's not fair. Look at me. This is meant to be the happiest time in my life. But I'm lying to people, I'm deceiving John, I'm upsetting Chez, I'm shouting at you. It's just all wrong. I've got John banging on about how we're going to be all one big happy family. Why can't anything ever go right for me? Can I do anything to help? Just leave me alone. All he wanted was to reach out and Norris kept knocking him back and now he's dead and he, he still wants to reach out and Norris... Oh, he's behaving like a stubborn old fool. Uh, it's obviously causing him a lot of pain. You always see the good in everyone, don't you? But you're right. It's certainly affecting him and it's certainly affecting you. Sophie asked me to speak at her baptism and I almost burst into tears. It was as if she was saying she valued me. Oh, Emily, lots of people value you, especially me and Norris and Ramsey. He valued you very dearly. Cheers, love. Thanks. <clears throat> Incoming at three o'clock. Hiya. Thought you'd left. Yeah, well, I'm back now. Have you touched her in bed and read her a story? Sorry, none of my business. Yeah, well, it won't be any of mine soon. Is that so? Definitely. I guess I missed your break. Well, actually, I never took it, so, um, if you wanted to get me that drink. Don't forget they're already salted. Rose? What? What's it like to be in love? I don't know. So you don't love Luke? You just have sex with him? What, is this leading up for you to tell me that I'm going to go to hell? No. I just want to know how it feels. You know, how do you feel when you're in love? Uh. Well, I don't know. I suppose you just want to be with him all the time. And you know how he used to shoot loads of gum? Well, I don't anymore because Luke said he didn't like it. And that's because I love him. So you're going to marry him? I don't know. I mean, I'd like to. Because he's gorgeous, isn't he? Yeah, but he's old. <laughs> yeah, well, age gaps don't matter. I mean, look at Demi Moore and Ashton Kutcher. Age gaps are in. Yeah, but you're not with him for the age gap, are you? Of course not. I mean, I like the way he talks. He knows about stuff. He's been places. He's really funny. He's great. Well, he must be to put up with you. <laughs> I think I'm falling in love with him. Are you just supposed to love Jesus? Sophie. Why are you really going to church? Is it to make Ben like you? Of course not. I just like the way it feels. You know, when I read the Bible, it makes sense. I feel like Jesus is actually speaking to me. Well, isn't it just full of rules? Like not having sex. See, that's the thing. God don't make you stick to rules. It's your own free will. It's like I could go out tomorrow and nick some it, but then how would I feel after it? Just no point in putting yourself through it. You know, I don't like it when you say that you're praying for me. Hmm, but I am. Yeah, well, I don't want you to pray for me. Yeah, but I am, and I always will. Why? Is that because you think I'm a bad person? 
No. It's because you're my sister. Ew. Look how fat she is. Oh, that is just gross. Ew. Oh, well, I've put the kettle on. I've, uh, come to a decision about the right thing to do. Oh, I am pleased. So, have you opened the trunk? No, and I'm not going to. But, but you said that I you... said I wanted to do the right thing. I've decided to give the trunk and whatever's in it to the charity shop. There's the key. You don't know what's inside it. No, and I don't want to. And furthermore, I don't want his money. Norris, I think you may still be in shock. But why won't you take a blind bit of notice of what I want? You're so wrapped up in what Ramsay wanted and his last wishes, but you obviously don't care about my wishes. I don't want his money, I don't want his old trunk, and, and I never wanted him as a brother either. So, so oh, please, just, just leave me alone. Up slamming out at who knows what o'clock. Well, I, I did you a favour, you see. I know it's your uh, day for uh, giving succour to lepers or whatever you do in that charity shop. And... I have a perfectly good alarm clock to wake me up. Yes, well, well I, I've got some junk I want to get rid of, and uh, I, I thought if you took it in now, you could have first dibs, you know, swipe all the best stuff. Yes, I take it you're referring to Ramsey's trunk. Well, he left it to you for a reason. Now stop being so petulant and open it. I shouldn't have had a pop at you, KK. There's no need to apologise for totally unfairly having an insane screaming, Benny. <laughs> Mercy God me. Deserve everything I get. Div. I was out of order. It's your marriage. Your job to tell Chess. Yeah, I know, but I didn't, did I? I know you've got pathetic whack to spout. You don't understand, Chesney. Star-crossed lovers and that, innit? But I don't want to know. You've got a front up to it sometime, mate. I'll let you know when I've got a window in my busy schedule. Do you need to say something comforting? Yeah, please do. It'll probably come out in the wash. Nice trying, no banana. I can only work with what I've got. Well, if the cloth's got holes in it, duh, don't start sewing. It's pretty obvious, really. It didn't have holes in it when I started. Material is dodgy. Scrags like Billy or ask any of them. Yeah, I will. I'll also ask why yours is always the worst. Turn it down, can't you? What, me? You've got a voice like a knife on a plate. I'll ask Julie if she can jerk the supplier's chain. That was a bit nasty, wasn't it? Anything else you don't like and want to publicly criticise me for? Yeah, sorry. I shouldn't have, sorry. You've been giving me all day? Yeah. It's not on. It's not. Um, what are you doing tonight? Why? Come round to mine. Right, today. I think the stuff we should talk about. Yeah, sound. Can you not find a tiny spark of joy in your heart for me? I know it's not management, but it's still a good job and it's a really nice place. Oh, the bar sounds great, it does. And you know that I'm glad that they like you, but when are we going to see each other? I'm here all day and you're going to be stuck in town all night. If you hadn't fallen head first into a beer barrel, you could have visited her at work. Cheers, Blanche. Thank you. A very moving and insightful summary of the addictive personality. I'm wiping away a tear, I really am. Cheers, he says. Even his thank yous are soaked in ale. And what about Simon? I mean, is he supposed to sit in a bar all night? Why not? My dad took us down the pub from that age. I'd be tap dancing for pennies. 
Still got it? I'm just going to miss you, that's all, Lee. Well, then, we'll just have to make the most of the time we have got together, won't we, eh? Be realistic, Peter. What else is she going to get? She is virtually unemployable with her shady history. I'll have 50p on the happy hooker in the 2.30. It's not a form, but it suddenly popped into my head. <laughs> I don't know why. You push it, Blanche. You can go and put that bet on somewhere else. What? If my money isn't good enough for you, then I will. Oh, my hero. I'll have a fiver on that. She can pick him, that Blanche. Right, there you go, my love. See you later. Bye, Helen. Um, sorry about this. Machine's dragging it out today. Yeah, and so are you. I mean, how long does it take to buy a bottle of poo? Um, well, I had to go and get change, and I wasn't more than a minute, so again, I'm sorry. Oh, I do hope you realise you're in an oldie-style World Heritage site. Days of your shop, when it takes, like, three and a half months to buy a packet of biscuits. <clears throat> right, thanks. <clears throat> Celebrating? Well, yeah. I've got a really thick boyfriend with a six-pack and a fat wallet. You gonna crack that open in the park on your own? <laughs> no. Me and Luke, dinner tonight. Ah. Well, I truly wish you a night to cherish for the rest of your natural born. Oh, why am I still here? Well, perhaps we should try something a bit more convenient. Cash? On the nail as always, Jan. Right, Luke's out all day. I'm in charge. Backed. Now, can you tell me what these are? Um, are they part of the Rosie Webster pre-aged knicker collection for fashion-conscious slappers? Oh, gross. <laughs> By co-workers. <laughs> More faulty goods. Pants, pants. I wonder who you made them. Let me guess. You are going to have to do so much better than this. My name is going to be one of these one day. Hmm. I do want a rep for awesome quality. You've got a rep for awesome stupidity. I mean, do you really think they're going to go with them poxy designs? Oh, why do you think you've been making samples? Draw a few frills around the backside of a stick, man, and you still have a card, yeah? I mean, they're not going to go with that tat, you big little toy. <laughs> they're just humouring you. You know, run up a few samples, keep little Miss Moneybags sweet. They're not going to produce them. <gasps> they so are. Oh, look at your muddy visage. You know, you're so gullible. <laughs> Where's that, dear? Wetting ourselves, laughing at you. <laughs> Good 
day. It's not bad. Good self. The usual. I know you joke about it, but Beverly Barclay does filch the good stuff. You could train the CCTV on her full time and she'd still manage to leave with a bag full of designer labels. Um, I'm sorry for berating you earlier. He was your brother and it's your property and it's your business. I won't badge you about it again. Emily. What is it? What's the matter? I've, um, I've been through the trunk. And there are some letters. Some terrible letters. Cheers. Do you know what a teenager is? A constant reminder to use birth control. Oh, thanks, Jan. You're a tonic. They're the worst things to have in your house. I think nature does it on purpose to help with a weaning. You just want to see the back of them, you know. Which teenager is this? Chesney. Oh, yes. What's his problem? And only Anne gave you out to pay, didn't she, when she was that age? Still does. Look at who she's hooked up with, for starters. You wouldn't get me chewing your ear off for that. Peter's been a disaster for every woman he's ever met. Oh, well, son, hand in pocket. Uh, you invited us for a drink. That's because your mother reminded me that we've never celebrated your only child's status. Why would we? What's to celebrate? All sorts. The monopoly of parental attention. No squabbling with siblings when we kick the bucket. Your very own room. You've not done too bad out of it. You owe us a drink for our lack of fertility. I have to say, as an impartial observer, it's a very persuasive argument. I, th I think he must have tracked my mother down when he was about 18. Look, that's when the letters start, and there's one every month for two years. And then, well, they, they do sort of trail off something like one every six months or so. And then he gives up. Were they all unopened? And all returned. They're so sad, Emily. I mean, he sounds like a child. No, he, he, he was a child, pleading with her, telling her all about himself, asking about her and me. And it's not as if he wanted very much, just some information, some acknowledgement. And she returned them, one by one, all unopened. No, no, I, I, I've checked. I really don't think she ever read them. They're, they're not resealed. I know what that looks like from when I was married. How could she? I mean, it's so formal. That, that's not how I remember my mother. How did Ramsay know about you? If he contacted the authorities, he might have found out about his mother, but they wouldn't have mentioned you. So? Perhaps she did write back to him, told him some of what he wanted to know. Did you search the trunk thoroughly? Not really, no. I know you love him. I do know that. Good. I've always been second to some deadbeat moron boyfriend of mum's. I know. Uncle this, uncle that. Moving in with a stranger that I had to pretend to like. Uncle Les was all right, but this is the first time. You, me, Schmeichel and Kirk. Why are you going to ruin it? Oh, this... this isn't about you. Not now, Kirk. No, it's all. It, it's about me and John. He's my man and we're going to be together forever. Listen, I am not like Mam. 
You sound like her. This is how it's going to be. Like it, I shift out. Don't compare John to one of her bunk ups. This is real and it's forever. And I'll be looking after myself again. Chesney! Now it's cold. <laughs> it certainly wasn't me that sent it back. Are you going to open it? I'm not going to be massively surprised, am I? Clearly didn't know me, did he? I'd have been hopeless at ten, throwing that as I would be now. It's the thought that counts. Yeah, but what is the thought? Thrown away, and we'll come back. Thrown away and might come back, or... Just thrown away. That's beautiful, isn't it? It is. I'd have loved this. I wouldn't have thrown it, I'd have... I'd have just marvelled at having something that came from the other side of the world. <laughs> Dear Norris, I don't know when your birthday is, but here's a present for you. I hope we'll meet soon. Get on my brothers. There's a there's a note in uh, Ramsey's wallet. <sighs> she should have stayed in Leeds. I'd have told her as much. Would you? She had a good job. Yeah, and a nice fella. Peter's family, so I can't go calling him. But she should scamper to the hills and never come back. Mm. I'm sorry I encouraged him now. He threw me out of his shop today. Speak of the devil. What's this unholy alliance for, then? Oh, let me guess. You're slagging me off. Come for a sniff of the barmaid's apron. I'm meeting Leanne. Look, can't either of you cut me any slack? I'm trying my best. I don't want for it a bloke who's trying. I want one who's succeeding. Like the blokes you've had. Hey, don't start on me. No. There's only one target here. And it's a drunken bigamist who can't open his mouth without lying. There's nothing more to be said, is there? It's all been written down by Mother. I have another son now, Norris, and a new life. You would ruin everything. Please leave me alone and never write to me again. It must have been light to get that letter. He, he was 18. He'd, he'd searched her out, all hopeful, finally found his family. It, it was different. Four unmarried mothers, then. Don't be too hard on her. I'm not worried about being too hard on her. It's Ramsay I've been too hard on. Her mother worshipped me. And now I know why. I was getting somebody else's love as well. Not the only child, after all. Break that with your head. Any particular reason? You're not going to put my designs to production, are you? Where did you hear that? Janice. Ah, Janice, yeah. Well, if we can't get hold of Sir Alan, um, sorry, uh, Lord Sugar, then we use her as a sounding board for all the major decisions. Don't choke. Is it true? I was going to tell you. When? It's just that, um... We don't think we can sell your style of design at the moment. God, I'm too precious to hear the truth. It's not the quality of the design, it's the business environment. Don't do that. It's not worth it. I'm just a joke. 
It's worth getting upset over. I've made mistakes. Uh -huh. But at least I know it, and I'm trying to change. I've got responsibilities now. You had responsibilities when you torched your flat. Yes, and I know that as well, Blanche. Oh! This is cosy. Yeah, it's cosy like a public lynching. All right, you're just in time to stick your size tens in. Is there anything you want to share with the group? Why don't we list my domestic failings while we're here? Leaves the loose seat up, chucks the tea bags out the window. And you're perfect. Now, come on. See ya. There's no arguing with that, as far as I remember. Rosie? Champagne's open. I'm going to drink it all by myself if you don't come out soon. Mmm, lovely bubbly bubbles. Come on, I do need to speak to you though, tonight preferably. Whoa. Bella Lugosi. <laughs> Did you mean to make them up like that? What is Lugosi telling for ice? Um, do you not think you're blowing this out of proportion a bit? No. I'm emotional. I'm very big. Could you imagine what I'd be like if you chucked me? So, um, what did you want to talk to me about? Oh, uh, I just said that to get you out. Cos there is something that I want to talk to you about. What do you think about me moving in? I, I think, uh, w w wow, that's <laughs> something that we really... <laughs> Brilliant. You were so not going to regret this. No, I, I didn't. Uh, everything is left there. Why, why couldn't you have shown it me before? Would you have looked at it? No, no. That letter. Carrying it with him all that time, eh? Fifty years. A little piece of poison. Oh, and here's another piece of poison. Don't do this to yourself, Norris. Well, it's true. I've been as cold as she was. It's too late. I had the chance to make it all right and I'll... What silly old fool I've been. What a fool. There's not much space in your wardrobes. You've got so many clothes. Never mind shoes and handbags. Yeah, uh, it might be a squeeze. Right, so I was thinking, maybe we should use the spare room as my dressing room. I think, um, this is a big step. Oh, stop worrying. I mean, just think about it. Me and you, waking up together every day, going to sleep together every night. And working together all week. Yeah, well, loads of couples do it. I mean, um, Carla and Tony, Madonna and Guy, Katie and Peter. All those couples have split up. Oh, yeah, that won't happen to us. Oh, yeah? How come? Because I'm dead easy going, mate. Really low maintenance. Right. Do you want a coffee? Yes, yeah, so I'll have a decaf medium roast with two sweeteners stirred anticlockwise. <laughs> I'm joking, you div. A cup of tea will be fine. Trust me. Honestly, this will be amazing. Mm. <laughs> oh. Oh, I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Emily, you've been, you've been eating this table for your breakfast. I'm in no rush. Did you sleep well? Fine, yeah. I, I, I just thought I'd take the bull by the horns and sort this stuff out for the charity shop. But... Are you going to donate everything? Oh, that's a fob watch. <laughs> now, when did you last see somebody wearing a fob watch? Mind you, it... Would look a bit silly with the clothes people wear these days. Uh, look a bit odd hanging off a hoodie. <laughs> it was a gift from his adoptive father in Australia. It meant the world to Ramsay. 
said he lost it once on a, a visit to Edinburgh. Called the hotel and all the restaurants he'd visited, the police. No joy. And then, six months later, it came through the post like magic. No note, no clue as to who'd sent it. He called it his good luck charm. His boomerang that had always come back. Have a look here. A snow globe of the Sydney Opera House. I don't think we're bothering the Antiques Roadshow with that. Well, well I suppose it, well, it might come in handy as a paperweight for invoices at the shop. Why don't I make us a nice cup of tea? How about Fizz? I haven't seen much of her this week. She's been busy. Uh -huh. I'll be here in two ticks. Hey, now that's no job for a lady. <laughs> you know, I swear the birds round here do the business on these windows more than usual. Yeah, I blame Bin's drinking. Well, you think they'd wait till they got home? <laughs> but it's Norris's day off. Tina isn't in till later, so as per, down to Muggins. Look, well, I'm really missing Amber because she was a demon with that mop. Oh, I'm sure that's the last reason for missing her. They grow up so quickly, don't they? And where does all the time go? I ask myself that same question every day, love. Come on. Oh, thank you. So, what's the plan for your birthday tomorrow, then, Faith? Hold on. I'm getting a premonition. Drinks in Rovers, followed by more drinks in Rovers, followed by someone suggesting going into town, followed by everyone else arguing about buses, taxis, etc. Then deciding not to bother, followed by more drinks in Rovers. No, I haven't really planned anything. Uh, I just did all that for you, Fizz. Come on, Fizz bomb, you got to do something. Well, it's not like she can go out for a nice romantic meal with John, is it? Kelly? Well, you know, it'd be all right if they had one of them... Conjural of rights, caravan fingers, you know, like in films. Don't come a knocking if caravans are rocking. Don't be so crass, Kelly Crabtree. You're not interested in celebrating Fizz's birthday, you're just looking for an excuse to get bladdered. Er, uh, did I say all different? Oh, have a word, Luca. Fizz is trying to swerve drinks with us for a birthday tomorrow. It's up to her. I just don't want to make a big fuss, that's all. Luke, go and check out that mad stuff I was talking about. It's like this massive pair of red lips. It'll be perfect for I thought she only bought biscuits. <laughs> well, you might as well be the first ones to know. I'm even in with Luke. <laughs> what, she's moving in? What, were you? Never mind the gossip. How about you lot getting back to doing what you paid for, eh? Yeah. Where's the baby? Oh, God, I knew I left someone on the bus. <laughs> Relax, will you? He's with Audrey at the salon. She wanted half an hour with him. Yeah, well, as long as he don't come back with a demi-wave. <laughs> uh, so what's all this here about you two going to Paris to see Tony? I, I can't do table service. I'm on my own. Well, I only want a black coffee. Well, people generally come to the counter when we're short-handed, staff-wise. Well, do you want me to... <sighs> no, no, it's fine now. One black coffee. I mean, the flat is just gorgeous. I hate the way it's been decorated. But I have some wicked ideas. Blimey, it's a big step, isn't it? Two teas, please. But if you just wait your turn, I'm on my own here. Hmm. One coffee black! I am just so made up that Luke's asked me to move in with him. Mm -hmm. The girls are just sick. People around here can be so bad jealous. <clears throat> Enjoy that. I wouldn't really miss it, could you? Did you get the feeling that was directed at you? Oh, I'm 
just off to the charity shop. Did you keep anything else from the trunk? Well, letters and photos. I mean, they're of no value to anyone else, are they? I think you may be very happy one day that you kept hold of them. Yes, well, I must miss the bus. <laughs> You know what I love most about this country? Biscuits. What a range. Hmm? Cream filling, jam filling, <laughs> chocolate chip raisins. It boggles the mind. Yeah. You know, well, uh, who needs the NHS and educational system in England's glorious mm. cultural history when you've got biscuits? <laughs> it was all over me. No doubt he was all set to dump Rosie, not move her in. Well, maybe he's just a man slut. Flirts with anything in a skirt. Mm, maybe, yeah. Deb, have you got any of them really big things and nappies? The way Liam goes through them is ridiculous. <laughs> he's a real little poop machine. <laughs> oh, nice. I'll uh, get some from the back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Biscuits? Uh, no, sir. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, Luke's made his bed so we can lie in it. Yeah, with Rosa. Wittering on day and night about Brazilians and waterproof mascara. Mm, I almost feel sorry for him. <laughs> yeah, let me get these. Hey, don't you dare! Not you buy nappies. He's my nephew. Take it, Deb. Oh. Amber. Ah, uh, you sweetheart between yourselves. Hey. <laughs> what a brilliant surprise! <laughs> what are you doing back? It's precious week, so there's no real work you unless you count boozing. You've been loving it, right? Yeah, as soon as the car starts, it'll be great. <laughs> now that's my girl. <laughs> now listen, wonderful the kettle on. You can tell me all about it. Yeah. Yeah? We should open a packet of jammy dodgers to celebrate. <laughs> Not exactly a fatted calf, but hey. <laughs> I was passing this charity shop and I saw it in the window. Oh, it's lovely. Oh, really nice. Will it need altering? No. No, not much. It fits really well. I know it's not exactly traditional, but then again, the wedding won't be either, will it? Just me and John and the registrar and a couple of guards and a finger buffet. <laughs> Listen, if you still need a maid of honour or, or just somebody to hold your hand. No, um, ta. Ta, but I am still hoping that Hayley will change her mind about that once her and Roy get back from this steam rally thingy. <laughs> Are you sure you don't want to tell Sean and Janice? I know they'd want to know. Oh, no, no. It'll be all over the factory in seconds. <sighs> they can be a bit gossipy. Julie, that is like saying Marilyn Monroe is a bit dead. <laughs> no, just with Ches still furious with me, the last thing I need is this wedding getting back to Rosie and Sally. I just want to enjoy the day. And you will. <sighs> hey, remember, love conquers all. Anyway, I need to get my skates on. I've talked to Eileen into helping me out with my annual lasagna for the homeless tonight. Oh. I'm trying to prize her away from her new plasma screen. Jason says she watched nine upstairs, downstairs in a row last night. Can't be healthy. Fizz, I need your help. Uh, oh, Kirk, I I'm due back at work. I've got a job interview this aft. Dental hygienist. Dental hygienist? I've always loved them things you put in your mouth. That's what you spit out. Oh, Kirk, no, I've really got to go. It's just... I've got quite a few fillings. Do you think that's a plus point? Uh, like, having all the fillings means I'm familiar with a dentist from a personal point of view, but not having fillings means I take care of my how teeth. How about and... we talk about it on the way to the butchers? I have to go and pick up this mint for the lasagna and the shelter specified organic. Whoever said beggars can't be choosers wants to meet this lot. Uh, oh, great. Ta, Julie. Come on. You're lucky. They're the last three. Hey, do you know, it never ceases to amaze me just how popular your hot pot is. What are you on about? Well, you know, times change, fashions come and go, but one thing remains steadfast, Betty's hot pot. Uh, she's like in the Mickey. You want the dare. Good. <laughs> My mother used to like Tom sandwiches. Uh, you don't see much of that anymore, do you? Well, I don't think it would look as appetising on the menu, do you? Betty's tongue. Uh. <laughs> I don't know what's up with Fizz. All this about her birthday. It's not like her, is it? Come on, we all know what it's about. I mean, we're supposed to be her mates. Ever since it's come out about her engagement, well, we've hardly been supportive, have we? Uh, supportive? 
She's planning on marrying a loony that kidnapped a teenager. A cow of a teenager. Mm. But a teenager also. Yes, but all we've given her is sarky remarks and nasty jokes. I mean, we could be a bit more sensitive, couldn't we? Hiya. Uh, do you reckon when John gets out, he can kidnap her again? Do you know, I don't know why I'm... Um, a pint and a... Um... White wine. You should know that by now. Oh, um, I couldn't help overhearing in the cafe about you two moving in together. Congratulations. Oh, thanks, Michelle. We're so excited. I'm just going to pop to the little girl's room. Mm. Don't miss me too much. Yeah, she is so sweet. Listen, um, it's not what it looks like. She got all upset yesterday because I'd nixed up all my designs and um, she kind of caught me off guard with this moving in lock. Mm, well, it's now to do with me, so... I'm finishing it tonight. Oh, please. I am. She's driving me mental. I just have to let her down gently. Right. Well, uh, let me know that works out for you, yeah? Long while gone. Homemade fish cakes for tea, your favourites. I, I, I went to visit Mother's grave. Uh, would you believe that there was an ice cream van parked right outside the cemetery? It's very hard to gather your thoughts to the sound of people demanding nuts on the 99s. Uh, I, I, I just wanted to run a few things through with her. Uh, silly, I know. Oh, not at all. Oh, I, 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 I meant to say... <laughs> oh, I can't take this. <gasps> well, would you rather it went to the charity shop? It clearly meant a lot to him. His good luck charm, he said, and, well, he'd have wanted you to have it. Oh, thank you, Norris. <laughs> You know, talking to Mother, it, well, it gave me some perspective. You were right, Emily. Ramsey left me that money to do something important with it. Something life-changing. And have you decided what that will be? I'm, I'm just going to change this shirt before my tea. I, I treated myself to a mivy on the way out. I'd forgotten how messy they can be. Yeah? Yeah, do you see? No. Want some? Hiya. Hiya. Oh, I've just taken Liam round to see Gail now. Oh. I think she's getting obsessed. Do you want a brew or some, eh? No, you're all right. I can't stop. I just wondered how the wedding plans are going. Oh, terrific, yeah. Um, Chesney's not speaking to me. I haven't heard from Hayley, so I don't even know if she's going to come. Well, look, Fizz, I can cancel this trip to Paris, you know. Tony would totally understand if you want me there with you. No, ta. It's too late now, anyway. Got to give the names to the prison well in advance. I know, dead romantic, eh? Well, I didn't get it, did I? Didn't get what? Did Fizz not tell you? Dental hygienist. I felt like a right, Div. I go in this room, and it's all like 16-year-old girls giggling. I think they thought I was a dentist. They're all like whispering and pointing at me. Kate, get that on my dress! Yeah, yeah, look, see? It's fine. It's no harm done. Yeah, don't get your wig wet shouting at me. I've just had a really embarrassing experience. You've had it? Will you listen to yourself? Fizz. I'm getting married next week, Kirk, in secret. Chessie's not talking to me, that's thanks to you. Do you really think it's my job to give you the ins and outs of dental hygiene? I just wanted your help. I'm not your mother. I'm not your sister. I'm not your girlfriend. I know all that. But I thought you were my mate. Oh. Oh. We've got mini chicken kievs. Oh, yeah, I bought them. Mouth shut you, we've got a guess. Again. Maybe I better go. Oh, don't you dare. That is disgusting. 
Remember when me and your dad had that big fallout? A few years back, I found Eddie had spent our entire Christmas fund on knock-off Japanese beer and dry-roasted peanuts. You were only too grateful to spend your tea times at your Auntie May's then, weren't you? Well, I had no choice, did I? It's like World War Three at home. <sighs> Look, do you want to play? Come on, I'll beat you blind, though. <sighs> you reckon? Clocked up a lot of hours on this, you know. So what's your World War Three all about then? I always said she could do whatever she wants this one and just look at her now. Yeah, up that London, eh? The glamour, the danger, the clubs, the fellas. Oh, must be fabulous. <laughs> no, I meant like going to uni. Oh, all right. Are you at uni? I mean, of course she's a uni. She's getting a top class education. Dad, really? No, but when I think of this stuff, you went through for the rest of your life, boozing in here night and after night, and a succession of lousy, sort of dead end of jobs. I've. Uh, s s s no offense, I'm sorry. Some taken. Cheers, kid. Could you be any more mortifying? I'm just going to the little boy's room. <laughs> <laughs> so, come on, while he's gone. London, I want all the goss. It's massive, it's expensive, and I don't know anyone. Yeah, all your year will be in the same boat. Well, most of them are just there to get well in and get off with each other. It's not exactly what I had in mind when I was sweating through my ear levels. Hiya! Hiya! I bought a champagne, please. It was celebrating. No. No champagne. I don't want champagne. Look. This moving in market, it's all too fast. What do you mean? You, you were that keen this morning? No, I wasn't. You were. It's not just the moving in that's too fast. It's everything. It's always you and me. What do you mean? We're, we're brilliant together. We barely know each other. And we work together all week. It's a recipe for disaster. Never mind the age gap. I'm... So, you're dumping me? Not exactly dumping, yeah? You're dumping me? Here we go. How could you do this to me? Rosie, just calm down. <laughs> do not tell me to calm down! I deposit on that big lip sofa. <gasps> it was gonna be a surprise. Listen to me. If you dare say it's not you, it's me. We'll still be mates, can't we? <laughs> You're welcome to him. See ya. <sighs> Pint, please. Sure. Oh, and uh, are you doing anything tomorrow night? Rita. Huh? Uh, have you come to check to see if I've locked up all right? Even I can't forget an alarm code that goes one, two, three, four. I'll have to change it again now. No, 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 I, I want a word. I, I, I've been doing a lot of thinking recently, you see, and... I... Norris, I have been up since five o'clock. Yeah. My feet are killing me, and there's a vodka and tonic upstairs with my name on it. So, whatever it is. The cabin. I want to buy your half of the cabin. in a minute. Were you there when they crucified my lord? Oh. Sophie, I cannot believe that you were singing that song. Yeah. I am mortified for you. It's a song we sing at church. I just can't get it out of my head, that's all. 
Uh, yeah, the <clears> reason <throat> being, you were one big loser. Thanks. Right, just a word of advice. Be as Christian as you want around here. <sighs> Bang a tambourine with Jesus rocks on it. But just do not do it outside, you freak. Hey, go into work in your gym jams. Freak back at ya. Ha ha. That's when you're wrong. I'm not going to work at all. Full stop. Oh, so now you're using punctuation as real words. Exclamation mark. <laughs> oh, breakups suck. Oh no, Sophie, really, you amaze me. Well, you haven't done nothing wrong, Rosa. I don't think. I think you should go into work. And I think you should show him what he's missing. So, why don't I make you some toast while you go and get ready? Right, lots of jam, no butter, margarine. And don't burn it! I won't. Were you there when they... <sighs> Oh, I'm sorry, Dev. I, I was miles away. Oh, well, uh, just this, please. 65, please. Mm, no, I, of all people, understand how all-consuming shop work is. And I wouldn't change a thing about it. You know, it, it, it's funny you popping by, Mr Allahan, because very soon, well, fingers crossed, but very soon we shall both be uh, shopkeepers, proprietors, owners of all we survey. Mm. I don't... Um... Well, I believe Mrs Sullivan is concurrently discussing with her solicitors selling this place, lock, stock and barrel, to me. Really? I thought she was married to this place. Well, maybe it's time for a divorce, eh? No, my, my solicitor was saying, because I was talking to him earlier, you yeah, see. Yeah, no, it's listen, I really have. Uh, uh, right, did, did I see your Amber earlier? Yeah, yeah, no, she's back from uni. was not away long. What, all of a week? <laughs> Homesick. Well, well, you know, she says she's come to pick up some stuff, but, you know, really, I think that she's, uh, she's been missing me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm leaving. Right. It's not because of our help. Right. Don't try and stop me. My mind's made up. I've been thinking about it loads. I've been really racking my brain cells and... What, both of them? <laughs> See? I've got to get away from your negative vibe. You and me, it's not healthy. And besides, after everything you said about John and that, he wants a little family, eh? And I don't want to be sat there like a wally in the corner, a spare part. I'm so sorry, Kirk. But I think it's for the best. They call it closure, the Americans. And that's what I need to get. I need to ship up and shut out. Pave the way for a bright new future for you. And for me, like. I've not got low self-esteem issues, all out. Have you been watching a lot of daytime television, Kirk? Just Judy's kind of hot since she went blonde. What's going on? Sorry, mate. But a man's got to do what a man's got to do. And I've got to do this. Do what? I'm moving out. He's lived here longer than you. It should be you moving out. I haven't done nothing! You've taken a gun and you've blown my family apart. That's what you've done. Oh, easy on the melodramas, Ches. Well, you may as well have. Just get a grip, Chesney. I'll get a grip. Right round John Stapes' throat. Oh, lovely, that. I didn't bring you up to say stuff like that. You never brought me up. I did. I tried my best. Well, your best is lousy. Oh, shut up, Chesney. Oh, I think we need to take some heat out of the situation here, so... Oh, what do you suggest? Should we have a word with Graham and the aftercare team? Ches, mate. You and me. One last brew before I go, eh? What do you say? Come on. No, I will not hold. Look, I've been on the phone to you three times this morning and I've been cut off twice. Well, I'll tell you what I want you to do. I want you to get one of your managers to ring me back and tell me how you're going to put the situation right, OK? Thank you. 
Impressive performance. Mm, just ignore me. What's less than impressive is that I've not received any rent off you this month. Well, why do you think I was just on the phone to the bank? Lady, it's really not my problem that you can't manage your finances now. Listen! None of my direct debits or standing orders have gone through and heads are gonna roll. Well, but I swear to you, you'll get your money by the end of the week. I'm sorry it can't be any sooner, Dev. Trouble at Mill. Oh, don't you start. It's the bank, they drive me mad. Mmm, feisty lady. I like it. Don't flirt with me, Luke Strong. I'm a bad lad. I'm a single bad lad now. That's true. Mind you, I won't be tonight. Oh, aye. What's going on tonight, then? I'm taking you out for a bevy. <laughs> oh, are you now? You know you want to. You know you're dying to say yes. Oh, all right, then. I'm not busy. Blimey. The enthusiasm. Hot. Yeah, well, everything about me is hot, baby. I'm not blind. I know. And you're very perceptive. <laughs> I'm dreading seeing Rosie today. What, at work? Let's not mention I'm serenading you tonight. Your choice. I haven't got to work with this droppy brat. That said, she's out to me, so you tell her what you want. See ya. See ya. Hey, look what I've got. What? I've had a letter from the Mr Gay Weatherfield people saying they want me to go in for Mr Gay UK, the final. <laughs> Prize money, five grand. Don't you be laughing? This is the biggest achievement of my life. Yeah, I know, you little saddle. And, and listen to this, look. Actually, getting with me is pretty big for you, love. Yeah, anyway. They want me to be Mr. November for their uh, calendar thing, look. <laughs> that is mint. Well, you don't mind? 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 Stuff it, we need the money. You're gonna have to be my gay boyfriend for a little bit longer. Five grand? Yeah, do you think I should get me, like, my chest wax and that? Uh, I'll do it with V later. Well, won't that hurt? Well, you know what they say, Jason, no pain, no gain. I'm dead proud of you. Should see you. <laughs> Maybe we should have a night off from all this and celebrate. Oh, yeah, right. I'm serious. Really? Mm. What do you have in mind, babe? Chris in the bath together. Tea lights in the bathroom. Bit of Tony Braxton. That's one option, yeah. The other one, we invite a few mates round and get wrecked. Uh, no, I don't really think that's a good idea. Jason, it's not every day a girl learns that a boyfriend is going to be in a gay beauty contest and possibly win five grand, is it? Yeah, well, the quicker we get this place finished, the quicker we can sell it on and make our one go. Jason, I humoured you getting splattered and turning gay for pay. All I want is a few mates round for a better. Tony Braxton? Since when have I been into Tony Braxton? Hey, here she is, our very own cut price Carmen Miranda. Having just used a cut price Carmen Rollers. Coming a ditty from Carmen Pachon. <laughs> <clears throat> or not. Are you for real? Oh, look, Rosie. Single people come in all shapes and sizes. Where the good, the bad, and the ugly? Who are you? The blow up doll. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, <gasps> you're so close I could actually impregnate you. You're right. Look, um, about last night. So, uh, what's going on between you and fake features? Michelle? Nothing. Oh, you're jealous because she's got a brain in her head and not in her bra. <laughs> Shut your face, Janice, or I'll shove your P45 somewhere painful. Now, less slagging, more sewing. I was just rummaging through these heavenly smalls. Sean. <laughs> Take care. It was nice knowing you. I thought you said this wasn't goodbye. It's not. It's our reservoir. Thanks for sharing my life with me, Chesney. It was well top. I hope John's proud of himself. Your lunch break's nearly over. Bruning Kirk's life like this. Chesney, he's moving out. He's not got a brain tumour. Don't be too hard on her, Ches. You've got to be there for her. I'm here with her. Worst luck. Don't have much say in the matter. Family should stick together. See you, Michael. Ah, Kirk! He's just been licking a frisbee him in the backyard. Take care, puppy dog. These two will look after you. 
she'll probably force feed him chocolate. Poisons dogs, that does. See, Keg! Good luck! Wherever your travels take you. It's a long and winding road out there, but I'll walk it wherever it takes me. Can I move in for a bit? Uh, Please, you're the only family I've got. Oh, look, the baby's crying. You better come in. Um, what shampoo do you use? It's yellow. Um, have you uh, ever thought of using conditioner? I look like the kind of bloke who uses products. Well, new shampoo, allegedly. Hiya. Hiya. Guess what we're having tonight? Oh, orange lemonade, please. Uh, takeaway. A party. Oh. Quick, mm -hmm. kid, what's anyone around? About eight ish. Can you bring your iPod? Never leave alone without it. Oh, Michelle, we tell you, Ryan. Oh, right. Am I not invited then? Don't oh, invite her. She's slacking everyone's hair. I just fancy a change. And you're a bit of a singer in the sly. Oh, why? Do you want someone to do a turn? No, but I bet you've been to some wild all nighters in your time. Mm. <laughs> all night? That is tame for me. Longest night out of my life lasted four days. Nice. <laughs> your defo coming then. Excellent. A bird after my own heart. Yep, well, just make sure you nail your telly down. I have a, a bit of chucking in that hotel window. <laughs> Coolio. Did you just say coolio? No, I wouldn't. I couldn't. Uh, who knows what she'll decide? I've not seen hide a hair of her all day. And, and the only thing predictable about Rita is her unpredictability. I mean, for, for such a sensible lady at a time like this, she seems to see no sense at all. Well, the good Lord and Rita herself will know what she's deciding. Just don't put pressure on her, or she might make a decision you'll live to regret. Who's keeping shop? Oh, I, I, I shut up for an hour. I mean, when, when you didn't come it's in. It's not like you. Well, uh, live and let live, that's my motto. Uh, might I buy you a drink? Uh, no, no strings attached, just... You sit down, Norris. I want to speak to you. I've come to a decision. Well, shall I leave you two? Oh, two no, 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 no. I just want to take a couple of minutes and with no secrets from you. It's yours. The cabin's yours. Oh, 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 oh. I'm selling her to you. To me? To you. To me? Oh, my good gossamer. Oh, that's wonderful news, Rita. Well, congratulations, Norris, uh, uh, both of you. I feel like I've won an Oscar. <laughs> and what will you do, Rita? I feel like I should make a speech. You see, I, I want well, to... Well, this is going to sound a tad mad. But I'm going on a cruise. A cruise? Where to? Round the world. Well, for, for how long? I don't know. There's a very nice young man at the travel agents who's working out an itinerary for me as we speak. Could be months. Oh, Rita. Lady of leisure, eh? Well, I think it's time I swam in Lake Me. I did toy with the idea of stopping here, buying a little flat. But if I learned anything from Ramsay, it's make the most of now. Tomorrow may never come. Out of bad comes good. I'm so pleased his money's going to be put to such good use. Helping you, Norris. And it was bad, yes. I, I mean, I, I, I can see that now. And if, if I could turn back the clock up... I got you a cappuccino. No. Oh, did you get the wrong one? No, it's a cappuccino. Oh, yeah. Anyway, ta. No problem. Ooh, cold frappe latte. Did I say it right? I really wouldn't know. I have to say, you've been very mature about this. I'm impressed. What about the coffees? About this. I'm impressed. Well, I'm a very impressive girl. I've got an off to, uh, so I'll have this on the go. 
Alright, don't burn your lips. <laughs> no, because you might be locking them away later. I don't think that'll be 100% fresh. I'm so sorry. Strapolati come out man made fibres. I can't believe she's done that. What is your problem? You're oh, oh, Come here, oh. grievance procedure. Her hand slipped. Oh. Yeah, right. You know what? He's a free agent. Oh, don't be too sure. Let's just look at this as a break. We'll be back before you know it. Are you all right? No, I'm soaking and I stink of flipping coffee now. She needs to slap her. I blame the parents. Where are you going? Home to get changed. And if anyone wants to stop my wages, they'll be murdered. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely want a cabin with a balcony. I don't think I could stretch to a suite. Seeing the seven wonders of the world from the comfort of your own divan. Cocktails with the captain. I can't wait. 24 hour bingo. Constant motion sickness. Uh, anyway, look, I, I think we should be getting back. Oh, stuff that. I'm going to stop here. In fact, I'd be quite happy if I never set foot in that cabin again as long as I'm alive. Well, fine. Eh? Well, well, well don't. I mean, start your holiday here and now. Don't, don't come back in ever. What about me Tina Turner Moke? Oh, I'll bring that round for you tonight. But I, I, I know there's all the paperwork to sort out, but as far as I'm concerned, that little empire is all mine. So, to read his last day. Oh. <laughs> and her big adventure. <laughs> Cheer up, you miserable git. You've got a face only longer than Celine Dion. I'm fine. Yeah, and my name's Mary Nightingale. Oh, yeah. How's you, eh? Yeah, great. I'm just back picking up some more stuff. Is everything going good? Yeah, it's all right. Great. Anyway, I just thought I'd say hi. Listen, uh, do you want to come to a party tonight? What? What? Just as friends. Oh. Oh. Uh, yeah, all right. Pick you up about seven. Cool, yeah. Cool. Whose party is it? Uh, Jason and Cena's. Oh, excellent. You're not coming. I've got to make sure that Amber one don't get a clause into you. Better blow the cobwebs off my boob tube. <laughs> Woo -hoo! Hiya. All right. So, how did it go? Yeah, fine. Is it dead hard seeing him again? No, not really. Are you joking? No. He said nice to me. He said I was mature. But I am. Well, I don't care what he thinks. He treated you. No, he's passionate. And he said headstrong. I love guys like that. You're a gorgeous, you. I know. And you could have any bloke you want. Don't worry. Oh well. Oi! It's not fancy dress, is it? What? Your party. Hey? Tonight. Uh, newsflash, you're having a party. I've been invited. <coughs> Highlight of my week, actually, sad all that I am. Hey, doll. Tina, what's going on? It's not fancy dress, is it? What? Tonight. No. Well, how many people are you invited? Hardly any. Yeah, well, we don't want the place getting trashed, do we? Oh, like, you're not grandad. I'll do all the cleaning. Uh, I'll carry these, shall I? Thank you. Mm. Oh, isn't it dead cute, Amber? I oh, know, look at his little nose. Oh, if you ever want a babysitter, Maria. Yeah, I might take you up on that, so. <laughs> I said uh, 12 90, please. You're not going to this party then? Oh, me? No, I can't be bothered. We make Shani's laugh. She's more of a party girl than me. So, how long are you back for then, Amber? Just a few days, you know. Oh. Are them shoes from London? <laughs> yeah. Oh, the dead nice, dead London, yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, maybe I can come back with you for a few days. 
I think it's best if I try and crack uni on my own, Dad. Hola. You all right? Really? Yeah. Uh, we're going to get some cans. What do you fancy? Uh, cans is great. Cool. Uh, 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 pin, please. I'm a big girl now, Dad. Yeah. Will you be even bigger if you exist on a, in a diet of cans? Rovers? On me night off? Fair enough. It's like you suggesting we go to the factory. <laughs> well, um, Tina's having a party. We could go there. Tina who? You know, she lives with Jason, the builder. Well, my staff aren't going to be there, are they? They're all doing me head in. All they do is take the mick. No, I think it's a load of kids, really. I'm not really in the mood for past the parcel. Well, what about pin the tail on the donkey? I won't mind pinning the tail on this donkey. <laughs> out with your hymn book. Are we? Right, I'll draw Keith. You! Stay with ITV2, because the next Cory is next. Have you seen the state of the furniture? Hardly by Captain Lee, is it? Uh, brown cocktail, smoky bacon, happy yourself. <laughs> Gordon Ramsay would be green. Oh, Jason, <clears throat> can we get Jenny some ashtray, please? Uh, who says she can smoke? I did. Who am I? Great turn out, I love. Oh, ta. I'm banging tunes, if I may say so. The pizza's arriving in a minute, so. Can I, yeah, uh, get another lager? Uh, do I bear lemon on it? Shand it up a bit. Yeah, well, uh, it's a party, isn't it? Well, it is quite strong, that lager, so. <laughs> Can we have another kind of wife beat up for everybody? Good night, all. Aww. He'll with my cellar, innit? <laughs> yeah. Stinks the bug out of a morning, though. <laughs> no, no. I mean, with his man spray. That must be the pizza. Uh, can you get the door? We'll fetch a Eh, Hey, Gellor and Mr. Strong. Talk about dirty dancing. Oh. You'll be lifting her up in air in a minute. <laughs> So much for remember all to get back together. Mm, is that gun in your pocket? You're just pleased to see me. It's a packet of bins, darling. Oh, I was going to say, small gun. <laughs> I carried a watermelon. <laughs> Either the pizza boy looks a double of Dave, though. Shut up, I didn't invite you. Well, why'd you let me in there? I never. David, it's all right me being here, innit? Like a veritable tsunami of water under the bridge and all that. Oh, th this is Zoe, by the way. Hi, thanks for inviting me. Hello. Who's the uh, foxy lady? Dee Platty. Dee Platty. Yeah, I was going for the uh, P. Diddy effect, but it was a bit pants, were not it? Yeah, uh, Zoe Graham Graham Zoe. Yeah. Pleasure to meet you, oh bounteous lady friend. Where did he find you? That David washed my hair today. <laughs> what, and you still think he's strange? Do you want a drink, Zoe? Um, it's all right, I'll uh, sort this little lady out. Walk this way. Hot stuff. Where have you been till this time? Oh, you know. Just went for a quick drink with some of the girls from work. No point in lying. I know you went to see him, like you did on my birthday. Any excuses and you're over there. I thought you'd forgotten. My birthday. I just chose not to celebrate it. Your prerogative. You have been to see Stape. Talking all posh like that. Well, can you blame me, Ches? He's the only person round here who's half nice to me. Well, can you blame me for not making a fuss? I bet no one has round here. No cards, no brezzies, nada. Because you're still knocking about making a show of yourself with that freak. Well, I don't care what you or anyone else thinks, because come Monday, I am going back to that prison and I am going to marry that freak. So have you met any mates? Yeah, a few. Sorry. My 
mind if I join you? Of course. Oh. Billy Noel, mate, see ya. <laughs> um, no one special, just this one girl that I met at the Freshers Bazaar. Big hair, bit of a Tory, Debbie. She's alright. We're knocking about with BMP next, saying they've got hearts of gold. I don't think so. Oh, shocking all that, isn't it? What about your Elsa residence? Yeah, they're alright. Designed by some bloke who designs prisons, so you do the math. Anyway, what have you been up to? Oh, working, you know. Well, I've been doing a lot of thinking, actually. First time for everything? Yeah, you know, thinking about going over to Spain, seeing my dad and all them, what for a bit. Your mum looks like she's having fun. Oh, that's your mum. I've done her hair. She's happy. Slicing kebabs, drinking vodka and coffee off. That's a dream and she's living it. It's nice. But you're not. I'm just going to go and talk to that wall. Where's Zoe? Toilet. She's well hornified. <laughs> you paying her? No. I can't believe he's tapped off for you. Uh, he hasn't. Not yet. Zoe, you need to get your eyes checked out. He is well. <laughs> We're just friends. Uh, I think I might try it on with the hairdresser one. You know, if your place of work is such a hotbed of a loss. Now she's well out of your league, mate. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Check this out. Hiya. Hiya. Oh, God, sorry. What? Oh, I, th I thought you were someone else. Oh. Uh, ask me who. Huh? Ask me who. Who what? Who I thought you looked like. Oh, um, who? Julia Roberts. Oh. <laughs> uh, that was a chat-up line. Oh, so you don't really think... What, look like her? You're joking, aren't you? No, no, you look more like Mrs Nash. Mrs? Year 8 form tutor, St Aaron's. Knows like a gherkin. Did you go to St. Aaron's? It's a boys' school. Could have had a sex change. Do you want to go with me? We have met before, you know. So, what'd you say? You and me? <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, I'm sorry. Did I get my expensive Frank on your second hand wig? A chicken tart! <laughs> She's trouble, eh? Jerry and Glenn on your front, innit? Oh, shut up, mate. Pop your airbags. What, are you jealous of your Friday? Calm down, you two. Yeah, I think you uh, might want your eyes testing, darling. Right, don't make me call the police for me on Kate. It's not a good look. Yeah, and you might want to call a plastic surgeon. Fred face! Oh. No! <laughs> Locked you in the attic for a week. It's probably sick of your screeching voice. Michelle. It was five weeks. Ooh, give that man a medal. Oh, that's not very nice. Yeah, well, nice one out the window the minute she dragged a clump of my hair out by the roots. Michelle, come back in. Are you all right, Rosie? I'm fine. Come on, get inside. I take it you don't want me to walk you home then. There's me chucking a pint over you, don't it? Don't think I forgot frappy Latin today. Of all the pavements in all the world. Have you let one off? Oh, no. Oh, you left that there. Where's Eddie? He's our cabin, why? All of them, he's throwing us in the hall. You want come in? Can I have some of that? Kirk always lets me drink. Come on. Watch your babes. Oh, hiya. Happy birthday, sugar tips. Oh. I brought you this. Oh, Tom. Thank you. That's really uh, kind. Uh, kiss Julie. <laughs> Are you alright? Yeah, you haven't seen Chesney on your travels, have you? Oh, no, I'm not sure as I have, no, Puppy. Oh, right. Why? Well, has he not come home? Has he disappeared? Are you destroyed with it all? No, no, it's just... We had a row and stuff and... 
Well, I've just come downstairs now and he's gone out. Oh, well, teenagers are alluring to themselves, bobbing in and out wise. <laughs> My mother never knew where I was from one moment to the next when I was his age. <sighs> and I had a troubled background. Do you want to come with me to the party, take your mind off it? <sighs> Go on. Oh, but I've got no slap on. Oh, well, that is easily remedified. <sighs> Your dressing table awaits. <laughs> oh, and I'd, um, I'd put a dress on if I was you. Uh, and maybe a couple of jazzy hair slides. <laughs> yes, Julie. Come on. <laughs> is all this noise you're doing? I'm popping to the office for more lagers. You don't fancy coming over, do you? I don't think so. <laughs> oh, Norris, uh, will you tell Rita that I might be a bit late in the morning? I um, think I'm on one. Sorry, let's be honest. I shall tell myself, as I am now sole proprietor of the cabin. You know, the big cheese, the head on show. And now I have told myself I have to say tough. No, I won't alter the rotor because you, to coin a phrase, are on one. You're in charge. Rita's left. <laughs> you don't like the grass going under your feet, do you? Don't be late. <laughs> and what are you doing? Salvaging a very nifty piece of footwear, actually. Before she means now to me. What do I always get involved with the nutters? Oh, thanks. I swear I'll be bound fly. She drew blood. Did you ever see me? You're joking, really? I'm still shaking. If you don't believe me, ask her. Can we go somewhere a bit quieter? Yeah, I've got a couch around my gap with your name on it. Yeah, that sounds nice. Let's go. Thank God for that. I'm so glad my mum didn't show me. <laughs> she had to kick off her pies. I don't know, I usually try and avoid her. Anyway, what about your dad? What about him? He's a chromosome away from being Mike Tyson. Look at my feet. Hey, look at my feet. Wardrobe malfunction. Oh, not rather messy. Get your hand off my bum, Graham. Shut up, it's cheap. Come on, let's get it open and get it out of your neck. Yeah, it's jam-packed, isn't it? Oh, it's champagne. Are we celebrating? It's Big Mom's birthday. Yay! Yeah. Oh, the champagne. Oh, she's got more money than sex. Oh, stick a smile on your face, you miserable witch. I don't suit to smile. Uh, you don't suit much, you. I need another drink. Want and need are two very different things, Janice. What? <laughs> We could turn this little do into your enemy, what do you say? Oh, um, okay. Well, let's not tell anyone, though. Hey, your secret's safe with me. <laughs> <laughs> Bride Wars or Sex in the City? Girl of the Night. You and me. What do you say? I'm not really in the mood for a rom com. Well, how about a good slasher then? Watch a load of American teenagers run around getting scared half today. Yeah, I'm going to open a bottle of wine. Happy
Never mind what I want. I'm sorry, you seem that tough for me. Oh, my dog with your homophobia. Can't even spell it, never mind, be it. What? Are you alright, Jay? Yeah, it's fine, thanks. Hey, don't talk to me, man. That's me, mate. You might have got through to the final, and you could win five grand. But I called the organisers of the competition tonight and told them you back for the other side. Have you come round here to cause trouble? He's taking a mick out of my people. Your people? Your dream's over, Jason. You won't be showing anyone up ever again. Have you been disqualified from the competition? Well, he has got a point. Oh, don't start, Sean. We need that. You'll see, I'm steering clear of I'm getting married in the morning. What was that? Like nothing. <laughs> what? I need to boogie. So, your last night of freedom ish. Yeah. Hardly freedom for John, though, is it? What? Being shackled to you? No. Being stuck in that place. Oh, you'll be out soon enough. I bet you can't wait. I don't know, it's going to be weird though. I'm used to being on my own now. Oh, you love every minute of it. I've got prizes for my disco dancing, thank you very much. Oh, father used to call me the Rams Bottom Freestyler. Oh, right, well then, let's have a dance up. Okay. What exactly do you mean? Push it like this. Woo! Hey, Woo! you should find a dance suit. We could be a female diversity. I can't bear that, Piers Morgan, can you? I'm not being racist, but people with red faces actually make me <laughs> He's vile. I hate him. He kidnapped Rosie Webster. I don't particularly like Rosie Webster, but he kept her locked up in his grandma's attic for like six months or something. He's had the behaviour of a sane person. Yeah, he was a right learner in the nick. Looks liked him though, you know. He'd write letters home from, help him read letters back. He still did what he did. He must be a glutton for punishment. I mean, all that time with Rosie Webster. She might be a fox and all that, but five minutes of her screeching would drive anyone demented. Oh, that was so funny when she got her head caught in the cat flap. <laughs> And it came up behind her. <laughs> and the look on her face. I know. <laughs> Careful. What? We're getting hammered, it's not gonna solve anything. Oh, have some communion wine and stop you whinging. Why are you so nasty? So blasphemous? God. Look, there you go again. What? I can say a lot worse than that. Yeah, when it hurts me, you know. Oh, bored. I'm going to the toilet. Pause it. Pause what? The film of my bitching. Both. <laughs> I, I fancy a male lap dancing club. Is there such a thing? I fancy Dermot O'Leary, but I'm never going to get him. <laughs> We should open one up, shouldn't we? What, do my lyrics? No! Male stripping club. Hey, I could be your first dancer. Give that Jason Grimshaw a run for his money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's lovely, Maria. <laughs> yeah, I thought it might come in handy for you on Monday. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry I can't be there. Oh, that's all right. No, it's not. It's your big day. No, I don't want to make a big fuss, so... I feel like a bit of a fraud, anyway. Why? Well, it's not like I'm walking down the aisle of Salford Cathedral in a big meringue, is it? <sighs> Doesn't matter where it is, as long as you love him. I saw this film the other day. Carousel. Old Hollywood musical. And there was this girl, Julie Jordan. She was in love with a wrong and Bill Bigelow. <laughs> he was in trouble with the police. But she sings this song. What's the use of wondering? It made me cry. Fizz. What's the use of wondering if he's good or if he's bad? Or if you like the way he wears his hat? What's the use of wondering if he's good or if he's bad? Because he's your fella, and you love him, and that's all there is to that. 
Oh, I'm sorry. You know, you haven't actually told me anything about you, mate. Well, apart from that, your halls of residence were designed by some prison architect. I hate it. Why? Because I'm dead lonely. Come here. I'm sorry. And I miss you. Well, I wish there was something I could do to make you feel better. Well, you could snub the face off me. Oi, put him down, you. We know where you've been. London. Go with me. Go with me. Oh, why, why won't you go with me? Come on. Go with me. Come here. Thought you might be chairs, that's all. Where, where's he gone? He stayed over at Anna and Eddie's last night. Oh, but he's coming to the prison with you, right? He hasn't said. There's still time. So you're set? Yeah, I think so. Nat's coming over soon to do her stuff. Oh, go for the ringlets. John likes it natural. Oh, well, John doesn't ever say. Today is about you. <laughs> you got any last words of advice? Oh. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> well, i best get going. I don't want to miss the Luke and Rosie show. Well, give me all the gruesome details later. Definitely. <laughs> oh! What am I like? Do you know, I'd forget my head if it wasn't screwed on. I put it in here to be all clandestine-like. <laughs> oh, Julie, it's gorgeous. Oh, I only wish I could be there to catch it. Me too. I never expected you and Dad to make the wedding in the first place. No, no, that's not meant as a criticism. You two have been brilliant. I know you'd be thinking about me. Mum, please don't cry. Mum, look, there's a queue forming. Yeah, I will. Um, Fizz sends a love to. I'll see you in a few weeks, yeah? Okay. Bye-bye. 
You okay, son? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. It's just suddenly hit me. I really am getting married. <laughs> you got any last words of advice? Don't end up inside again. And always remember, marriage isn't just a word, it's a sentence. Come on. You know, I've always found that a raw egg mixed with curry powder a powerful hangover cure. Thanks. But I think I'd rather kill myself. Ooh. And I thought I looked rough. <laughs> yeah, well, at least in my case, it's temporary. Ooh. Morning, princess. We're out of coffee. Not another one. Well, I didn't sleep much, all right? Uh, listen, you know, if this is your way of catching a lift to London, why don't you just... Yeah, talk... um, about that. What would you say if I didn't go back? <laughs> well, I'd say that the Allahans aren't quitters, for what's sake. My thoughts, exactly. Which is why I can't leave. I'm uh, not with you. Don't have a fit. <laughs> But me and Dee are kind of back on. Morning. You're two minutes late. I apologise. Did we or did we not discuss this? It's a total one-off. It won't happen again, Norris, I promise. I'm glad to hear it. Because I'd like us to start as we mean to go on. Whatever you say. You're the boss, Norris. So how are you going to handle little Miss Psycho, then? I'm on it, all right. Yeah, I've heard that before. Trust me, she won't know what's hit her. <laughs> hey, I can get tough when I want. Hmm, you say so. Some faith. Whatever, just don't underestimate her, all right? I know how she takes. Good, because if Rosie goes boom again, she's going to have me to deal with. Mm. See you. See ya. It was just a kiss. So it didn't mean out? No. Sorry. Don't believe you. Well, that's your prerogative. Yeah, and it's your prerogative to be a flaming doormat? That girl's already turned you over once. Which is why it won't happen again. Now, can we give it a rest, please? Hiya. Oh, look who it isn't. I know what you're going to say. Oh, I doubt that very much, love. But since my opinion's not wanted round here, he's all yours. Still gunning for me? What do you expect? Fair play. So how are you doing this morning? Good, yeah, you. Same? I thought you'd be uh, back at uni by now. Try to get a shot of me already? No, of course not. Because if you are... No, I mean, it's nice that you still here. Only nice? It's great. OK. Glad to hear it. Because you'll be seeing a lot more of me. I want us to work. <laughs> <laughs> we need some more onion. Talk about this later, eh? That's the bit. Can I help you a lot? And do one. Look, I just want to say, I feel awful about last night. I don't know what came over me. It was like someone else controlling me. And you think that excuses your behaviour? Absolutely not. Because if this is another one of your little mind games... Look, I just want to get past it. I think after everything I've done for you, I at least deserve the benefit of the doubt. So, um, you're over us. <laughs> over what? Look, can I just get you a coffee? Yeah. Cheers. Hi, Michelle. It's me. It's all sorted. No? She was as nice as pie, practically begging me for forgiveness. You didn't speak to him about today. He left the school before he had the chance. Well, that's it then. He's not coming. Hey, it's not over. 
Till it's over. That's right. The lad's confused and upset, but I'm certain deep down he wants to do the right thing. And what if this isn't the right thing? You take that back. This is no time to start doubting yourself. It's a bit hard not to when even Roy and Ailey blow you out. Now, you listen to me. End of the day, the only people that matter are you and John. Maybe we should open up later. It'll at least keep us busy. Not today. Chester's not going to change his mind. Roy, we have to go and see you. I have to pop out for an hour. You're going to be all right on your own? Yeah, sure, take time. Oh, I almost forgot. Um, some guy rang earlier. I can't remember his surname, but he was the building manager or something for Victoria Court. Anyway, they want to fix your heat or whatnot, and he needs access to the flat. So I said that you'd meet him there about one. Did he leave a number? Well, no, but he just wants somebody to be there. I can go if you want. No, you're all right, thanks. No problem. Mm. You, uh. See my other mobile? The Swan and left it here charging. Maybe Michelle took it. It's just a thought. Well, have you tried ringing it? Want me long? Take your time. Wow. I just hope they've got plenty of security laid on, cos you are going to cause a riot, girl. Thank you. Oh! oh <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Hiya. Come in. We'll be in the kitchen. Yeah. You look... You look lovely. Ta. Fizz. You're not coming. The clothes kind of gave it away. Please understand, this isn't a decision we've taken lightly. Hey, come on, I know that. We're not taking sides. It's just that... Chesney suffered so many losses in his young life. N not to say that we're suggesting that you failed him in any way. So, simply put, Hayley and I find ourselves in an impossible situation, whether it's the right course of action. How can he ever forgive us? Hey, there's nothing to forgive. Chesney needs you guys. Honestly, I'd rather be alone today than have him feel abandoned. Oh, well, then tell him that. Make him understand. It's too late. Oh, Fizz. I know you'll be thinking about I'm me. I'm so sorry. So this is it, I suppose. Wish us luck. You, you've always brought light into our lives, Fizz. And I know you'll, you'll shine today. It's time. Yeah. Oh. oh, you are flaming kidding me. I thought I told you to clean this pigsty. I haven't had the chance. Lloyd's having me driving around like a lunatic this morning. Oh, a likely story. I'm sorry, love. It won't take a sec. Where's 
the fire. I've just seen this outside. I might be seeing things. I think she's got a wedding dress on. Have you been on the Red Bull again? No, no, no. I'm serious. Come up yourselves. Well, she doesn't need a scene. should go back in the house. Oh, too late. See? Told you. Hiya. Shock and crushed feelings aside, you look stunning. I'm so sorry about this. Oh, excuse me, how come you knew about it and we didn't? She was trying to protect me. Oh, charming. Well, I didn't think you'd understand. Oh, no. What's to understand? You're only marrying a convicted kidnapper in prison. What she means is, well, you didn't even give us a chance. We are still your mates, Fizz. Well, yeah. speak for yourselves. Oh! Mm. And I thought I could be a cow. Rosie, look, I'm not doing this to hurt you. <laughs> like a cow. Wouldn't stripes be a better bet where you're going? <laughs> Leave her alone. It's okay. Let her have a say. Oh, so kind. First of all, I'm not angry. It's more like pity, I suppose. Because if he is the best you can get, then you really are damaged goods. I love him. Even better. Because when Johnny Boy flips out again, I'll be on the front row watching you suffer. Because no matter what, all you think, I didn't ask for what he did to me. But you, you're practically begging for it. I just hope for your sake that you've lost the death to his part bit. That is a terrible thing to say, Rosie. Thank you. Caught my wedding gift. Let's just go. Hey, hey, not so fast. Fizzbomb, you're crazy. <laughs> but you're my kind of crazy. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, thank you. And you will be with you in school. Oh, thanks. Come in. Be happy, Fizz. <laughs> You carry your weights, my lady. Hey, what about your bouquet? Oh, yeah, that is mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! yeah! Well, my need is greater. Remind me again why I'm doing this. Because visual stimulus is a key component of any purchase. Right. Oh, your first applicant has arrived. He's waiting in the back. Without an appointment? What can I say? The guy's keen. First impressions. But I don't know. Norris! Look no further. I'm your man. Oh. <laughs> It'll do brilliant. Look at it this way. It'll be something to tell the grandchildren. Good luck, love. <sighs> yes. It's an interesting CV. Julie helped us. It's types and everything. Yeah, yes, I can see that. There's a place in the precinct that do the layout and whatnot. They also do wills, but I'm not really there yet. You should look into it though. They're offering 25% off. Experience-wise, it's somewhat limited. Aside from doing dog stuff, I see you've worked at the butchers. Oh right? yeah, happy days. Unfortunately, I was a victim of downsizing. It hasn't put me off working with humans though. Well, that's encouraging, considering they are our primary source of income. <laughs> hey, I'm ready for any challenge, me. You name it, I'm up for it. Right. If I said the word stationary, now what would that mean to you? Stationary. Stationary. Easy peasy. Huh. Not moving. Yeah. 
You look incredible. Ta? You're not scrubbed up too badly yourself. <laughs> okay, you're embarrassing me now. <laughs> Sorry. It's just... I've been dreaming about this moment for so long. And now it's actually arrived. <laughs> Thank you. We're ready for our guests now, Officer McAllister. Okay, what am I missing? It's just you and me. The others couldn't make it. What do you mean they couldn't make it? Oh, it's a long story. Let's just get this over with. Fizz, what's going on? Nothing. But this is just about us. No one else matters. We're gonna need another minute, sir. Sit down and tell me exactly what's happened. Chesney was never coming. I don't get it. You said he was excited. I made it all up. Everything. He hates you. He hates us. I'm sorry. I just always thought he'd come round in the end. I see. I was thinking of you. I was scared how you'd react. So, these wonderful tales of loving solidarity and community support it's just the Websters and a few others. You know what people are like. Well, clearly I don't, otherwise I wouldn't have believed you in the first place. I want to know everything. This marriage begins with the truth, or not at all. So do you reckon she's bonkers then, or what? Probably. What do I know? At least you don't wonder where he is every night. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Whoa, down, Tiger. Anything you uh, feel like sharing? I'm not actually sure I should. Come on. <laughs> what is the point in having sad, lonely mates if you can't rub the pathetic noses in your love life? Fair point. Okay. Yeah. Kind of. Hard to say no to an offer like that, innit? Uh, I want a word with you. Shh. That girl of yours has only gone and got a flaming claws into my Darren again. Now listen, if you're referring to my beloved daughter Amber, I would like to warn you as your employer not to say anything that I might regret, all right? They're back on. I know. And you're not worried? No, because I have a foolproof plan to end this once and for all, yes! and the crowd, woo, they go wild! Surprise! How the hell did you get in? Shouldn't lose spare keys and take cash. I said I'd deal with this guy. There was no guy. No. Just me. Rosie. <laughs> You know when I said I was over you? I lied. It's weird. I know I probably should feel terrible, but I don't. I actually feel loved. Honestly, you're not just saying that. Everything you did, you did for me. You sacrificed almost everything for us. How are we doing? Yeah, I think we're ready now. Fizz? Fizz, these people are waiting for us. Perhaps another few minutes. Yeah. Okay, you're starting to freak me out now. Please don't be angry. Then please talk to me. I'm still lying, John. Well, I'm sorry, I thought you, you said that... You talk about sacrifice. But it weren't. It was sheer pig-headedness. You and me against the world. Well, what's wrong with that? Nothing. Except I don't want it to be just the two of us. Not today. Not ever. Once we're married, Ches will learn to accept it. But by then it'll be too late. You said our marriage has to start with the truth. You were right. 
I can't lie to myself anymore. I can't pretend I can do this without my brother. I'm sorry. But I, I just can't marry you. Say something. Like what? Say you don't hate me. Of course I don't. I love you. I just wish things were different. I really thought I could do it, you know? That somehow it'd all work out. I kept thinking any day now, Ches will realise how much you mean to me. Change his mind. He still could. If we went ahead with this, he'd never talk to me again. I can't lose him. I can't just hurt him like that. What about me? I'm sorry. Have you got a hanky? Oh, sorry. Oh. That's tight. You keep him. Something borrowed, eh? Do you know, maybe I should just go. No, please don't. Whatever you decide, whatever happens, I've still got an hour left with you. I don't want to lose that as well. Stay with me. Wait a sec. What? We can't do this. Well, we have done before. Lots of times. It's different now. Yeah, and I know that. It's just I never got a chance to say goodbye before. Well, not properly, anyway. Oh, come on. Live a little. It's your birthday. <laughs> no, it's not. That's what you think. Come on, mate, it's only 30 quid, you know I'm good for it. What do you mean I already owe you 20? Hello? Oh, I'm losing you, man. Yeah, it's really bad signal, yeah? No, I I'm, I'm going to have to... You've been at the L again? No, why? Because you look pig sick. So would you if your sister were marrying a mental case. Oh, yeah, I forgot. It's the big day, isn't it? It's what time's kick-off? Don't know. She's at the prison now. Only moon's going to be a bit of a downer, innit? Look, man, you sure about all this? All oh, what? Giving the wedding a swerve. I'm not going. I hate Stapes guts. What about your sister? I don't care about her. Yeah, I can't say I blame you. How do you mean? Well, from what I've seen, she's kind of a div. No, she's not. Oh, come on, Ches. She's marrying a bloke in prison. How sad's that? Having said that, I don't suppose she's got much choice. What? Well, she's a bit of a five-pinter, isn't she? Shut up, Gary. What did you just say? I said shut up. What, you're not going to make me, are you? I think you're big enough. Just don't talk about all like that. I thought you didn't care about her. You're not even going to give us an interview? You're, you're not what I'm looking for. Well, I've got bags of experience. No, I don't doubt that for a minute. Do you know what you need? An electric cattle prod? You need to take your head out your backside and open your eyes. Can we leave my backside out of this? You look down on the lives of people like me because you think you're something special. Well, you know what you are? You're just a morning old slaphead who works in a sweet shop. Another satisfied customer? Another job applicant. Oh, look, it's bad enough having to put up with her at the kebab the shop, but if she starts it, I... Should. I would rather douse the walls of the cabin with petrol, set them alight with myself in it, than let that woman step one foot behind my counter. Right. Fancy brew? Please, and leave the bag in. <sighs> Just answer me one question. Do you want to be with me? It's not just about that. There's other things involved, other people. I saw Rosie this morning on my way here. What did she want? It wasn't to wish us good luck. Well, I've apologised till I'm blue in the face. I've even given her money. 
Look, if I could change what had happened, I would, but I can't. It's not me you have to convince. Please, Fizz, don't throw this away. Not if you really love me. You know I do. I want to spend the rest of my life with you. Then marry me. Because whether we do this now or in ten years' time, the past is always going to be there. And we're going to have to face it one way or another. So let's do it here, today. I'm sorry to interrupt, but time is running out. I need to know what you've decided. I'm sorry. Can you let me out now, please? What is the rush? Well, I'm on my lunch hour and I am starving. Mm. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll get rid of them. You just get in the bedroom and get those off. Quick. Hi, Who was it? I just went home to get changed. But if I'd known you were going to start without me. What? What do you mean, late? Well, you text me to come over. What are you doing here? It's your idea of a joke. Wait. Because I am telling you now, Luke, I am not laughing. Wait, just let me explain. Well, I think even she can work out what's going on. Shut up, Rosie. Actually, you know what? Seeing as I'm here now, I think I'd um, I think I'd quite like to hear this one. So come on then. Who's gonna go first? Um, egg on toast, table four. Please. Lucky you didn't want it sunny side up. Sorry. No offence, but you couldn't exactly mistake it for happy hour in here. I think Anna is making a less than veiled reference to a noticeable lack of uh, joie de vivre. No, I'm referring to the fact that you both look dead miserable. There's a reason for that. Yeah, you're both thinking you should have gone to Fizzy's wedding, so... It's not that simple. I know. I know it's none of my business, Good. But... Because Table 4's egg is solidifying as we speak, if you wouldn't mind. Table 4. I haven't said that I'm definitely not going back. I just want to see what happens before I make a decision. <laughs> what, you mean with Daryl? Yeah. Yeah? And for him, you're going to jeopardise your future? Amber, please, just grow Dad, up. Have you ever heard of love? And not the sort where you stand in front of the mirror salivating over yourself, but the kind that you have for another person? Yeah, and love's a wonderful thing, babe. But so is knowledge and ambition and a career. Not if you haven't got anyone to share it with. And what I've got with Daryl, it means more to me than any of that. Well, in that case, we've got nothing else to talk about. Ah, Chesney, what? Can you lend us some money? Well, uh, certainly. Uh, how much are you thinking of? Uh, do you mind us asking what it's for? I need to get a taxi. To the prison. Oh, Chesney, I don't think you're going to make this change your mind. Not now, love. <laughs> That's not where I want to go. I don't understand. Whenever I've done something wrong, or everyone else has let us down, she's always been there for me. I still hate what she's doing, but maybe now it's my turn to be there for her. Well, go on then. He 
you need to lift? You've got a car. What are you waiting for? You're right. Roy, um, go upstairs, get the visiting orders out to the sideboard, change your cardigan. I'll get the woody. I'll meet you both on the corner in a minute. <laughs> me around, said that he'd broken up with you and wanted to get back with me. So I believed him because he's... You're a dozy slapper? Especially if you expect me to believe that. What? <laughs> Rosie, why would he text me to come over here if he was copping off with you? You set him up, didn't you? You see, the thing is, Rosie, it's times like these, I'm glad I don't have a bunny. And what is that supposed to mean? It means there's more than one boil around here that needs looking at. Now get out. And don't bother coming into work, because you're fired. Whatever. Oh, and by the way, you bad? Might be king size. <laughs> but that's all that is. Can you believe her? All I'm trying to do is earn a few extra quid and that, that jumped up little dwarf won't even give me the time of day. Look at it this way. Norris's loss is prima donna's gain. Oh, do you mean that? No. Did I ever tell you about your real dad? What do you want? Oh, one of you met, Dad. You know, your landlord and the guy who pays your wages. Can I have a word, please? In private? Anything you've got to say to my son, you can say in front of me. Why don't you go for a cigar? Oh, all right. Get back in a bit. You can guess why you're here. <laughs> you know, Daryl, I like you. Since what? Well, that doesn't matter. What does matter is that Anne is my daughter and I want what's best for her. So do I. Good. So we both agree that she needs to get back to university, yes? That's her decision, isn't it? She's not going anywhere while you're still around. I can't go to London. Don't have a job and I don't know anyone. Okay. I'm thinking Spain. What? What's this? That will buy your flight out of here. Enough time for you to either find a job either with Jerry or until something else comes along. You think you can buy me? You think you can get me to leave Amber for some poxy bribe? I don't think you get it, do you? I love her. All right? It's not a bribe. It's an opportunity to do the right thing. Oh, come on, Dev. Don't give me that. This is what you want. Really? Well, you honestly believe that I don't want my daughter here, by my side, where I can see her every day, know that she's happy, know that she's safe. That, my friend, is love. But you think she's had a lucky escape, don't you? Hey, it's got nothing to do with me. Yeah, but you know what I did, why I'm here. Keep your nose clean. A couple of months she'll be out of here, then you two can have a proper wedding with your family and friends, even a few drinks. What friends? They practically disowned me. Fizz was all I had left. Now I've lost her as well. You're not going to do anything daft, are you, son? What do you mean? Well, there's more than one way to uh, tie the knot in this place. No, I'm not going to do anything daft. Good. Because the paperwork's a right pain. You're dumping me. Well, I wouldn't necessarily put it like that, but yeah, all right then. She was lying. 
Oh, I know. Yeah. I also know that my life's complicated enough without all this. But I thought we had some. <laughs> we only went out a couple of times. Besides, I just want to have a normal relationship for a change. You know, go in the pictures, get in a takeaway. Not having some mad cow saying that she's been copping off with my boyfriend. It's just not worth the hassle. You mean I'm not? Uh, I'm gonna go and finish my shift in the pub. I'll see you around. Sure. Luke. What? Your flies are undone. I've suddenly realised where, where I've been going wrong. Well, that is a pretty minging carder. No, no, with the advert for the job vacancy, or vacancies if you insult my choice in knitwear again. What's wrong with the one you got? Well, well it obviously wasn't stringent enough in, in stating what's required for, for a position of this calibre. Well, I thought you were all right. No, no, no. We, we need to find a way to discourage the Kirks and Theresas from applying, you know. Separate the wheat from the chaff, so to speak. Oh, uh, can I help you with anything? No, no, it's all right. Are you sure? I'm sorry, I should have probably introduced myself before. I'm Sheila, Sheila Wheeler. You hear about my car insurance? No, oh, no, no. Uh, I'm here about the job. Oh, no. Yeah, can I get a taxi, please? <clears throat> what would you like? I was about to smile for starters. I'm so not in the mood for this today. Well, maybe I can do something about that. What do you reckon? I reckon that if there was a nuclear holocaust or, I don't know, some nasty disease came down from outer space and wiped out every bloke on the planet apart from you. Oh, and there was nothing good on the telly that night, then uh, I might consider it, yeah. So that's a maybe then. Hiya. Got you a drink? And a couple for yourself. Thought you only had to be drunk to eat kebabs, not serving. It's all right. I'm celebrating. So did you mean what you said earlier about Jackie and you? Yeah. OK, not quite the reaction I was hoping for. No, I mean, I just don't get it. I mean, you work like mad to get in there. Why have been it now? Because I want to be with you. Blank. All right, what's going on? You were dead up for it before. Look, well, this isn't going to be a success, I'm just going to say it. But I'm moving to Spain. There you go. Thanks very much. And don't let the ice thing put you off, because I don't mind all the birds. And you know, I'd say that you've kept yourself in pretty good nick, considering that you've uh, dropped a sprog and all that. Oh, stop me now before I leap over the bar and throw myself at you. I've always had a thing for brunettes and all. Really? Yeah. Well, you know what? I'll put a good word in my back for you, if you like. <sighs> and after that, I worked in a news agents in Levenshoom for mm, going on six years. In fact, you might know the owner. Mr. Kapoor, Asian gentleman, wears a moustache. He's a very nice man. No, I, I don't think our paths have crossed. Oh, uh... Shane. Had a lovely wife as well. Beautiful manners. Mm. Can you believe she had nine brothers? Uh... Nine. Can you imagine it? Must have been murder at that time. <laughs> Anything else you need to know? Well, it, it, it's just a formality, but I, I do need to inquire if you have a criminal record. Well, I think I've got a Daniel O'Donnell CD somewhere. <laughs> That's me Joe, love. That's just me little Joe. Oh, look, I'm sorry. That's quite all right. Then there's room for humour in retail. Oh, I like to think so, too. In fact, that's one of the things I've missed most about it, really. That and the repartee with Which the customers... Which fortuitously that... brings me to my next question. I, I, I see that you, you haven't uh, worked in over a year. Uh, might I inquire as to why? Me knees. Sorry? I got them off my mother. Well, that, a carriage clock and a faux pearl necklace. Uh -huh. I won't bore you with the gory details. But needless to say, they managed to replace them both in the end, but it was touch and go for quite a while. Right. But I, I take it everything's in working order now. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, fighting fit now. No problems there. I can give you a demonstration no, if no, you want. No, 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 that's all right. It won't be necessary. <laughs> Fine. So how am I doing? 
Well, knees apart, I have to say, you're the most promising candidate I've seen so far. So does that mean I've got the job, then? Welcome aboard, Mrs Wheeler. Oh, oh please call me Sheila. <laughs> Why didn't you mention any of this before? I just didn't know before. So you just decide you're going back to Spain the day I tell you I'm leaving uni? No, I've been thinking about it for a while. How long? Days? Weeks? Months? Why does it matter? It matters to me! I thought you cared about us. I do. Do you know what? My dad was right about you. You're a waste of space. We'd have been better off getting the bus. Yeah, I'm sorry. This only does over 40 downhill. Don't tell me. Gretna Green. Weatherfield. Coronation Street. I'll just shut up and drive, shall I? Weatherfield. Yes. Hey, Lee. What's up? Stop! What? Stop the flaming car! Sorry. What for? Missing your wedding. I never got married. Why not? Because you weren't here. I'm here now. <laughs> 